Fate is capricious and unpredictable. She sometimes likes to play tricks on us. Our protagonist was looking for a chiromancer, Master Wang, when he was young. The meeting with the fortune teller took place. The chiromancer told an absurd thing. The master said our protagonist will always be alone. That's unfortunate. But after the divination, some very interesting things happened. And it made me doubt the chiromancer's words. Loneliness could only be a dream. Not a day was a calm, serene life. Old Wang had died, so there was no way to tell him how cruelly wrong he had been. And here are the painted beauties, our heroines. We'll meet them later. It's an explosive spectacle, not for the faint of heart. And this is Li Yifei. He used to be an integral part of the Flying Eagle Team Special Unit. Naturally, it had its own identifying serial number. His activities were completely classified. The enigmatic Li Yifei has been involved in highly dangerous international peacekeeping operations, worked in extreme situations, flawlessly, brilliantly, successfully completed every mission. Guy's got the look of a bird of prey. I guess that's why they call him the Golden Eagle. During the last mission, a guy was charmed by a tempting serpent. Li Yifei gave in to temptation a scandal was brewing. Forbidden fruit is sweet, but once it's eaten, it's a sin. I had to make amends somehow. Conflict was inevitable. Therefore, Li Yifei resigned. After a month, the fallen angel arrived in a remote town. In this town, he knew no one, and no one knew him. The crowded Shoujing Station. Passengers are warned to be careful when exiting. Li Yifei has a new life. Instead of army clothes, he wore a strict formal suit. The guy became a regular office employee. But will you always be able to play the role of the extraordinary employee? A cigarette can be put out. But how do you drown out the memories of the past? A robbery in broad daylight on a crowded street. Some lout with a giant physique stole a tiny, fragile girl's purse. A voice came from the car. Someone asked me to stop the robber. A gorgeous beauty rolled down the window in the car. She was talking on the phone and watched the robbery closely. The thief was rushing down the street at full speed. Li Yifei happened to get in his way. The guy was unfazed. He didn't seem to notice the pickpocket. The bandit was running away at a breakneck pace. In his hand was all the little girl's emergency savings. Why didn't the fearless Li Yifei stop the insolent thug? He could have easily taught this bully a lesson and broken his bones in no time. The unflappable Li Yifei didn't want to be a hero anymore. He longed to be an ordinary man. He also carefully hid his past life from others. A beautiful woman in a luxury car is talking on the phone. She complains that there are tons of rich guys around her, potential suitors. However, none of them meet her parents' requirements. It seems like the conversation in the car will go on forever. How can the poor driver stand it? The huge Hua Yang commercial building. This is where our humble protagonist comes almost every day now. The guy's job is very ordinary, quietly, peacefully working from bell to bell. A former intrepid special forces officer has become an ordinary security guard. A long time near the computer can enjoy a delicious breakfast. The feisty colleague asked the thoughtful Yifei to swallow his breakfast as quickly as possible. After all, they had to leave for their patrol. He was in no hurry to leave, though, and devoured his partner's breakfast with a greedy gaze. The cheerful security guard tirelessly praised Li Yifei's culinary skills. He said that there were many beautiful girls in the building who would appreciate the bachelor's dishes. In particular, a girl from a wealthy family. Principal Xu is considered particularly beautiful. Yifei stated that he doesn't want to grab stars from the sky. He's an ordinary security guard. He should date ordinary girls. A pretty girl was discussing something heatedly on the phone. During this conversation, she learned that her mother had called her once again. There are as many grooms as there are monkeys in the jungle. But we have to choose the one and only one and the sanest one. At that moment, the guard saw her. She was moving straight in their direction. The attractive girl with the wasp waist is the director of Hua Yang Trading Corporation. Her name is Xu Yingying. She's only 26 years old, but she's already overseeing multi-billion dollar projects. The guard was as numb as a bandit in front of Ka, the boa constrictor. He was once again struck by Xu Yingying's stunning beauty. The trim Li Yifei greeted director Xu in an army-like manner. He couldn't get rid of old habits from his civilian life. The principal stared at the guy intently. She seemed to realize that she had met him somewhere before. Li Yifei energetically gave his name. He explained that he was the company's new security guard. The director ordered Yifei to report to her office immediately. What an unexpected turn of events. It seemed that it wasn't only Li Yifei who was excited now, but also his partner. Why did the guy immediately fall under the top leader's scrutiny? The colleague thought that his partner and the director had known each other for a long time and he mentally imagined what the two of them would do in the office. But Li Yifei claimed that he was meeting Director Xu for the first time in his life. The guards were discouraged. They were puzzled as to why the principal suddenly called Li Yifei to her room. Fate likes to give unexpected surprises. A few minutes later, someone's shadow appeared on the principal's door. The mysterious shadow was immovable. 
Time seemed to stand still for a moment, and so did the shadow. There were heartbreaking screams from behind the door. The principal was arguing with her mother. The chief was outraged that her mother was constantly calling all the employees of the company for nothing. The director felt that the parent had embarrassed her in front of all her subordinates. The scandal did not subside. The frightened boy decided to hold off and not disturb his boss for the time being. The loud-voiced supervisor stopped shouting. There was silence. Apparently, the scandal of the relatives had subsided. The boy hesitantly knocked on the door and, after the principal's permission, went into the office. There was a smoking phone half stuck in the wall. From what he saw, Li Yifei's brain began to boil. The angry principal scolded the boy for not showing up at the right time, even though she had called him to come at the wrong time. Then she asked him to sign some paper, leave, and never come back. The perplexed guy saw his resignation agreement. He asked why the boss wanted to fire him so suddenly. The director sat immovable and did not explain the reason for the dismissal of the new employee. An indignant Li Yifei demanded a clear explanation of why he was being kicked out of the company. He had just gotten a job recently. He was performing his duties without flaws. It turns out that Director Xu saw that Li Yifei witnessed the robbery and didn't even try to stop the pickpocket. The chief declared that she didn't need such cowardly, heartless people. The boy asked me not to give him a high morale. After all, there were many witnesses in the crowded street, and everyone was indifferent, not trying to catch the bandit. About high morals, Director Xu really didn't want to talk about it, but she was outraged that her guard couldn't catch an ordinary thief. The serious boss said that she doubted her subordinate's professional abilities very much. She even suspected that Yifei might have been hired on someone else's recommendation. At that moment, the guy was like an angry tiger. For the first time, someone questioned his physical mental abilities. The former special forces officer was brought down to the bottom of the pile. The arrogant director once again asked the guard to hurry up and sign the paper and leave immediately. She didn't even want to look at her subordinate, but the boy was in no hurry to leave. Director Xu continued to humiliate him and called him a coward. She resented the fact that the security service hired such worthless people. But what is it? Where did this thing come from? Why was it in the guard's hands? Director Xu's eyes are perplexed. How could this have happened? The quiet guy put the wallet the thug stole on the table. He wanted to be a humble, unnoticed man, but he was forced to be a hero again. The dazed Principal Xu clearly realized that this was the exact wallet that the thief had taken away. But how did it end up in Yifei? The guy had to explain that he had quietly dealt with the robber and slightly punished the bandit. The jubilant criminal calmly counted the stolen money. The wallet contained a decent amount of money. Suddenly karma caught up with the thief. Someone had dared to throw a stone at his head. It was our mysterious superhero, Li Yifei. He seemed to come out of nowhere. The brave guy easily and quickly defeated and punished the thief. He took the wallet and all the money the robber had with him. Will the superhero receive a monetary reward for his labors? Li Yifei said that after work, he was going to return the money to the girl who was robbed by the bandit. But Director Xu couldn't understand why the guy didn't rush to help right away. The guy calmly explained that he doesn't like to perform feats in public. He does not want to be a hero in the eyes of people. He is satisfied with the life of an ordinary person. Ife may not sincerely aspire to be a hero. However, life may someday force him to put on a superhero costume. It is often hard to argue with fate. The dumbfounded director was shocked by the heroic deed and modesty of her employee. She was a shrewd girl, but she could not adequately appreciate the guard's abilities. The serene Yifei said that his boss is quite unsighted, seeing only what is on the surface and not seeing into the root. Winner wanted to leave the office, but the boss stopped him. The concerned director called back the Human Resources Department. She ordered a copy of Li Yifei's profile from the Security Department immediately. Xu Yingying scrutinized the data she received from the Human Resources Department. She thought about something for a long time. The excited boy's face was covered with sweat. Did the principal really know who he was? The profile indicated that Yifei had served in the army, and that seemed to interest the director. The anxious boy realized that the government had long ago destroyed his traces of his service in the special forces. Only the records of his days in the training camp remained. He had to pull himself together and answer calmly so as not to arouse suspicion. The director thought intensely, gone into the astral. Apparently, she didn't even notice the presence of the new employee. The landline phone was ringing off the hook. Who was disturbing the important director again? Someone showed up at the company. It really upset the director. The intruder was already approaching the office. The guards were powerless. It looked like the meeting between the intruder and director Xu was inevitable. The boss rose decisively from her chair. Apparently, she had something very important to say to the new employee. The distraught director hurriedly asked the new employee to forget what she had recently said to him. 
she said that she had a very important and important task for Li Yifei. The heavens have fallen to earth. The principal seemed to have lost her sanity. She suddenly offered the new guard to be her boyfriend. Yifei had seen and experienced a lot of things during his service in the special forces. It was hard to frighten or surprise him. However, at this moment, he resembled a scared, defenseless little child. The director's mom was banging insistently on the door. A girl was hastily dragging a young guard somewhere. The enraged Amazon finally kicked down the door. She was furious at her daughter for not returning her phone calls, and she was ready to crash like a tsunami. But suddenly the fierce panther turned into a cute rabbit. Mom was humbled and touched to the core. Her eyes radiated unbridled joy. Crossed arms, crossed legs, crossed fate, crossed fate. Ife's brain has taken a vacation. Unearthly pleasure, unbridled emotion gushed forth ceaselessly. Next day, Pingyang Airport. After landing, an exciting, unforgettable adventure awaits us. Shu's mom is thrilled. She saw her darling daughter with a handsome guy, a potential son-in-law. The embarrassed Li Yifei had to say that he was Shu Ying Ying's boyfriend. After all, that seemed to be what the principal wanted. Shu's happy mom invited her future son-in-law to visit her home during Chinese New Year. No refusal was accepted. Do no good, you will receive no evil. The executive boy acted as instructed. But why did director Shu decide to spoil his handsome face a little? Li Yifei accidentally named his bride-to-be director Shu. He forgot that he was no longer a security guard, but his boss's boyfriend. This made the girl very angry. I had to once again apologize to the willful girl. Otherwise my face might get hurt again. Ingen reminded him that her dad was very astute. And they must be careful not to have their plan declassified. The bulging bastards appeared in the street. They unceremoniously offered the beautiful Ingen a drink and fun with them. The willful girl was not frightened of the insolent scoundrels and told them to disappear. She was sure of her safety. She had a guard with her and could fight. And the nasty hooligans continued to behave quite disgustingly. Someone grabbed the girl's shoulder. The insolent bastard began to look at the woman's charms with obvious interest and admired Ingen's beauty. Suddenly, the hound scoundrel was eager to check what riches nature had bestowed on the seductive girl. He was like a lustful, beady-eyed frog. The slutty bastard couldn't move and froze in terrible pain. Yifei was clutching his arm with a deadly grip. The bad guys were clearly scared, and the girl was once again surprised by Yifei's abilities. The angry guy finally showed the dark side of his inner self, and ordered the bullies to get the hell out of here immediately. The bandits will probably remember this unfortunate day for a long time. Looks like this is the first time they've encountered such a tough guy. The hoodlum couldn't move, and was shivering with fear. The day was hot, but the bandit felt cold goosebumps on his body. The bad guy realized he wasn't seeing a human being. He was looking at the devil from the underworld. The cowardly criminals tried to protect their boss. However, they did not dare to start a fight. Ingen finally woke up and decided to call the police back. Although it could have been done much earlier. Probably she was too admiring of her boyfriend's bravery and lost her sense of time and space. The gang boss frightenedly yelled for Yifei not to get very close to him. However, it was too late to repent. Is it really a lemur with its eyes goggling? Who scared this defenseless animal? Calm down. It's not a tornado. It's just Li Yifei having a little fun. And these are future trauma and dental patients. These patients are going to be in the hospital for a long time. The astonished girl realized that now Yifei was completely different from the person she knew before. He was really a devil in the flesh. The guy didn't have time to entertain himself for long. So he asked the criminals to attack him in a friendly and quick manner. Did not hesitate to attack him. But the bullies stopped. Why? Because Li Yifei had just warmed up and was getting into a frenzy. The villains hurriedly retreated. Yifei didn't even have time to enjoy the fight. The proud girl decided to praise the guy a little. She said that she liked his exciting entertainment with bandits. Ying Ying reminded the boy once again that he should be extremely careful with her strict and principled father, Sei Zheng Guo. The girl's dad was an army commander. He easily exposed his daughter's former fake boyfriends. Yifei asked the girl not to worry. He was ready to celebrate the Chinese New Year with her family. The savvy, diligent student easily memorized a lot of information about Ingen and her relatives, but there were still many questions. For example, were the girl's breasts real and of what size? Embarrassed, Ingen boiled over and asked me not to delve too deeply into her intimate life. There was no need to know the details. Yifei promised that he wouldn't ask unnecessary questions, in particular, he would no longer ask who Ying Ying liked, girls or guys. Ingen resented the shameless man's inquisitive nature. The impudent man even dared to cross her intimate area. Self-confident Yifei swore to Xu Ying Ying that he would be her perfect boyfriend during Chinese New Year and would undoubtedly please the girl's parents. She would be his only and most favorite woman during this period. You can say and promise anything, but life makes adjustments. Sometimes it puts us through unexpected challenges. A sharp knock on the door. 
Ingen disturbed the silence of the night. She wanted to go into Yifei's room. A surprised Miss Shu heard an unfamiliar voice in her fake boyfriend's room. She inquired what Yifei was doing. Why did the young rascal get so flushed and frightened? What crime had he committed? And why didn't he open the door? What happened in Yifei's room? Could he be sick? Or should he be rescued immediately given artificial respiration? Indirect heart massage and direct massage of some other organs. Half a day ago, on my way home. The car stereo says it's the fourth missing woman case in the city. Ingen warns the boy to be wary of her sister first and foremost. After all, she is quite intelligent and can quickly realize where the fake and where the real relationship is. The girl announced that she would be sleeping with Yifei in the same room tonight. No objections. It's part of a secret plan. But why was the young man silent and breathing heavily? The girl wondered if anyone was listening to her at all. The poor guy's violent fantasies are off the leash. There was no holding them back. Ife drooled and imagined being invited to bed. It's the real Aphrodite. The goddess of beauty and love passionately asks to share her bed with him. But fantasy and brutal reality are quite different things. In reality, the sufferer will have to sleep on the floor himself, not in bed. Club Yulon is a den of bandits, a scary and dangerous place. The disfigured criminal frightenedly tells how his whole gang was beaten up quickly and easily by some unknown guy. One blow knocked out even the strongest fighter. The head thug had been looking for this guy for a long time, but when the search stopped, the brave one showed up. A criminal mastermind is a real Julius Caesar. He does several things at the same time. He gives himself to love affairs and solves important mafia cases. The gang leader was beginning to realize that his men had confronted Burkut. It seems that Yifei's identity may be declassified. The mysterious nymph immediately suggested that such important news to inform the terrorist syndicates. After all, these syndicates have long been hunting for Burkut and offer colossal sums of money for his head. But the boss was in no hurry to go to the syndicates. He had a better idea. The finicky boss ordered fresh young virgins to be brought to him immediately. He also asked the third brother, a mysterious nymph, to kill Burkut. If the task is completed successfully, the name of the Nan Chen gang will become famous all over the world. In the evening, the long-awaited guests showed up at Shu's residence. Now the whole family would be gathered. Where's mom? Why doesn't she meet her daughter and future son-in-law? Mom rushes out to greet her dear guests. A mystical Cerberus barked in the room. Another full-fledged member of the family is rushing over. He's the first to greet the guests. Such a sweet, loyal creature loves his owners more than they love themselves. His love is boundless. I recognized the mistress immediately. I hugged my immense soulmate. This cute creature's name is Chu Fei Fei. He missed his dear mommy very much. The four-legged family member had found a secluded, cozy, warm place to rest and was carefully studying his future son-in-law. Yifei thought the dog was looking at him rather haughtily. A smiling, polite plumber finished cleaning the toilet. The landlady promised to give him five stars for the work he had done. Suddenly, Fei Fei clutched the frightened plumber's arm with a dead grip. The dog growled viciously. Who is this suspicious guy? Why is he hiding his face so carefully? Yifei continued to watch the mysterious plumber carefully. Anxious thoughts swarmed in his mind. The joyful mother was welcoming her own daughter and her future son-in-law. Yifei was still thinking about the strange plumber. The tireless dog could not stay still. He had many more important matters to attend to. There were no owners, so there was no control. So the four-legged criminal decided to sneakily steal the tasty fish. The sly dog heard a familiar sound. For a moment he forgot even about the treat. The little criminal was caught in the act. A menacing host entered the room. Everyone met the head of the family with grim, serious faces. Few dared to utter a word. The former army commander walked slowly but confidently. There was some irritation in the sound of his footsteps. The old man carelessly, sourly wished everyone a happy Chinese New Year. His face was displeased. The head of the family sat silently in his chair. The relatives stood at attention in front of him, standing at attention. The embarrassed dog behaved cautiously. He knew that the head of the family was not to be trifled with. The stern father focused his attention on his daughter's new boyfriend. There was a coldness in his demeanor, in his voice. The daughter told her dad that Li Yifei was her real boyfriend and was the manager of the company. However, the father did not want to believe the daughter. The head of the household said irritably that Yifei had broken one of the family rules. The boy smelled of cigarettes. His father hated it. The daughter indignantly declared that she had chosen the kind of boyfriend she wanted for herself. She asked her father not to interfere. The mother fiercely supported her daughter. The willful head of the family asked not to talk about his daughter's private life for the time being. Now for some reason he was interested in the plumber who was repairing their toilet. Yifei tensed up even more. He also thought that the repairman was very strange and suspicious. The fussy mom began to explain that the toilet was clogged, so she called a man who was able to fix it. 
The jealous husband angrily shouted that his wife deliberately chooses young boys to renovate the toilet, and then probably has affairs with these repairmen. The husband said he could always clean the restroom himself. The heated family argument stunned and frightened the future son-in-law. He was confused and did not know where to hide. This nightmare resembled an Olympian revolt. His relatives rebelled against the almighty Zeus, the head of the family. Yifei didn't stand idly by. He finally dared to talk to his father-in-law. The head of the family was ready to listen to the young man carefully, although he still looked down on him. Witty Yifei reminded him that his uncle was in the army, so all matters should be handled in a manly manner. The angry head of the household agreed with the boy quite readily. That's right, a man should always be a man. But why were the women in the house so disturbed? Why were they so frightened by men's way of solving problems? On Olympus, a feast of the gods, the all-powerful Zeus and the charming Apollo quickly found common ground. Ingen's father hugged the boy and said that Yifei would be his wonderful son-in-law. Caring Yingying first wanted to put her tipsy father to bed. Then she promised to scold Yifei, but the boy promptly ran to the brooding study. Even after the raging feast, the former special forces officer remained sober-minded. He managed to successfully pass the first stage of the test. Our hero gathers his strength. The second stage of the test is ahead. Why was the guy so interested in the toilet? Maybe he wanted to hug it after a good feast. First, Yifei checked the drain pan thoroughly. Once again, his intuition did not fail him. Turns out the repairman remodeled the cistern and put a bomb in it, and it needs to be diffused now. Now there was no doubt that the plumber was no ordinary worker, and he didn't come to the house to fix the toilet. Ordinary gangsters can't build a bomb like this. Perhaps this deadly creation belongs to a terrorist syndicate. Apparently the timer on the bomb was set for half an hour. We need to act now. The shrewd Yifei had already spent a lot of time getting his uncle drunk and diverting the attention of the other occupants of the house. Now the main thing is not to make a mistake and do the right thing. In this case, to make a mistake is to fall into the arms of death. There were more than two minutes left to defuse the bomb. Yifei believed that in that time he would be able to eliminate the deadly threat to the surrounding people. There was a strange sound. Someone's going to the restroom? We can't let Yifei see this object from this angle. Then he'll obviously forget about the bomb and won't be able to disarm it. A woman can always show up at the most opportune moment. This mysterious beauty wasn't even called, but she showed up. A delightful meeting of two lonely hearts in such a romantic place. The girl was extremely surprised. It's not every day you see a strange man in your toilet. There was something slippery under her foot. The stranger screamed shrilly. The astonished girl flew at the speed of light to the dumbfounded guy. It seemed that time stopped then and the brain shut down. It was like the explosion of a supermassive star. It all happened in a matter of seconds. The girl felt pain in some part of her body. And at the same time, she couldn't stop admiring the man's unearthly beauty. A real man will always come to a woman's aid. He will support her in a difficult moment. Guys have a very developed tactile sense. Men's hands cannot get bored and idle. There was a knocking at the door. The stranger moaned, screamed, and made many unintelligible noises. A surprised Ying Ying tried to figure out why her sister Shan Shan was screaming wildly in the bathroom. They were heartbreaking screams. Yifei tried to explain that he was his own man, and Ying Ying is his girlfriend. Shan Shan didn't seem to be in a hurry to get up. She felt quite cozy and comfortable in his arms. Time is running inexorably. We're seconds away from the explosion. There was a slight click, but there was no big bang. What happened? The frightened Shan Shan gasped. The room was filled with smoke. A bewildered Ingen knocked desperately on the door, and her exhausted sister felt quite safe in the strong arms of the handsome man. Why are Yifei and Shan Shan so hot? Why is there a blush on their faces? And why is Ying Ying wildly agitated? Finally, the door opened. Ingen burst into the bathroom. You can't see a thing. The acrid smoke completely filled the room. The sisters were screaming, trying to find each other in the thick smoke. The confused Ingen still couldn't clearly understand what had happened. And where is the future son-in-law? Time's up. The bomb should have exploded, but it didn't. They were on the verge of death. However, Yifei had always won in death games. Looks like he didn't lose this time. It's morning at the Exu residence. What does the new day hold? The lady in the revealing blue outfit is Ying Ying's younger sister. Her name is Shan Shan. She politely wished Yifei a good morning. The guy also wished everyone a good morning, and tried to hurriedly sit down between the two beauties. The seductive Shan Shan stared intently at her sister's new boyfriend. She seemed to have something very important to say. The sister-in-law tried to calm the embarrassed future son-in-law. She whispered quietly in his ear that she would not tell anyone about the events of the previous night. Yifei thought his sister-in-law was very sweet and caring. She seemed like an angel in the flesh. However, the angel was also very prescient. Little sister suddenly inquired about how much money Yifei received for playing the fake boyfriend. The embarrassed boy like a child began to make excuses. 
He claimed that Ingen was his real girlfriend, and they were in a serious relationship. But even a strong man can find weaknesses. Our valiant ex-army man was no exception. Those around us could only see the tip of the iceberg. But what did the bottomless deep waters hide? Sweet Angel was too stubborn and wanted to know the real truth. The heavy artillery came in. Angel didn't even try to surrender. His opponent was practically disarmed. But even under heavy torture, he remained stubbornly silent. Ingen's mind is a pile of questions. She didn't understand why the guy was so distracted and shamed. Mom brought a delicious dish. Earlier, the eldest daughter had lied to her that Yifei had been out with friends last night and didn't return on time. Caring mom asked her future son-in-law to stay the night at their house. The boy didn't even know what to say. He was attacked from the right and left flanks. That's what girls need heeled shoes for. It's one of their powerful tools. Annoyed, Ingen asked the guy to think with his brain and not some other place. Her eyes were full of anger. The poor man's electrified body trembled. His brain shut down. His animal instincts kicked in. Yifei's thoughts wandered in otherworldly realms. He was captivated by a sweet, kind angel and a passionate, seductive devil. Beloved Shanshan was going to practice at the dance studio. She asked her big sister to pick her up in the afternoon. The stern Ingen indignantly advised her younger sister not to wear revealing, provocative clothes, and asked her to finish the dance early. There was still some shopping to be done. This is the Shudai Fitness Club. You can see many graceful and seductive girls here. We got here on time. We still need to find Shanshan. A warrior maiden never leaves her weapons behind. I carry all of mine. The young gentleman was quite obliging, asked Ingen to take care of herself. The restless girl headed impetuously to the fitness club. The guy asked her to slow down. Pleasantly surprised, Ying Ying noted that Yifei was playing the role of her boyfriend more and more believably. It seemed that deep down it pleased her. The girl praised the boy, but she also asked him not to be too important, not to get too cocky. This young terpsichore is very graceful and talented. She's also incredibly perceptive. She can easily recognize where the truth is and where lies are. The adorable dance goddess is Ingen's twin sister. She is quite intelligent just like her older sister. However, she is not interested in business. Shanshan could easily and quickly expose her older sister's bogus boyfriends. Therefore, one should be extremely careful in the presence of this graceful goddess. A disgruntled Ingen stopped suddenly. Apparently, another question was keeping her calm. The girl wanted to know where her supposed boyfriend had disappeared last night. She seemed to be waiting for a detailed report. The girl's unceremonious behavior angered the guy. She had overstepped the bounds of what was permissible. Angry Yifei reminded him that he was not a loyal guard dog. His freedom should not be restricted. However, the persistent girl wanted to know absolutely everything about her fake boyfriend, although she did not want to tell some details about herself. Ying Ying asked that Yifei do his best to make their joint plan a success. She promised him a high position in her company. The stubborn girl wouldn't let it go. She wanted to know where the boy had spent last night. A disgruntled Yifei said that excessive curiosity does not lead to good. He should have his own life in secrets. The guy vowed to help the girl, but he doesn't want a high position. He wants to be a regular guy. Reaction to Li Yifei's defiant response. So why does this guy want to be in the shadows? The astonished girl felt as if she had been hit by a cold shower. The boy's answer surprised her. The unpredictable Yifei refused to accept any high positions, but he said he was ready to successfully complete the proposed deal. Surrounding people began to actively gossip and talk about the beautiful couple. Someone suggested that the lovers were breaking up. Another person called Ingen an arrogant, cunning vixen. A stunned Ingen demanded an explanation. How could anyone refuse the queen's favors? The graceful Terpsichore was out of dance class. She was ready to go to the mall now. People couldn't stop bantering and gossiping. They assumed that Shan Shan was the handsome guy's legal wife. The older sister, on the other hand, was his bitchy mistress. Sweet Shan Shan took her companion under her arm and literally dragged him behind her. Elder sister was indignant. Was she really starting to be eaten up by jealousy? The mall is crowded. There's nowhere to fall. The smug guy was in between two charming beauties, and Shan Shan was silently admiring the different clothes. Her older sister was deep in thought and was indifferent to everything. Shopping didn't appeal to the guy. He was like an elephant in a china shop among a pile of women's things. Fate has prepared another serious and sometimes pleasant ordeal for the guy. He was dragged into a lingerie store. The curious saleswoman thought that Shan Shan and her companion were husband and wife. The older sister felt superfluous. The guy was being carefully fitted for new underwear, but he didn't even know what size his underwear was. The smiling saleswoman asked the girl to take her boyfriend's measurements. It was truly an unexpected turn of events. The puzzled girl froze with the man's underpants. She thought she was about to be led to the scaffold. The assignment is simple. All you have to do is put your underwear on a guy. Why be so scared? A jubilant Yifei was over the moon. He encouraged the girl in every possible way. 
he asked her to do what a real girl should do without any embarrassment. It seems the perceptive younger sister suspected something wrong. Can Ingen even touch her boyfriend? The older sister hesitantly approached her fictitious boyfriend. She must get her measurements down and not fail the secret plan. The young prankster said that he had done this to his girlfriend many times before. He asked Ingen not to worry. He terribly wanted her at his feet. The dazed poor woman with men's underwear in her hands resembled a defeated opponent with a white flag. She felt ashamed and humiliated. It's good to be in the clouds, but sometimes you have to watch your step. Is this some kind of new martial art? Kudo or judo or tie boxing? What was that? The thoughts blended into one big lump. What is she looking for so thoroughly? Is it lost virginity? Banana is a very caloric, healthy berry. Bananas lift your mood and help prevent stress. Banana fruits are 6 to 30 centimeters long. Their diameter is from 2 to 5 centimeters. Each banana bush has a different fruit. The store is great. Lots of different underwear in the assortment. And you can see a free rocking show. Why is the main character so flushed? Does he have a fever? Do you need to call an ambulance right away? The customers were shocked. One would have to be too hungry to do such a thing in broad daylight in a public place. Shan Shan was extremely worried about the condition of her brother-in-law and her sister. The young gentleman helped the girl up. The exhausted Ingen was like a ragdoll without thoughts or feelings. I did what I thought was best, but it's always the same. Good thing I didn't get a slap on the wrist. The angry girl was burning with shame. She asked the boy to get away from her. She couldn't look at the shameless, beautiful face. Nothing can be hidden from Shan Shan's eyes. She noticed that her sister and brother-in-law were always feuding. The shrewd Shan Shan thought again that Yifei was her sister's fake boyfriend. She kept her eyes on the handsome man. Obviously, the younger sister had deliberately tripped up her older sister to put her in a very awkward position. But the savvy Ingen pulled herself together and calmly picked out her bras. She pretended that nothing had happened. Ingen has been hard at work preparing for bra day. On this day, all employees of their company can come wearing only one piece of underwear. Only women worked in Ingen's office. The voluptuous guy presented them all in the same underwear. The young Don Juan thought he was very handsome. Any woman in the office would not be able to resist his masculine charm. But he himself could easily be tempted. The only man among many beauties. Paradise. This is the picture painted by the unbridled fantasies of a shameless man. Bargain shopper. Now you can wear a new bra every day. This must be a dream, right? Yifei is asking for the top job, and is willing to protect his favorite boss at all times. The girl heard a sharp sound. What was that? It sounded like an explosion. A dejected Ingen walked through the mall. She didn't notice anyone. A distraught Ying Ying called all the men shameless scum. Shan Shan couldn't understand why her sister was sad. It looked like Ingen was ready to explode like that firework. Emotions overwhelmed her common sense. Above the mall are a multitude of colorful fireworks. Their glow dazzles Ingen's eyes, but does not warm her soul. Who's that strange girl? And what's that sparkling thing in her hand? There was a massive explosion. Ingen was rapidly flying somewhere. The flames blazed not only in Ingen's soul, but also around her. However, there were cold goosebumps on her skin. What happened? And where did all the bras go? It seemed as if the gates of hell had opened over the mall. There was darkness and a lot of smoke. Are they alive? Or are their souls already wandering the mall? It's not the creepy devil reaching out from hell. Our superhero is coming to the rescue. The superhero's shoulders are quite broad. Behind them, the beauties are safely hidden from danger. A fiery three-way tango on the flames of the flames. This is a dance you'll remember for a long time. The rousing dance ended. The excited superhero asked how Ingen was feeling. And no one even paid attention to Shan Shan. How does she feel? The boy and the girl cooed like lovebirds. Yifei was like a caring husband. The boy helped Ingen up. He was very glad that the girl was alive and well. Shan Shan was very surprised by the guy's behavior. Young Terpsichore would not forget this fiery dance for the rest of her life. Yifei was simply brilliant during that dance. He is every woman's dream. Quietly dusk descended on the Sui residence. How is the restless family doing? Why is the head of the household roaring like a lion? What's wrong again? The young men stood motionless, silent in front of their father. It seemed that they were even afraid to breathe. The head of the family had already learned that there had been an explosion at the mall. He was proud of his son-in-law, and sincerely thanked the young hero for saving his daughters. The joyful Shan Shan didn't take her eyes off her brother-in-law and sister. She smiled mysteriously. Shan Shan finally believed that her sister had found her soulmate. She thought it was true love. A confused Ying Ying didn't dare look into the guy's eyes, and Shan Shan couldn't get enough of the superhero that was in their house. Real men can always find common ground, and when they find common ground, women rest. The whole family is here, all in anticipation of the holiday. Here come the long-awaited fireworks. Are they safe? Won't they ruin the festivities this time? Midnight is just a few minutes away. May all the deepest dreams of our heroes come true.
The anxious mom wished her son-in-law a good rest together with her daughter. After all, they had a hard and stressful day. A heated Ingen dragged her boyfriend by the ear to rest. The lovemaking began. This is the torture room. Pray for disarmed Yifei. No tenderness. It looks like Yifei will be beaten painfully but gently. The prisoner was patiently silent. It was hard to get even one word out of him. The ruthless Valkyrie wanted to know what Yifei's true intentions were. Why he suddenly wanted a high position in her company. Meet the girls. They're cute Siamese twins. They're always and everywhere together. A man's ego has been hurt. A man's dignity has been violated. All thoughts went below the belt. The beaver tried to jump out of the booth. He was extremely anxious. The teary-eyed boy drifted off into a world of voluptuous fantasy. Common sense had fallen asleep. The senses mixed into a mind-blowing cocktail. An eerie war began in my head. The explosions rumbled continuously. Feelings erupted like Vesuvius. The fires of passion could not be extinguished. You can't run away from the battlefield. One must stay until the victorious end. It's urgent to seize the strategic site. Then Yifei's army can defeat and capture the enemy. The restless Bobic was barking and trying to get off the chain. Tension was rising. The soldier reports that the method of covering from the sky was used very successfully. It allowed us to suppress the enemy. The strategic site will be taken soon. Never give up! Believe in victory! What is it? What has so suddenly taken the valiant warriors by surprise? The enemy has received significant reinforcements. A super-powered tank. What do we do? A giant muzzle was pointed at the ferocious enemy, and at any moment a shot could be fired. A violent fantasy attacked Yifei incessantly. In his fantasies, he frantically attacked the super tank and his opponent. Looks like the enemy has another powerful weapon. It can really hurt a man's dignity. The warrior was alone on the battlefield. The enemy wanted to destroy him and take over the world. The angry girl tried to bring Yifei to his senses. The dazed boy couldn't break free from his fantasy world. He was stuck with his head in his dreams like a swamp. The ashamed boy mentally said goodbye to life. He thought that the grim reaper of death was about to appear before him and drag him to the afterlife. The merciless enemy relentlessly attacked the valiant warrior, and he was unshakably sure of his victory. Something huge and resilient was ready to pierce the confused enemy. Was it some kind of new super-powered weapon? Guy's super-powered weapon is hard for a girl to resist, and it's useless to resist. What is it? Is it a woman's joy? It's a perfectly normal mushroom with a big head and a nice stalk. Why does mom think it's stale? Mom's in shock. Did she eat a poisonous mushroom? The keeper of the household admired her son-in-law's endurance. The boy had had a hard day. However, he still has enough strength to have fun with her daughter. The enemy is safely hidden behind two huge hills, a good position for an attack. The valiant warrior blushed like a boiled crawfish. He must have been too tired during the fierce battle. The enraged girl was like a furious panther. She called the valiant warrior a shameless man. The bewildered guy said his weapon went off spontaneously. It was a natural male reaction. However, Ingen was determined to tie the shameless man's hands. The enraged panther went on the attack. The prey was just around the corner. It reminded me of a fight between two strong predators. Who would win? The youngest daughter told her father that Yifei and Ying Ying love each other to the point of madness. And they are a real couple in love. An eerie rumbling sound came from Ingen's bedroom. That's suspicious. What happened? The father and his youngest daughter looked into the bedroom. They were obviously surprised and shaken to the core. Naughty kids having fun. Fate bound them together forever. The dumbfounded father and his youngest daughter froze near the door. It seemed as if they had seen a ghost. The relatives couldn't even think that Ingen and her boyfriend liked to play such daring games. It is frightening and at the same time a burning interest. A confused Ingen fell into her own trap. It was difficult to free herself. The rope must have been enchanted. The more you untie it, the more tangled it becomes. The shocked father thought he was dreaming. He did not want to believe that his daughter adored such an unusual fetish. The poor man tried to escape from his passionate thoughts, but it was in vain. He was more and more captivated by voluptuous, unrestrained fantasies. Naughty children grow up fast. They have new games, new hobbies. Is it dad? Or maybe it's a rebel zombie. The rope is finally untied. Now we must go and bring the stunned father to his senses. Have they been declassified? They were being modest and quiet. The astonished father ran away at the speed of light. Gone and gone. No one could stop him. Shanxing Night Park. Could this be where the distraught father is hiding? Concerned Ingen and her imaginary boyfriend set out to find Dad. Why did the old man run away so suddenly? An irritated Ingen said that Ai Fei should have closed the door. Then Dad and her younger sister wouldn't have overheard their conversation. The daughter was sure that her father was too angry with them and had run away from home because of it. The observant Yi Fei saw a mysterious light in the pitch blackness. What is it? The young detective suddenly noticed someone. Ingen hurriedly made her way through the impenetrable thicket. The petrified old man stood motionless near some mystical tree. Could he be praying to some ancient, mysterious gods? 
a puzzled Ingen huddled in the bushes. She didn't understand what Daddy was doing here in the middle of the night. The thoughtful father plunged headlong into the memory of the events that had taken place in the summer of 1985. He still could not forget that beautiful summer. They were fond memories from his past life, and the old man decided to say goodbye to them forever. But there's no hiding the truth. All secrets come out someday. In his daughter's hand was a hidden secret that her father had kept for years. It was a secret that drove him crazy. The young men did not understand what it was, and why did it agitate the father so much? Why would an old man want pictures like this? Who's in the picture? The surprised Yifei didn't even realize that the old man was into such passionate games. This is awesome. Once upon a time, an old man liked to play funny games with the beauty Christina. During this game, they used different ropes, whips, and now the old man lamented that his fetish had been inherited by his eldest daughter. The father sobbed and grieved that his daughter had followed in his footsteps, and the surprised Yifei could not even guess that Ying Ying had such a secret fetish. Apparently, even the girl herself didn't know about it. The old man decided that all his romantic flings of his past life should immediately fall into oblivion. No trace could be left behind. Out of sight, out of mind. Curious Yifei inquired if Ingen really liked tying up, but the girl reacted rather annoyed at such curiosity. Ingen said she didn't like being tied up or tying someone up. She didn't give a damn about that fetish. She was worried that their secret was out. However, her father's secret affair upset Ingen the most. She had always thought her father was the perfect family man. In the morning, the Shu family gathered around the table. Everyone hesitated to say a word for a long time. The agitated old man was having thoughts. Words stuck in his throat. The older daughter and her fictitious boyfriend are tense. They also don't dare to strike up a conversation. The sly little sister hides her mixed feelings. There's a lot she wants to know, but she's afraid to ask. The puzzled father thought that his daughter might not have inherited the strange fetish from him. Maybe it was the son-in-law who had led her astray. My father finally admitted that he had heard what Ingen had been talking about with the boy in her bedroom yesterday. Apparently, it wasn't easy for the old man to admit it. So the father had the young men's plan declassified. They're clearly out of luck. However, the old man did not want to reveal the young people's secret. He asked them not to do it again. The restless father wished to know who was the source of the evil. Had Li Yifei pushed his daughter down the wrong path? The angry girl began to zealously defend the guy. She said that she had invented everything herself. The daughter also admitted that she knew everything about her father's love affairs in his youth. The shocked old man had not expected to hear such truth. Was his daughter prone to masochism? And how did she know about his secret amorous affairs? The frightened father decided that he urgently needed to get rid of some things. Why was he so concerned about these mysterious things? The silent old man quickly left the room. He was probably in a hurry. As always, it was the long-suffering son-in-law who was the worst offender. All the dogs were pinned on him. The astonished child could not understand what he had done again. Why did Ingen treat him so rudely? The concerned girl assumed that her father had gone to call the police. He had done so before when he discovered his daughter's fictitious boyfriends. Ying Ying asked the guy not to panic and to hurry up and pack. She planned to put Yifei on a plane. Big Sister went to the underground parking lot. Yifei hurriedly packed his things. You can't hide anything from her younger sister's inquisitive eyes. Where are Ingen and her brother-in-law going? The underground parking lot was deserted. The girl was hurriedly preparing to leave for the airport. The young lady was visibly nervous. She looked at her watch impatiently. However, Ifei was not there yet. Or was that behind the girl the shadow of the long-awaited Ifei? The bird was caught in someone's strong clutches. Such an unexpected fright can make you faint. Where is the soulless, vile monster trying to take the girl? Why would he want her? There was an ominous silence in the parking lot. Who could save Ingen? Yifei suddenly appeared. He was looking for Ying Ying. The only people in the parking lot were a surprised Yifei and some strange janitor. Where was Ying Ying? Why was it dark in the parking lot? No one even thought to turn on the lights. That's very strange and suspicious. And the janitor was very clever. He's a good fighter. The undaunted Yifei didn't hesitate. He prepared for another attack by the enemy. However, the opponent was in no hurry to attack. Perhaps he wanted to play with his prey like a cat with a mouse. Unperturbed, Yifei clearly realized that the plumber in front of him was the same plumber who had recently fixed the toilet in Shu residence. The mysterious rascal didn't think that he would be exposed so quickly. The brazen criminal praised the guy's excellent instincts. He called Yifei the Burkut. Turns out the truth is slowly coming out. Suddenly, a brash janitorial plumber has turned into a sassy girl. She's a member of the Nan Chung gang. Her nickname is Red Dress. The daring lady proudly declared that she was a representative of the Nan Chen gang, but Yifei didn't seem to know of such a gang before. The self-confident criminal thought that Burkut was shocked by the prestigious name of the said syndicate. 
and thought Yifei was a very naive, defenseless guy. A surprise Burkett said he had never heard anything about this syndicate before. He was sure that the little-known gang was rather worthless and not worthy of his attention. The annoyed criminal didn't like the guy's bad reviews of her gang, so she went on the attack. Burkut couldn't figure out what he should do with this restless fiend. The furious lady was clearly begging for a beating. But a fight was inevitable. It was too late to run away. The fierce young woman circled around Burkut like a whirlwind. She swiftly struck blow after blow. Yifei realized that the infuriated lady was not a bad fighter. However, he was in no hurry to attack his opponent. Burkut had never fought a woman before. That's why this time, too. He was in no hurry to land at least one blow. The angry lady was glad that she had found the Achilles' heel of the undaunted superhero. The unfamiliar young lady suddenly said that Ying Ying had called out strongly for Yifei's help before she lost consciousness. And that apparently really touched the guy. When's that strange beast going to stop? She stuck to the guy like a bath sheet. The unperturbed Burkut was firmly on his feet. He was only defending himself the whole time, but not attacking. It looked like the evil beast had used all its strength. However, the brave guy didn't even move. Burkett clearly didn't want to fight, but he really wanted to know where Ingen was. The shapely beauty promised to tell where Ying Ying could be found. However, Yifei has to defeat her first. The heated mystery lady could not calm down. How and with what to extinguish her unbridled anger? The reserved guy admitted that he doesn't like to fight with girls. However, he has no choice. Burkett realized that if he won, he could find Ingen. And he stopped hesitating. The confident lady was convinced that victory was in her hands. Probably a new battle plan was born in her mind. A fire extinguisher saves people from a fire, but sometimes it can also be used as a weapon. On the battlefield, all means are good. The astonished Yifei had clearly underestimated his opponent. He didn't expect that his opponent had hidden such an unusual weapon. The vicious beast attacked Burkut relentlessly. He defended himself again. It seems Yifei has found himself in the deadly embrace of a mysterious lady. Will he be able to escape? Sector A of the underground parking garage. It seems quiet in here. Who is this man? What's he doing in a parking lot all alone? The sentimental old man thought he had to get rid of some things. But apparently he was in no hurry to part with these mysterious things. The ex-army man thought that mysterious things should not be left at home. He wanted to bring them to some mountain and get rid of them. Grief clouded the mind of the grieving old man. He was too absorbed in his thoughts and ran away from reality. The old man didn't seem to notice anyone or anything. He was anxious. The huge laggard suddenly attacked the old man. The stranger's blow was very strong and unexpected. The ex-army man collapsed to the floor. I guess he didn't even realize what had happened. This is Brother Hu, a representative of the Nancheng gang. Big Brother asked him to deal with a retired general. Brother Hu defeated the former soldier with one punch. Sector B of the underground parking lot is very hot and noisy. The fun continues. There was a goddess hovering in the clouds. She must have been watching the life of the earth from heaven. Suddenly... Someone said that the enemy should first be thoroughly investigated and tempted, then attack lightning fast when the enemy is paralyzed. These words shocked the mysterious lady. The dazed young lady realized that she was dealing with a very dangerous opponent. Her rival is well acquainted with the working methods of Southeast Asian spies. The phoenix seemed to have risen from the ashes and smoke. The enemy was disarmed. Burkett realized that the mysterious lady from Ruin gone, he now clearly knew who his enemy was. With a powerful leg kick, Burkett helped the mysterious lady fly quite high. Finally, the guy stopped defending himself and started attacking. It seems the enemy didn't expect to face such a powerful crushing force. And Trix will no longer do the trick. The frightened lady pleaded for the guy to spare her. She reminded that Burkett had never killed a woman. Yifei had indeed once sworn that he would never hurt or kill women. Will he be good-hearted this time? This lady called herself a woman, but she had the sexual limitations of a man. And Burkett suddenly revealed this secret. The mysterious lady hid her manhood so well. How did Burkett know the truth? The inquisitive Burkett made a very thorough investigation. As a result, he found out that the lady's bolt was a pretty big one. As big as half of his dick. It's not for nothing that the lady's gait was very strange. The cunning lady couldn't be satisfied. She decided to use one last resort. What's the wily young lady up to this time? Does she have some other deadly weapon hidden somewhere? The lady knew that guys love ruin gone brides and trannies. So she suddenly offered to be Burkett's bride. The young lady's charms must have turned him on too much, and he couldn't stop. The love game had begun. It was a passionate, unforgettable spectacle. The lady with the male rod felt that she was about to turn into a breathless corpse. But she wanted to live. At the moment of the fierce fight, the mad lady felt a surge of strength. She called upon all the higher powers of heaven to help her. The enemy did not give up and fervently resisted. Although the enemy's forces were running out, the manhood was broken. It was beyond repair. 
Burkut found the most painful and vulnerable spot of his enemy. A terrible pain pierced the enemy from heel to toe. Now he was a real woman. It was an unforgettable experience. Turns out Burkut is also an excellent neurosurgeon. He can remove a manhood without a scalpel. Suddenly someone said that Yifei was great during the fight. Whose shadow is that? An unfamiliar fellow appeared. He was delighted at Burkut's skillful escape from the dangerous trap. He seems like a nice guy. By the sudden appearance. This courageous guy's name is Hong. His family was very poor and he went to earn money in the army. The guy was a scout for Ruin Gong. After retiring, Hong joined the syndicate. However, he lost a shipment of forbidden goods and was up to his ears in debt. The boss forced the guy to have a sex change operation in a Southeast Asian country. Couldn't say no to the boss. The guy wanted to live. After his gender change, Hong was nicknamed Red Dress. His face was completely different. Red Dress worked in a nightclub. He had to endure harassment from men to pay off his debt. One day, a very strong, smiling guy appeared, who in an instant beat-up, mutilated all of Hong's abusers. He was a real superhero. The manly guy thought that Red Dress was a precious find for Nan Chen's gang. He invited Hong to join their gang. Then the charming smile of the courageous guy disarmed Red Dress, and he resolved to always faithfully serve the Nan Chen gang. The stranger seemed to come out of nowhere. He was smiling and very confident. The cheerful Skalazab simply showered Burkut with compliments. He was extremely surprised that Yifei had figured out the secret of the red dress so easily. The strange stranger finally realized why the syndicates were offering huge sums of money for Burkut's head. Yifei is truly uncontrollable and dangerous. The stranger said that his name was Cheng Yuan. He was sure that Burkut looked too much like him. Suddenly the guy claimed that Burkut had changed a lot after the army. And now Yifei had become like an ordinary person. Cheng Yuan wondered who had changed Burkut's lifestyle so drastically. Did Ying Ying really do it? Angry Burkut ordered the guy to release Ingen immediately. He threatened to kill anyone who harmed the girl. But the funny man wasn't afraid. He wanted to play on Burkut's nerves. The careless Joker was behind Yi Fei in no time. How did he teleport so quickly? Was it not a human, but a ghost? Dodgy Burkut didn't wait to be stabbed in the back. He started defending himself. Cheng Yuan said that he had already studied all of Burkut's fighting techniques. He thought he was quite slow and clumsy. The enemy turned out to be very cunning, like a fox. His actions are unpredictable. Is it a fight, or perhaps it's a love affair? What a touching, romantic scene. Where's the lover running off to so quickly? There's no hiding from the merry man's naughty hands. It seems the persistent bandit is trying to let Burkut's guard down. It was hard to anticipate the actions of an insidious adversary. The golden eagle was at the center of the tornado. Was he scared, or was he waiting for the enemy to run out of steam? However, the jolly man seemed to enjoy this kind of survival game. He was addicted to the game to the point of self-indulgence. Suddenly, the mischievous joker saddled a stroppy horse. Cheng Yuan used the Shenlong castle during the battle. Why doesn't Burkut even try to defend himself? Did he really lose? Shenlong lock is a very effective martial arts technique. Only the most talented and diligent fighters can master this technique. With this technique, you can easily defeat tougher and stronger opponents. Even a giant is far from being able to escape from this castle. The strongest opponents weep and beg for forgiveness when they enter Shenlong Castle. They become completely helpless and defenseless. Such a horrible castle is what Burkut has fallen into. Cheng Yuan said that Yifei should surrender immediately. It was useless to resist. Can Burkut escape the new trap? He seems to be on the verge of death. Yifei felt a terrible pain and discomfort. However, he was unwilling to give up. Cheng Yuan said that only an American captain he knew could break the Shenlong lock. This captain must have been a tremendously strong giant. However, Burkut, as an experienced, talented burglar, easily found the key to the complicated lock. He's free. Now Burkut wanted to teach the swaggering bastard a lesson. The sword of justice is upon the enemy. The master had once warned Cheng Yuan and his other disciples that there were some very powerful people who could escape from Shenlong Castle. But apparently, the overconfident boy didn't even believe his master. And those who can tear apart Shenlong Castle are best not to fight. You should run away without a second thought. However, the avenues for retreat had been destroyed. We had to humble ourselves and accept the punishment for the sins we had committed. Master was right. Why didn't Cheng Yuan listen to him? Now he must be bitterly regretting being overconfident. The spaceship is launched. What planet or star will it end up on? The bandit's pretty face was damaged in the battle. How can you smile now if you don't even have teeth? Here, one must always use one's knowledge and skills carefully and listen to the older, wiser masters. Cheng Wan disobeyed the master and went his own way, for which he was now punished. Don't tease the beast. An angry predator is hard to tame. It's the owner's fault, but it's the pretty face that's hurt. The cocky thug won't be able to smile for long. The undaunted enemy had become a punching bag. 
the golden eagle was relentlessly striking blow after blow. That's not an owl. It's the enemy's bulging eyes, full of fear and despair. The enraged Burkut demanded that the bandit tell him where Ingen was now. His fist was ready to strike again. But the stubborn man was silent. He received many blows to different parts of his body. The formidable Burkut said that before that he had only tickled his enemy. But if the criminal continues to remain silent, he will experience hellish torment. The weary villain tried to smile and tease Burkut. However, it seemed to be laughter through tears. The mutilated thug called Yifei a proud and arrogant eagle. However, the bandit believed that in real life, Burkut suppressed his true instincts and resembled a sheep. The criminal couldn't understand why Yifei suppresses his inner desire to kill. Why doesn't Burkut want to be a predator? The bandit refused to say where Ingen was hidden. Will a real predator awaken in Burkut and kill his enemy? Director Shu reports that their company has high ratings this year. Thanks all colleagues for doing a great job. The employees bowed their heads to the chief. They are ready to continue working hard and productively for the benefit of the company. The tempter serpent follows Ingen everywhere and all the time, even comes into her dreams. The Don Juan seems to have grown out of the ground. He makes my heart beat faster. How tender his touch is. How caring and attentive this guy is. He is an artist's dream and many women's dream. Why is Li Yifei constantly in Ying Ying's head? Who gave him permission to go in there? Why is he disturbing Aphrodite's soul? The confused girl decided to punish Yifei. She spared no effort and struck a powerful blow. What is it? Where's the shameless man? How quickly the impudent one got away. The girl woke up. It turned out that she had seen her tempter snake in her dream. Tied up Ingen is in the trunk of the car. It's incredibly noisy outside. An angry Ingen broke free. She was determined to find the shameless man and punish him. The tempter serpent was very busy. He was too engrossed in the fight and didn't even notice the surprised Ingen. The ruthless local stopped. Was it really the voice of the one he had been searching for so long? The cruel punisher turned into a surprised, joyful boy. Had he seen his favorite toy? The distraught boy began to hastily untie Ingen. He apologized for getting too involved in the fight and not being able to release the girl quickly. Caring Yifei tried his best to please his princess. He even forgot about his insidious enemies. And why is the mutilated bandit laughing wildly? Does he have a mental disorder, a nervous insanity? The mad criminal looked contemptuously at the couple. He couldn't understand why the all-powerful Burkut had decided to become an ordinary man because of some woman. At last, Ingen could see the face of her captor. The villain's makeup was excellent. The makeup artist had done an excellent job. Suddenly, the criminal confidently declared that Ahu had already sent the entire Ingen family to the other world. The bandit believed that Ahu was the strongest in their syndicate and could not be defeated even by Burkut. An unexpected turn of events. Is the Ingen family gone? The crazy maniac did not stop talking. He believed that the girl and the guy would hate themselves for the rest of their lives and regret that they could not help their close, dear people. Where's that big guy coming from and where's he going? Why is he yelling so scared? It's the invincible Ahu. Is he still alive? Suddenly the giant's huge shadow appeared. One bandit was lying unconscious. The other was screaming fearfully. Yifei and Ying Ying tried to understand what had happened. The old general wondered why a half-dead thug was called invincible. It was just a mountain of meat. And who could hardly breathe? He was afraid to even move. Once upon a time, a martial arts master insinuated to Ah Hu that the guy had tremendous strength. This master also believed that the gangster's body was perfect and invulnerable. The master must have been right, and Hu was incredibly strong. But could he control his strength? The menacing voice of the head of the Shu family rang out. He said that Ah Hu didn't even know what gunpowder smelled like. He also said that the huge lout had never been to a real battlefield. Old Shu believed that a body could be called perfect if it was covered with scars. That was exactly the kind of body the retired general had. Ingen was glad to see her dad alive and well. Her father probably didn't expect to meet his daughter in such a dangerous place. The front of the retired general's torso was completely scarred from gunshot wounds and burns, but his back was clean and unharmed. He used to be sent to the front lines often. Burkut said a polite hello to the retired general. The observant Yifei realized that the old man had been to more than one battlefield and had vast experience in combat operations. The old man saw the mutilated bandit. He must have realized that it was the same bastard who had kidnapped his daughter. The retired general clearly admired his future son-in-law. He was madly glad that the boy was able to protect his daughter. Shining Yifei declared that it was his duty to protect Ying Ying. At this time, the outlaw was still wondering why second brother had been defeated. A formidable retired general said that power must be used rationally. Huge power without intelligence is a bubble. The perpetrators were warned not to move. The police have already been called. But the bandits didn't want to fall into the hands of the police. So they thought about how to escape. Why is it so noisy again? 
Not a moment's peace. The criminals revolted. They gathered the remnants of their forces and began to desperately attack their opponents. Cheng Yuan decided to see if the retired general could break out of Shenlong Castle. Perhaps the bandit thought that the old man had already lost his strength over the years. The overconfident Ahu thought that Burkut was quite weak. Therefore, he will definitely win this time. Can the old man escape from the deadly castle? Does he have any strength left? How will the fight between Burkut and Ahu end? In terms of weight and physique, the opponents are completely different. The old eagle has fallen into a trap. The enemy triumphs, and Hu started to show off the power of his huge fists again. He resembles a clumsy bear. Is this really a knockout? Will Burkut survive another fight? However, the thug's blow was a mosquito bite for Ifei. The unshakable Burkut was able to stay on his feet and keep his composure. The scrawny scumbag was frozen with fear. He struck with all his might, but Burkut didn't even move. So that's what the clumsy little bugger's for. It's a great battering ram for breaking down walls. Ifei must have been bored. He wanted to fight someone else. He couldn't find a worthy opponent. The old man broke out of the trap quite easily and quickly. The arrogant bandit was completely disarmed and immovable. Once upon a time, the one-armed dragon master had created a very effective attack technique, and Cheng Yuan decided to use this technique during the battle. However, the wise old man had no problem blocking the cunning attack. The retired general had been through a lot and knew a lot of things and people. He suddenly said that the master defeated criminal had two scars on his face and one hand. The young thug was extremely surprised that the old man knew his superior master Li Yinglong so well. That was why the general could easily guess what martial techniques his opponent could use. Suddenly, the old man confessed that he had put the one-handed dragon into the grave with his own hand. It happened during the war in Rouen. The death of the master finally threw the unlucky man out of his mental equilibrium. After all, the boy idolized his teacher and considered him his life ideal and role model. The bloody criminal was screaming in pain. His arm was broken. This was the old man's way of punishing the bandit for daring to touch his family. Burkut was moping. His fists itched and he wanted to fight. But there were no more punching bags. All good things come to an unfortunate end. Burkut's still got a lot of energy left in him. He didn't even have time to blow off steam properly. The huge punching bag had run off somewhere. Bored Burkut wanted to perfect his side and straight punches. But there was no punching boy. The police showed up on time. By the time they arrived, the criminals had already been neutralized. The work of the police was successfully done by Burkut and the head of the Shu family. The suspects were immediately arrested. Cheng Wan yelled wildly that he was a citizen of the country of Ruan. The bandit wanted to see his ambassador. The policeman unceremoniously put the bandits into a car. No one paid any attention to the threats of the villains. The pensive old man sat immovably beside his son-in-law. Suddenly an old acquaintance of the general appeared. That guy with the menacing look is police captain Gu. He said he hasn't seen the retired general for a long time. The old man got the captain into trouble again. The police captain reprimanded the old man like a school teacher. He asked the general to stop getting him into trouble. The stern captain said they had very little time. Life flies by quickly. The old man sat immovable like a diligent student. Often a multitude of memories prevented him from seeing the present. The police captain wanted the general not to be so careless and to take care of himself. You can't live for an encore. The friends cheerfully greeted each other with friendly fist bumps. The old man said that he missed the captain's late father very much and wished to visit him in the afterlife. The observant Burkut realized that Father Ingen and the police captain were old friends, and they seemed incredibly happy to see each other. A man approached a retired general and said he wanted to marry his beautiful daughter. But the old man replied that there was already a beautiful guy in Yining, Li Yifei. The man was greatly annoyed when he saw Ingen's boyfriend. Now the general's daughter would never be his wife. The endless chatter of the people around him bored Yifei. He began to have anxious thoughts. The old man looked at Li Yifei sadly. Was he really so worried that a bad habit would ruin his son-in-law's health? The general cried like a child. The frightened son-in-law began to comfort him, and he wanted to throw away the villain with the filter. Yifei thought that the old man just hated the smell of cigarette smoke. However, that was not the case. The main reason for hating cigarettes is because of Police Captain Gu. Strange but true. The sad old man searched his memory. He painfully recalled what had happened on the eve of their victory. This brave fellow is young Xu Zheng Guo. His reconnaissance team has just successfully completed an important mission. The guy was satisfied with the team's performance and relaxed. It was then that Xu Zheng Guo made a terrible mistake. Gu's father, the squad captain, was worried that the young scout's pacifier might give away their location. You can't play with such a toy at night when there are tons of enemies around. The captain ordered him to put out the cigarette immediately. But Xu Zhengguo felt that he had been a real hero during the last reconnaissance mission. 
Therefore, he decided that he was entitled to a small portion of nicotine. But the kid wasn't allowed to relax. The tasty candy was taken to the kid. The captain suddenly saw a suspicious flashing light. He snatched the smoking toy from the young warrior's hands in a flash. Something terrible and irreparable had happened. It was a terrible, heartbreaking memory. Their location has been revealed. The enemy launched a surprise attack on the squad. Here comes the first deadly surprise from the enemy. No one expected such a terrible gift. The young man was born with his shirt on. He just flew away. After all, the lucky guy was far away from the epicenter of the explosion. When Xu Zhengguo woke up, the enemy had already been destroyed by his comrades. However, three fighters from the squad had died. Among them was the captain. It was the captain who saved Xu Zhengguo with the value of his own life. Gu was young then. He was 36 years old. The light of the cigarette gave away the location of the squad. The captain snatched the cigarette from Xu Zhengguo's hands. That's why the fortunate man is still alive. The furious Xu Zhengguo was burning with a thirst for revenge. He ruthlessly led his team into the enemy camp and ruthlessly, lightning fast defeated the Ruin army. But the cunning Li Yinglong pretended to be dead. Then the one-armed dragon fled the battlefield. A grief-stricken Xu Zhengguo personally buried his battle comrades. But he couldn't bury the bitter, painful memories of that tragic day. Remorse followed him continuously on his heels. Now standing in front of the old man was the son of the dead captain. Apparently, Xu Zhengguo often remembered that tragic day when he saw this man. Xu Zhengguo believed that he was the one responsible for the death of his comrades. The man always regretted disobeying the captain. It was sad that his son grew up without a father. The police captain became a kindred spirit to old man Xu. They never left each other in trouble. Xu Zhengguo regularly provided financial assistance to the family of the deceased battle comrade until Captain Gu's son grew up and began to earn money on his own. But money can't make amends. Tears came in hail down the old man's face. Captain Gu said that Xu Zhengguo should not constantly torture himself and repent. There is no right or wrong in war. The story of the sentimental retired general moved Yifei deeply. His body still couldn't get its usual dose of nicotine. The men saluted the general. To them, he was a true hero. There are people who protect us and are willing to sacrifice themselves for the good, to save others. They should be respected and not forgotten. Captain Gu assumed that the suspects were a gang of gangsters from South Asia. One of these suspects managed to escape. Someone cheerfully called out to the son-in-law and the head of the Shu family. Who is preventing the police from investigating? Whose slender legs are those? Why are the policemen so flushed and embarrassed? Ingen has brought her mother and younger sister with her. She's worried about her husband's condition. And for Shanshan, the most important thing is that their son-in-law is alive and well. Captain Gu was quite happy to see Ying Ying. He seemed to like the girl a lot. The embarrassed police captain showered the girl with compliments. Inijin introduced her new boyfriend to him. She said that Brother Gu was a very nice man and thanked him for his timely help. Apparently, Captain Gu wanted to be more than just a good person to the girl. When the policeman left, Ying Ying said that her father didn't hear her conversation with Yi Fei in the bedroom. It was told to her by her younger sister. Ying Ying ordered that Yi Fei should not tell anyone about her father's racy photos. She wanted her family to always have peace and tranquility. The girl asked me to keep my mouth shut. Her request seemed to come from the heart. The glowing boy vowed that he would not reveal Ingen's father's secret to anyone. Even if he was tortured, he would still keep silent. Here comes the queen of intrigue. She always shows up at the right moment and is ready to do a good deed. The guy finally reached his dream, which seemed to be so out of reach. Fate had thrown him an unexpected surprise. It was a bonus for saving Ingen's life. The dazed boy apologized wildly for what had happened. But he was in no hurry to remove his hands. His palms were glued to the ripe, juicy melons. This was a scene Shan Shan hadn't seen in any romantic TV series. She was over the moon. The angry girl asked when the guy could clean up his dirty, lustful hands. Embarrassment and anger prevented her from breathing normally. Inigin quickly brought the boy to his senses with a sharp and strong blow. His hands were free, torn from the woman's charms. The peregrine falcon is considered the fastest bird, but it turns out that Yi Fei can fly faster than this bird. The boy clutched at the sleeve of the old man's jacket. The earth's gravity seemed to be gone. Photographs flew from his jacket in different directions. Like carefree butterflies, they fluttered lightly in the air. Who is this mysterious beauty? And what is Xu Zhengguo doing near her? Why such surprised, frightened eyes? What did the sisters see in the pictures? Everyone was extremely surprised and shocked. No one could move from their seats. Suddenly, the general's wife's surprised eyes were covered by a photograph with a seductive beauty. It was a hurricane of miracles. Xu Zhengguo frantically gathered the photos that he had previously hidden so carefully in his jacket. He clearly didn't want anyone to see these mysterious photos. The wife tried to find out what had happened. The husband was numb with fear. The wife wanted to know the truth. 
Why did her husband keep these pictures? Ingen realized that the truth always comes out. Sometimes it comes out when you don't want it to. The daughter told him not to panic. She assured me that her father would be able to explain everything. The son-in-law didn't know how this family show would end. Was war coming or would peace prevail among the relatives? It seems that soon the old man's secret will be revealed and the masks will be removed. How will this affect family relationships? Unexpectedly, Shu's mom picked up a picture. There were more pictures of them scattered around her. No matter how much Shu's father tried to hide them, it was useless. Shu's mom stomped over some of these photos barely able to stand on her feet. She wondered why Shu's father had kept these pictures. Shu's father opened his eyes wide with a desperate expression. With sweat on his face, he asked Mama Shu to listen to him. While Shu's mom was standing there with the photo in her hand and a puzzled expression on her face, Shu Shanshan tried to approach her. She yelled for her mom to calm down. Just then, Shu's mother, with an angry expression with fury in her eyes, raised her hand at Shu's father. Shu Yingying shouted for her to calm down. With a frightened expression on her face, she tried to stop her. Li Yifei didn't stand aside either. He begged his aunt to wait. However, it turns out the expression of fury on Shu Mama's face was only an illusion. Lightly whipping Shu's father with a blush on her face, she asked why he still kept the photos with their beautiful memories from their youth. Shu's father said that they were too mesmerizing while the rest of the family fell over in surprise. Li Yifei and Shu Yingying were surprised at this outcome of the situation. They were all very much perplexed. They were also joined by Shu Shan Shan, who, although she didn't understand the situation initially, was extremely surprised. With a look of skepticism on their faces, all three of them questioned whether these photos had been taken when they were young. Puzzled, Shu Yingying asked if that was really the case, and if her father was having an affair. With an embarrassed expression on her face, Shu's mom said that his father Shu wouldn't dare to have an affair, because she was very beautiful, and in her youth, Shu's father Shu was literally charmed by her. But she also said that Shu's father was extremely courteous, and all these photos were the fault of his request. Shu's mom said she didn't expect her husband still had them, although he said that he didn't dare to throw away the photos, because they were evidence of their love. He also said that Mama Shu is still as beautiful as ever. All three of them stood in a stupor while Shu's mom said that maybe she shouldn't say that in front of the kids, and asked them to postpone the conversation until tonight. Everyone was about to leave when a policeman called out to the protagonist and asked him to go to the police station. Li Yifei started to say that he was also a victim, but the policeman was adamant. He said that as long as the investigation was not over, he was still under suspicion. But suddenly, Shu's father called out to the policeman. The policeman turned his head in the direction of the source of the sound with a nervous expression. With a grim expression, Shu's father told him to listen to him. Squinting his eyes, Father Shu said that Li Yifei was his son-in-law. The policeman and Li Yifei directly dumbfounded, turning their entire bodies towards Father Shu. At the same time, Mama Shu and Shu Shanshan were also extremely surprised and looked at the source of the sound. Shu Yingying was no exception. She even opened her mouth in astonishment. At the same hour, with a grim expression on his face, Father Shu asked the policeman if he understood everything. The man started to back up. He told the old man not to worry, because he only had to take his statement and asked him not to look at him so murderously. Shu's mother took a swing at her husband and hit him on the head, lamenting that he had frightened the policeman. Xiao Gu was dumbfounded at this scene, thinking that he had become a different person. Xu Yingying walked over to the raucous company and called out to her father. With a serious expression on her face, she asked why Shu's father called the protagonist son-in-law. Since he disliked him so much, Father Shu clapped the protagonist on the shoulder. He was surprised at the unexpected movement on his part. Looking at the protagonist with a mesmerized expression on his face, Father Shu said that a man who likes tying up can't be bad. Shu Ying Ying was extremely surprised by this. She raised one eyebrow and only wondered in her mind if Shu's father didn't understand. At the same time, the rest of the company was extremely surprised by this remark. Li Yifei himself marveled at him, only imagining the way he had been taught to tie up the turtle. Clenching his fist, he realized he had lost the thread of his father's thoughts, but he didn't care anymore. With a serious expression on his face, he confidently said not to worry and just trust Ying Ying, thinking that he had already accomplished his mission. Just then a fire extinguisher suddenly flew into his face. It turns out that it was Xu Ying Ying who hit the guy so hard, he immediately fell unconscious. At the same moment, Xu Ying Ying threw back the fire extinguisher and grabbed the man's leg. She decided to move on, pulling the man's leg. He hit the lantern very unluckily, but because he was unconscious, he couldn't even say anything. Xu Ying Ying had already disappeared behind the alley, still dragging the poor guy like a sack. All this time, Shu's father stood in a stupor, still trying to reach out to the guy. At the same time, Shu Yingying started beating up the protagonist. She said that nothing could clear our name now and asked why he agreed. 
she clearly didn't care about the guy's attempts to justify herself. The rest of the company looked puzzled at the situation while Xu's parents whispered about the reasons why Xu Yingying was beating him like that. The next day, the group was already at the airport. Li Yifei was covered in bruises and had black spots under his eyes. Shivering at the amount of luggage, he realized in his mind that he looked like a panda since he was walking around with those black eyes. He even wondered why he found it so familiar. It seems like Xu Yingying likes to take revenge. Xu Yingying and Xu Shanshan were talking amongst themselves about why Xu's father hadn't come yet. Xu Shanshan said that he was going to visit an old friend, so he couldn't come here. At the same time, the policeman called out to Xu Yingying. He said not to forget about him and to come visit more often. Xu Yingying thanked him for coming to see them off, and she also called him a good man. The policeman recoiled with tears in his eyes. After all, he had only been called a good person. At the same time, Xu Shanshan asked if Li Yifei really knows Teacher Chao Ya. Xu Yingying turned around at the source of the sound. It turned out that Xu Shanshan had hugged the guy so tightly that his head was in her chest. The guy didn't know where to put himself out of embarrassment. The girl thanked the one for even being willing to provide it to her. With the same expression on her face and a smile on her face, she told him not to lie to him, because there was no way he could know the most famous dancer in the country. Getting out of Li Yifei's embrace, Yifei said that they were really friends and he could introduce her to her. At the same time, Xu Yingying took the protagonist by the collar. With a serious expression on her face, she headed for the plane, dragging the protagonist behind her at the same time. The rest of the company began to say goodbye to them. At the same time watching the airplane take off, Xu's father said to treat his daughter well. Toth sank into reminiscence, looking closely at the photograph. As if addressing the man depicted in it, he said that he realized his mistake. Looked in the distance, Xu's father said that he had successfully quit smoking, and all his acquaintances had already grown up. Also said that it would be good if he could see it. It wasn't long before they arrived in the city of Yi. Li Yifei finally got out of the car after all. Opening the door, Li Yifei saw people beside him greeting him. Well, here was the beautiful weather. The sun was shining all over. However, it was not the sun that was blinding my eyes. Leaning on the arch of the door, Li Yifei wished everyone a good morning. Four beautiful girls greeted him. One of them held out breakfast. Another said that the principal had invited him to the office. The other two praised his looks and success in life. With a wink, Li Yifei said that if that was the case, why don't they have a drink after work today? As he walked on, he heard the screams of the beautiful girls behind him. Li Yifei found himself in front of the principal's door. When Li Yifei opened the door, he asked her why she wanted to see him. Jumping up and down, the principal with a blush on her face was overjoyed to see him. She immediately walked over to the main character, snuggling up to him and thanking Li Yifei while the guy told her not to. At the same time, the girl said that she would give it to him, gradually taking off her clothes. Li Yifei jumped up and down from what was happening. Throwing his shirt over the protagonist, Li Yifei was already presenting an indescribable sight. Li Yifei pulled the shirt off his face and asked with a blush what happened to her. However, it turned out to be not Xu Yingying, but a demon very similar to her. She said to stop acting stupid since his identity had been revealed. She assumed that he had gotten close to her in order to attack her. Pointing her finger at the guy, she said she was about to do something to him. A red ray was released from her finger. As a consequence of this, Li Yifei was surprised, for all of his clothes were missing. At the same time, the demon punched the protagonist in the groin, laughing and calling him a corpse. However, it turned out to be just a dream. The protagonist finally woke up with an unbelievable scream and fright on his face. The same Li Yifei realized that it was a dream and asked himself why he bought such a stupid pillow in the form of a ram's head. Barely recovered from his nap, he began to prepare his breakfast. Then he made himself a big hearty breakfast, consisting of chicken leg and rice with extras. Right after that, Li Yifei went to work. He stopped as he was waiting for the shuttle bus. Finally inside, Li Yifei, like many other men around him, took out his phone and started watching the news. At some point, some girl fell on the main character. He finally got off his phone and looked at the victim. The girl, still leaning on the man, immediately apologized, averting her eyes. Li Yifei said it was fine. He finally got a good look at the girl and realized that she was the schoolgirl who had gotten into trouble for stealing the bag. Looking closely, there was a grown man standing behind her and sticking his hand under the girl's skirt. That man, or should I say pervert, was breathing heavily into the girl's back. However, Li Yifei could not tolerate such bullying of a girl. He immediately grabbed the rascal's arm. However, he grabbed so hard that that person's hand even began to tremble. Li Yifei shouted at the fat pig to stop. The pervert, covered in sweat from the pain, yelled out what this had to do with the protagonist. However, Li Yifei did not like this response. He squeezed the rogue's hand with even more force. 
The man's eyes bulged with pain as a consequence of this action. At the same time, Li Yifei was already furious, wryly asking if perverts could argue, and then he shouted for the man to get lost. As the man ran out of the protagonist's sight, he thought to himself and tried to calm down. At the same time, Chu Xiaoyao cried and thanked the protagonist for saving her. Li Yifei had clearly gotten used to it by now and said that it was fine. However, at the same time, the bus decided to stop unexpectedly. Due to Chu Xiaoyao not holding onto the support at that time, Very Shi abruptly ended up on the main character's chest. Li Yifei, not expecting such a sudden move, blushed heavily. At the same time, Chu Xiaoyao, who was feeling dizzy, said that she didn't feel good about something. Her eyes blurred abruptly and she fell unconscious. A little later, Li Yifei Chu Xiaoyao was sitting in the park. Li Yifei, thinking that the girl would benefit from the breakfast more than him, gave it to her. Chu Xiaoyao asked if she could really eat it, to which Li Yifei said yes. After tasting a bite, Chu Xiaoyao said that the food was really delicious and praised the main character's cooking skills. Li Yifei said that since she was dizzy, she shouldn't skip breakfast, especially when she was at such an early age. At the same time, he looked at his watch and realized that he was late for work. Li Yifei thought that every time he sees a girl and she's either being robbed or harassed and it seems like she's really out of luck. He already thought that she was so hungry now that she was about to faint and wondered if she might be a fraud. After eating all of the protagonist's breakfast, Chu Xiaoyao apologized to him that she had eaten all of his bento and that she would repay him next time. Saying that there was no need for that, Li Yifei was once again convinced that someone like her could not be a cheater. Getting up from the bench, Li Yifei said he had to go to work and asked her to be careful. Chu Xiaoyao thanked the man once again. Unexpectedly, Li Yifei bumped into another passerby with his shoulder. Turning around, Li Yifei looked at the perpetrators of the event. That man was wearing an extremely odd-looking uniform with a dragon image on it. He wore glasses and looked sternly at his surroundings. That man also turned around and looked at the protagonist. The man's servant pointed his finger at the protagonist and shouted how dare he hit his brother. He also said to apologize at the same hour. Turning back, the man told his servant to stop and move on. The man tried to defend his point of view, but was interrupted halfway through the sentence. Here, the man turned around with a smile and asked if he could understand Dufaitan's words. He also said to bring him to him as soon as possible. The servant finally disengaged himself from the protagonist and nodding his head nervously followed the man. Li Yifei squinted his eyes and seriously looked at the passers-by. Upon reaching his place of work, Li Yifei saw the Hua Yang commercial building. Once through the front doors, the man thought he was finally here. After presenting a piece of paper to the girl at the reception desk, Li Yifei said hello and said that he was starting work today and asked to be escorted to the office. The girl said to follow her. After correcting his uniform, Li Yifei thought that now his life was about to change. After following the girl, Li Yifei finally finally made it to the office door. Fixing his hair and closing his eyes, the protagonist said hello and said that if they needed his help, let them feel free to seek him out. Someone was surprised by his arrival and said that he was as good a time as any. Li Yifei opened his eyes and looked in the direction of the source of the voice. There stood the same man who had sprung the girl from the bus. He was the deputy minister of the logistics department. Tut was clearly not happy to see the man and said that he hadn't seen a young guy with such determination in a long time and would bring him up. At the same moment, the newcomer was looked at by all the people in the office. Li Yifei was not even frightened by the fact that his boss was the very pervert whose hand he was clutching, but by the fact that his expectations were too far from reality. One man spoke first and said hello. Li Yifei said, Where are his promised beautiful ladies just like that? Said that very man's hair was flying away. The first female representative greeted them. So she was nowhere near as beautiful as Li Yifei had expected. A middle-aged man also said hello to him and acted cool, showing his music preference with gestures. Li Yifei thought it was a shame to like rock and roll when he was already in his late teens. The supervisor said that if he liked helping so much, next time all the documents would be sent by the protagonist. He said to send the current documents to a neighboring department. The last person to say hello was a girl in a white dress. A certain Michelle said that all the beautiful ladies they were talking about were in the administrative department, and this was the logistics department. Li Yifei was surprised that there was at least one normal girl here, and for once she was pretty. Li Yifei said he was pleased to meet her and looked forward to working with her. Michelle held out the very paperwork to be sent to another department. The boss asked why he was still here while Li Yifei turned back toward the exit with embarrassment. Well, as he walked down the corridor, various thoughts crossed his mind. He thought that this was some kind of misunderstanding, that Xu Ying Ying would not have gotten the protagonist into such a department. All the same time, the bell suddenly rang. Li Yifei reached into his pocket to answer it. 
Picking up his phone, Li Yifei saw that Xu Yingying had told him to come to the roof. While pondering what they would do on the rooftop, the protagonist thought that, as expected, Xu Yingying had not abandoned him. He also thought that she was here to comfort him. Running right past the one-time donation poster, Li Yifei headed straight for the roof. After reaching his destination, Li Yifei approached the woman. He, with a serious look on his face, said he was here. The girl was looking at the vastness around her at the time. When she heard that a man had arrived, she said that she really needed his help. Li Yifei flinched as he realized that this was very serious. Turning around and holding the phone in her hands, Xu Yingying said that Xu Shanshan wanted to check on them again. She said that he was busy, but that didn't help. She asked to pick up the phone and be ready to answer when the girl called later. Looking at the woman's phone, the protagonist said of course she would, wondering if she really called him for such a trifle. Holding out the phone of the protagonist, Xu Yingying said that she is obviously trying to test us if they are not together to expose them one simple call. Li Yifei said he understood and picked up the phone. The man said hello and asked why Xu Shan Shan was looking for him. So out of breath from her dance class, she asked if he was really with her sister. She's doing what's obvious there together. He's just been shopping for breakfast. Xu Ying Ying wanted something light so he went to the supermarket to buy bamboo shoots and cook porridge. On the other side of the phone, Xu Shan Shan's desire to eat was heard. Li Yifei also said that he would also cook for her when she arrived. She said that she would not stop the man from cooking for her sister and said goodbye. Li Yifei exhaled, saying that it was finally over. However, Xu Ying Ying interrupted, saying that it wasn't over yet. With a serious expression on her face, she said that Xu Shan Shan was going to stay at their house soon so he should move in with her. Li Yifei walked back to his office in contemplation of what he had just heard. Then Xu Ying Ying told him to come home in a few days. The protagonist asked why he should do that, since he didn't want to interfere with the problem between her and her sister. Right after that, Xu Ying Ying said that she would transfer him to the pretty girl's department if he did. Li Yifei thought that he would have to deal with her again. Just then, from behind the door, he heard the name calling of someone in the office. The full figured woman said that Michelle's boss asked to come to his office again. Li Yifei couldn't believe his ears and asked if this had ever happened before. The same Xu Ying Ying said that she saw him touch Michelle for the last time. Li Yifei was clearly angry, and with rage in his face, was about to walk into the boss's office while the other employees were scared because of the guy. What was happening was what Li Yifei feared was happening. Michelle was too close to the supervisor at that time and said, Don't do that. At the same time, the boss was saying with a nasty smile that she had just entered the working world and didn't understand a lot of things. Hearing Li Yifei slamming the door, the supervisor asked who it was who walked in without even knocking on the door. Immediately afterward, Li Yifei threw the documents to the supervisor right in his face. Putting on a pompous pose, Li Yifei asked the boss to excuse him because his hand had only slipped. Michelle looked joyfully at her savior. Holding the girl's hand, Li Yifei said as they walked, wiping the papers off his face. His boss was visibly angry and said to himself in his mind that he would remember him. At the same time, a group of people gathered near the collapsed houses. Unexpectedly, standing in a puddle of muddy water, the man shouted. The man said that he had heard from his servant that the sage knew the whereabouts of the members of his syndicate. That very person turned out to be the passerby who passed by the protagonist. With his hands behind his back, he said that he was the best fighter of the Nan Chen gang, but also said that although the syndicate of people standing opposite was stronger than him, however, no one in Asia who insulted that man's syndicate would have a good ending. The man squinted his eyes and asked who that wise man was and said to quickly tell everything. But they weren't interested in talking, one of them was quietly smoking a cigarette. The other man, however, said that they were not wise men. This revelation came as a shock to the man. The man grabbed his servant by the throat and asked how dare he deceive him. The man did not expect such a sudden move and asked his boss to listen to his explanation. Then the man clearly didn't want to hear the words. He said that if he dared to humiliate the best fighter of their gang, he must be looking for death. Suddenly a voice came from behind. At the same moment another hand pierced the man's chest, and the owner of that hand said that he was called the sage. As soon as the man dropped dead, the very men across the street bowed and politely said that they had figured out the whereabouts of one of the gang members. Turning around, the sage said that the dead man was a profile sent by the syndicate to investigate a case. The man had been following him for a long time, but he didn't suspect him at all. He also said that it was not surprising that this syndicate was considered third-rate since it was made up of only losers. Throwing off his upper clothes, the man said that he had investigated everything and had learned through Dufetian that the gang was also looking for these people. He said that it seemed like everyone in the syndicate had turned against each other after the two were put away. Looking at the corpse, the sage said to show the one who dared to steal goods from the best terrorist syndicate in the world. At the same time, one of the gang members, the one who had undergone plastic surgery, 
was in prison. He was surrounded by other prisoners. It was already evening Li Yifei was on his way home from work. He stood on the subway and held onto the handrail, completely immersed in his thoughts. Well remembered how Michelle apologized for giving the main character a hard time. She also said that the boss was an evil man and told him to be careful. Suddenly a ringtone sounded. Li Yifei put his hand into his pocket to take out his phone. It turned out that it was Xu Yingying who had written to him and told him to come to her house because they had something to discuss. After sorting out his affairs, Li Yifei had already come to Xu Yingying's residence at night. After standing in front of the eye and confirming my identity, the door was opened. I went into the main character's room and saw an extremely cozy interior. The guy looked around and said what a stylish villa it was. Walking up to the main character, Xu Yingying said that he had come to ask him to sit at the table and provided him with two cups of tea. She began to say that Xu Shanshan would arrive in a week. And taking the mug in her hands, Xu Yingying inhaled the flavor. She also said that her mother had told her about this news, so it was definitely true. After swallowing a gulp, Xu Yingying said that Li Yifei should stay here. The protagonist was surprised by such news and questioned whether it was really true. He started to argue that it was too much since their cooperation was already over. Xu Yingying said that the guy should live with her for a week to get used to it. At the same time, the bell rang, and it was the person responsible for the events who called. Li Yifei looked at the woman and asked if he should answer. Xu Yingying said not to panic and just pick up the phone. Picking up the phone, Li Yifei said hello and asked if anything was wrong. Xu Shanshan said that she was checking on him again. She asked how he was doing and whether he was with his sister or not. Li Yifei confirmed everything and asked why she was awake at such a time. The girl said why she had to go to bed so early. Intercepting Xu Yingying's phone, Xu Yingying said that it was obvious that they were asleep and what Ta wanted. Xu Shanshan said not to shout, since how could she know that they were sleeping? She also asked to be allowed to say something. In a naive voice, she said that she would fly to E City tomorrow morning. It was like a snowball to both listeners. Li Yifei had already started to say that shouldn't she have come only a week later as the girl hung up. Looking out the window, Xu Shanshan giggled and said that she had tricked them. Pressing his hand to Li Yifei's head, he wondered why she was flying here. Standing up, Xu Yingying said that she had been like this since she was a child. She began to explain that they had been fighting since they were kids, since they always wanted the same thing. However, this time she wouldn't give up so easily. She also told the main character not to worry because she has a lot of empty rooms, and today he will stay with her and wait for her attack. The very next day something was about to change in the tranquil villa. Hearing someone wanting to go inside, Xu Yingying said she was on her way. Standing on the threshold was Xu Shanshan with a suitcase. She apologized to Xu Yingying for disturbing her. Xu Yingying said with a soft smile that she was finally here after all and said welcome. Xu Yingying also said that she was very happy that Li Yifei was able to come. Xu Shanshan smiled and said that she was very happy to see her and asked how Li Yifei was doing. However, these smiles were only pretenses. They looked at each other with tense gazes. Just then, Li Yifei asked Xu Yingying to help him. Both women looked in the direction of the source of the sound. There stood Li Yifei wearing an apron preparing food. He was surprised by Xu Shanshan's arrival and said that he had just finished cooking. He also told the girls to sit down to eat. Xu Shanshan, on the other hand, was clearly pleased with the face of the protagonist and said that she was on her way. At the same time, Xu Yingying was immersed in her own thoughts. While Li Yifei was serving the food, she reflected on the fact that Xu Shanshan had always wanted what she didn't have and had always wrestled with her. However, she was determined that she would not give in this time. There was another conversation you had last night. While in Xu Yingying's bedroom, she tried to talk to the protagonist. She tried to say that they should watch out for her sister. But no sooner had she finished her sentence than she was interrupted. Xu Shanshan changed for worrying and asked the woman for an electric kettle. When Xu Shanshan left Xu Yingying tried to continue the conversation, she had already started talking about what they should do. However, she was quickly interrupted by Xu Shanshan who instantly entered the room. She said that she had prepared a nice tea for the two of them. Xu Yingying and Li Yifei were extremely embarrassed. Xu Yingying thought that she was really an extremely open spy, and also realized that she might be eavesdropping even now. It was indeed so Xu Shanshan leaned against the door trying to hear something. Closing her eyes with irritation on her face, Xu Yingying said that they would then use Plan B. However, Li Yifei himself didn't understand what she was talking about, so he asked her again. Xu Yingying took the protagonist by the tie and leaned over. By inertia, the protagonist knelt down and asked why he didn't know about the existence of Plan B. The girl was sitting in her office uniform in front of her computer. Xu Shanshan leaned against the door, listened behind the imaginary lovers, and wondered why there were no sounds, and if they were really so innocent. Suddenly she hears a loud moan. 
that it was so loud that Xu Shanshan immediately moved away from the wall. The table was not the only one, and several more were heard right after that. Xu Shanshan Crank was embarrassed and began to imagine what was going on there. At the same time, the main characters with a blush on their faces asked if Xu Yingying was that good. Closing her eyes from the reddening in her face, Xu Yingying awkwardly replied that she felt very good. But Li Yifei started to say that Xu Yingying was working, and he had learned some massage techniques that would help her relax. At the same time, Xu Yingying admired the main character's skills and said that she would never have known that he had such a unique skill. As a result, Xu Shenshan couldn't sleep all night because of the moans in the other room. The next morning the weather was beautiful. The sun shone with its soft light. She says a beautiful day Xu Shanshan never got a good night's sleep and got up with circles under her eyes. While she went downstairs, Li Yifei wished her a good morning and told her to go have breakfast, and also asked if she slept well last night. Xu Shanshan embarrassedly replied that she had slept well. Clearly remembering the events of last night, she blushed heavily. Immediately after that she ran out of the room saying that she wasn't feeling well and asked to eat without them. Li Yifei looked at Xu Yingying with a puzzled look. Once winked showed the protagonist a thumb in approval. Looking at the beautiful couple, Xu Shanshan thought that they really loved each other, and she didn't stand a chance. Seeing Li Yifei giving tea to Xu Yingying, she realized that they really looked like the perfect couple. Patting the edge, Li Yifei realized that the crane was not working. At the same time, Xu Shanshan was heading to her room thinking that it was a wasted trip. She thought that she should give up. At the same time, Li Yifei asked Xu Yingying where the flashlight was because he wanted to fix it. That same evening, Xu Shanshan decided to take a walk around the villa. It was then that she looked for her sister as she walked past the rooms. Suddenly she noticed something unusual. Li Yifei stood in a room dedicated to light and shook something. Xu Shanshan was so greatly surprised by such a finding that she almost turned white. She was extremely embarrassed and wondered what it was like. At the Satellite Surveillance Center, people who are on their way to launch the rocket and will launch it in exactly one minute. General Michael watched with a pipe in his teeth as his aide asked for the signal to launch the missile. At the same moment, the general pressed the red start button. With a tremendous noise, the rocket rushed upward while the general shouted that everything was for the pride of the White Eagle. Immediately after the aide said that so far so good they had succeeded, the general took his assistant by the chin and said that it was the way it should be, and offered to have a drink after work. Turning her head, Xu Shanshan caught herself thinking that she didn't need to think about it because he was married to her sister. However, as she thought a little more, she realized that theoretically he shouldn't be so horny after that night. She realized that she had most likely fallen into their trap, and also began to recall that the sounds from last night weren't as natural anymore. As soon as possible left the room feeling cheated, Xu Shanshan said that she would remember this to them. At the same time, Li Yifei merely shook the flashlight. Walking from room to room, Li Yifei stumbled into the right one. Shining a flashlight into the pitch darkness, Li Yifei realized that that's where the faucet was leaking. With a mechanical key, he was trying to subdue the pipe from the sink when suddenly he heard some voice. Xu Yingying asked her sister if she would have something to drink. Li Yifei turned around at the source of the sound. Xu Shanshan said that she wanted a glass of German mulled wine, and thanked her sister in advance. Squinting their eyes, the protagonist saw an opening through which they could see the kitchen. There the main character saw Xu Yingying and Xu Shanshan talking. Xu Shanshan was saying that she really loved the German mulled wine her sister made when Xu Yingying knew she would like it. Seeing Li Yifei's unexpected surprises, he blushed all red, precisely leaned over, and said that she remembered exactly that the sugar was in the bottom drawer. Blushing even more, the protagonist praised Xu Yingying's forms. Xu Shanshan said that they were very noisy that night, and similar sounds she had only passed yet in high school. Xu Yingying apologized for it. Li Yifei was still peeking at the two ladies and remarked in his mind, that he would never have thought that Xu Yingying would do something like this. Xu Yingying asked if she wanted more sugar when Xu Shanshan said yes. Although Li Yifei realized that if Xu Yingying noticed him, she would kill him immediately, but that didn't stop him from peeking. When Xu Shanshan tasted the mulled wine, she shouted that it was too hot and immediately yanked her hand, spilling some of the contents. Immediately, Xu Yingying poured all the mulled wine into the sink and said that she would redo everything. However, because Li Yifei was trying to fix the pipe and it wasn't very tightly secured, some of the contents began to spill out. Unfortunately, it hit right on the bottom of the man's apron. Felt in the boiling water of a vulnerable part of her body, Li Yifei barely restrained himself from screaming. The women walked out of the kitchen while Li Yifei, with all his might, he wished they would leave as soon as possible. Immediately after they did so, Li Yifei ran out with a red stain on his apron. As soon as they came out of the kitchen, the girls were surprised to find the person they were looking for so quickly. However, upon seeing the guy, Xu Shanshan was very surprised. The protagonist was waving, trying to cool down the part of his body where the boiling water hit, 
saying that it was burning badly. Xu Shanshan was extremely embarrassed by the situation already started to imagine the impossible. In the same satellite safety control center, there was an emergency situation the rocket's fuel tank had a defect. It was announced that if they did nothing, the missiles would explode in 20 seconds. The general kept trying to reassure his aides, telling them not to worry when the girl asked what they should do. Here, the man realized that they still had a chance to disconnect the second booster and allow the rocket to launch normally. Slamming the table, he announced his plan. When the aide had already started to realize the negotiations with the support service, the aide had bad news for the general. Turns out the missile exploded. Blushing and interrupted by her fantasies, Xu Shan Shan suspected something amiss. At the same time, Xu Ying Ying handed the protagonist a rag and told him to wipe the stain with it. In her thoughts, she went into Sherlock mode. She wondered if they hadn't been doing this last night why the hair would shoot from behind his rocket leaving such a big stain on his pants. Coming to the conclusion that they had a fake relationship, she pointed her finger at Xu Ying Ying. Glowing from her thoughts, Xu Shan Shan thought that she would soon take the toy away from Xu Ying Ying. The two revealed lovers asked each other what it was about Xu Shan Shan, however. Neither of them had a clue about what was going on in her head. Toge Xu Shan Shan walked out of the room with a confident step and said that she would be back soon. Li Yifei told her to be careful. With her intuition, the woman realized that Xu Shan Shan was up to something. Li Yifei took the hint and said that he would be careful. At the same time, the door opened. This Xu Shan Shan waved and from the other room and called out to the protagonist. She said that the air conditioner was probably broken and asked the guy to look at it. After checking the air conditioner, Li Yifei said that there was probably nothing wrong with it. Xu Shan Shan asked him to check it again. Didn't turn her head, Li Yifei asked confidently that it was the remote not discharged. At the same time as he wrapped his head around a pillow flew into his face. She flew straight to her destination. Into the pillow from his face and sitting down on the bed, Li Yifei asked what Xu Shan Shan was up to. When Xu Shan Shan returned, she said that since Xu Ying Ying didn't want to wash his pants, she could do so and told him to take them off as soon as possible. Li Yifei was surprised by this since he thought it was not tactful. Blushing, Xu Shan Shan asked what he was waiting for. Li Yifei embarrassedly told her to wait. Recoiling, Li Yifei asked if she was afraid that her sister would find out about it. A reference on her face, she pulled down the guy's pants and asked what his relationship with Xu Ying Ying was. Li Yifei tried to cover his intimate place with his shirt and asked Xu Shan Shan to stop. This is where Li Yifei imagines a nurse. He says it's been a long time since the last time on can still do it. She also tells me not to worry because the injection will be painless. He is interrupted from his fantasies, however, realizing that only if the nurses on the battlefield possessed such agility. Covering herself with a pillow, Li Yifei says let it be as she wants only for her to quickly wash her pants. At the same time, Xu Shan Shan abruptly grabbed her hands onto the pillow that Li Yifei was holding. The girl, blushing seductively, asked if he was really her sister's boyfriend. While Li Yifei was asking what Xu Shan Shan was doing, the woman kept saying that she saw what Li Yifei was doing recently. She said that she had the proof right under her hands and told him to put them away. Also abruptly, Li Yifei thought of continuing in his imagination and caught himself in the unworthiness of such thoughts. At that moment the door opened abruptly. Yishu Ying Ying took off her heels and asked if Li Yifei had seen her car keys because she had forgotten to take them and not hearing the protagonist, she also asked where he was. At the same time, Li Yifei and Xu Shan Shan glanced at each other. Xu Ying Ying was already beginning to wonder what Li Yifei and Xu Shan Shan were doing. She approached the room they were in. At the same time, Xu Shan Shan thinks this is the chance she has been waiting for. Xu Ying Ying finally opened the door to the room. Looking around, she asked if they were here. However, the room was empty. Xu Ying Ying decided to walk a little further. She was just passing by the bed. Right behind her lay the main Xu Shan Shan. The lower part of their legs were covered by a successfully lowered blanket. Li Yifei was also covering Xu Shan Shan's mouth. She tried to free herself, but due to the main character's strength, she couldn't. Then Li Yifei noticed some blue piece of cloth hanging from the bed. Looking over, Li Yifei noticed that it was Xu Shan Shan's shorts. He covered himself in sweat and bewilderment. Li Yifei was extremely frightened and made a sullen face. He was now wondering how did this happen. His imaginary hair immediately fell out of his face and he started smoking a cigarette from somewhere. He was beginning to realize that it seemed that when he dragged Xu Shan Shan down, he had accidentally taken them off. Looking again at Xu Shan Shan's body, he suddenly realized that she was now naked under the blanket. However, he still didn't understand why she was smiling like that. He shouted to himself in his thoughts that her sister was here, and if she saw them, they wouldn't be able to prove their innocence. Here he noticed that she was trying to say something and prayed in his mind that she would not say anything in this situation. Meanwhile, in Xu Shan Shan's thoughts, there was only a wish that he didn't press down so hard. Li Yifei realized it himself, because the space was really small, and they were now very tightly pressed against each other. However, Xu Ying Ying also thought of the rat under the bed. 
While Li Yifei was trying to hold back, Xu Shanshan is only thinking about that particular rat. Li Yifei realizes that if she doesn't stop this rat in time, she will fall under the control of this nine-tailed fox. Earth is our home, the mother of all things. Whenever we see it, we cannot help but marvel at the power that created it. Forty-six million years ago, life did not exist. Earth was nothing more than a free family, much like purgatory. And who knows on what day? But one day it rained heavily. A later generation proclaimed that it was God's command. The heavy rain wet the earth, made life possible. The sky, wind, and sun came in contact with the earth. Gradually the mountains took their shape, the ice melted. Little streams merged into rivers from the hilltops, as if it were a sonata of life. The rivers turned into waterfalls, very much like the Milky Way, like the silk of the heavens, carrying the roar of Pangu, falling from the sky until it poured onto the earth. The land has both rivers and greenery. Where does this winding river take you? They actually connect to each other. Even the late Beethoven's Fifth Symphony doesn't sound fresh because I'm running water. A form of life and a song of praise for life. It's the river finally reaching the sea, creating life. However, some person is trying to obstruct this stream. Barely staying on his feet, it was Li Yifei who kept shouting for that jet to stop. However, Li Yifei was unable to hold back this flow. With a furious expression on his face, he was still trying to do it. He was saying they couldn't create life. Slamming the door, Xu Yingying finally left. Li Yifei, barely enduring what was happening, finally opened his eyes. Xu Yingying, already outside the door, said that she had found the keys after all. The guy apologized to Xu Shanshan and said that he would slowly get up. However, Xu Yingying grabbed onto the main character's shirt. Li Yifei clearly did not expect this development. However, Xu Shanshan looked at him with wizened eyes, still also not letting go. The guy was saying that this was wrong while Xu Shanshan was still trying to grasp onto him. The next day, Li Yifei came to the office. Nevertheless, he had gotten absolutely no sleep and was walking around with circles under his eyes. Both women in the office saw what looked like clouds gathering over the guy and asked each other what he was so lethargic about today. The second woman said he'd probably been playing all night. Finally ending up in the shuttle bus, Li Yifei realized that work was over and he should go back to those sisters. However, he was suddenly called out by Chu Xiaoyao. Li Yifei turned around to the source of the sound. It turned out that she was sitting right next to him. She began to ask the protagonist if he had just finished working, to which Li Yifei replied in agreement. Li Yifei asked if she was coming from her studies. She said she was, but now she had to go to work because she was participating in the work-study program. Suddenly a wasp flies in from behind the window and lands on the girl's skirt. Li Yifei tells Chu Xiaoyao not to move because there's a wasp on her. The girl screams for him to chase the wasp away. Suddenly, however, the protagonist's hand is grabbed and he is told to stop. A statuesque girl, apparently a policeman, walks up to him and she says she's gotten the report since then. She's been waiting for it. With an abrupt motion, she cuffed the man. After presenting the documents, she told him that if he had anything to say, he should wait until they got to the police station. Li Yifei slammed himself on his face at such an injustice. You can in your police station, someone starts apologizing to the protagonist. The deputy chief at the police department, they say she's just a rookie and doing things recklessly and ask her to forgive her. Li Yifei with a calm face says that it's fine. Even the girl said that she was really sorry and she introduced herself that she was an intern. She also promised to help him if he has any problems in the future. Staring at the girl, Li Yifei blushed in his mind and only thought about how beautiful she was. However, he quickly got rid of those thoughts because she was protecting the people and he should respect her. She didn't stop him from periodically glancing at the woman's form. He said I was already a pleasure to meet him, but it was time to go. She girl caught that shameless look and blushed. Despite her boss, Lin Chong asked him if he had seen his eyes since a normal person couldn't do that. At the same time, the policeman wondered what she was talking about. However, the woman became even more angry at her boss's bewilderment at the same time Chu Xiaoyao asked the protagonist why the girl was so angry. When Li Yifei with a confused face said that he had no idea, Chu Xiaoyao suddenly asked directly, not because he was staring dignity. Li Yifei from such a direct question spilled whatever he was drinking right at that moment. At the same time, the trainees said that if they were careless to let go of the perverts who prey on underage girls, they would undermine the citizens' trust in them. And the protagonists finally realized the thought process of such cops. Immediately after Lin Chong said this, the policeman slapped her on the head again, ordering her to stop talking nonsense. With a manly expression on his face, he said our two heroes could go. A policeman even volunteered to open the door. However, we were not the only ones who entered the office. Li Yifei was surprised by the unexpected guests. Many of them looked oddball. However, they all looked like some kind of special agents. The policeman recognized the people who had come in and asked Lin Qiang to take care of them, to which she replied in agreement. 
Li Yifei squinted his eyes and tried to pore over his memories of where he had seen this man. Meanwhile, the guy walked past the protagonist with a smile on his face. However, he caught himself thinking that the main character had some kind of intense murderous look. At the same time, Lin Qiang only looked at the man with curiosity and thought about how handsome he was. Suddenly, the guy smiled and laughed softly. He said that Li Yifei was his ideal type. Chu Xiaoyao even blushed and said that she really wanted to know what would happen next. At the same time, Li Yifei shuddered in disgust and shouted that he didn't need to continue. She asked if the man could show her his ID. The guy politely said yes. Opening the card, he showed his ID. But it was unusual because they were Interpol. Meanwhile, the Huarong Hotel was as full of life as ever. A mysterious voice called to some man. While he was being provided with certain services, he asked if he had found Burkett. The man asked what he was afraid of that voice he was trading already with them. The guards in the Hua building are just ordinary trash, but also said, Let's do it tomorrow and he's a little busy right now. Hanging up, the man stepped away from the phone call. He wondered why Burkett might be in this town. He asked the wise man who was standing next to him how he saw it. The big boss, as he called him, said their goal was to get the goods. But if he could capture Burkett, then that would be even better. He also said he'd take him for backup. At the same time at the police station, the same group of people were talking about their information. They said that from the recordings that they had gotten from the surveillance system, they had found out that three dangerous transnational terrorists are now in our country. He introduced them as people from a terrorist group called Plastic Warrior. He showed the pictures. Showing a picture of a sage, he said their leader, Sang Jae. He is the strongest and fastest in the group, yet no one knows his age identity or what he looks like. After that, he would show a picture of the assistants. One of them, Wang Da, the original security guard of the drug trafficking organization, Golden Triangle, was fired fled and eventually joined the Plastic Warrior and became responsible for their drug trafficking. He then showed a picture of Captain Victor, originally vice captain of the famous Alpha Group. After he left, joined the Plastic Warrior and became their weapons specialist. The man said the three were the most notorious members of the group and had an important motive for entering this country, who said their current goal is to capture them before they do anything. Contact a group of police officers. They said to expect help. With a serious face, he said that before he started talking about shady things, they made sure to keep up with their investigation. The policeman raised his hand and said he had a question. The man patiently said he was free to speak his mind. With a serious face, the policeman asked since this case was so serious how they would be coordinated. The man said he would have to take command. He introduced himself. He said his name was Beyonce Medici, that he was from Interpol in charge of field work. He also introduced his assistants. The man with two transverse scars he introduced as the one in charge of the infiltration, Kui Cheng Dao. A man with a strange haircut and glasses he called Buddy in charge of special operations. In their thoughts, the police officers realized that they were literally blinded from the strong professional aura and told each other to hold on because they couldn't lose face anymore. Coughing, the policeman wanted to ask another question. He asked about what the mission of the police officers in those neighborhoods would be. With a thumbs up, Medici said it was a good question. He said that he needed Suasia Chenet's help. Attaching a picture of another person, he said he needed to find him. At the same time, the dream bar is always packed with people after work. The atmosphere there is quite good because the people who come there are usually simple office workers so it's not noisy. If you are lucky, you can find someone or one night. But the protagonist was satisfied with this place where he can hide from everyone. He received a call from a certain Yin. Li Yifei wondered if he really had time to call him. The one said he just missed him. The main character started to say that doesn't he look for girls every time he is free and asked what happened. The man laid out that he had received information that a Russian captain named Victor was in that city where Li Yifei is right now. Sipping alcohol, Li Yifei asked what this polar bear was doing in the city. The man started to say that he had heard that he had been imprisoned for the murder of an alpha captain. He didn't know why he was here. However, abruptly his call was interrupted by another incoming caller. Li Yifei said he was busy right now and said they would talk later. Turns out he got a call from Xu Shan Shan. Looking at the incoming call, Li Yifei wondered what had happened last night. Then the protagonist heard shouting near him. He turned around in the direction of the source of the sound. There some guy grabbed a girl I was talking about them playing together. The man didn't notice anyone around him as he even crashed into the main character. Li Yifei had already tried to call out to him, but he was interrupted half-heartedly. Even the man asked why Li Yifei was looking at him like that and if he had never seen a drunken person before. The woman was being dragged by two men and she kept begging to be let go. Repeating her request, she even bit the rogue's hand. However, the man punched the woman in the face in a sharp motion and told her to stop biting. The second man said she would be obedient now. Wiping his fist, the other said she forced him. With a sharp movement, a drop of water of pain poured out. 
Li Yifei, with a sullen expression on his face, grabbed that man's arm. I said that if he tried to hit her again. The men's homes were extremely frightened of the evil protagonist. They quickly decided to retreat, leaving the woman to him. Xu Ying Ying leaned on the protagonist and started talking about her problems. Mistaking the protagonist for another person, she began to say that I was heartless, because he had treated her as his property before the wedding. Li Yifei wondered what was wrong with her. The woman had a marriage license ring on her ring finger. She kept saying that after so many years of marriage, the man had really betrayed her and slept with another woman. Li Yifei thought it was worth contacting her family. Leaning on the protagonist even more, she said that she wouldn't come home again. Li Yifei didn't know what to think anymore. The woman said she was still thirsty but wouldn't budge from the protagonist. At the same time, Li Yifei decided to take her to the hotel. Leaving the one on the bed, she still kept crying about why her husband had betrayed her. Leaving the woman on the bed, Li Yifei thought it was time for him to leave. Still rambling, the woman rolled over from her side to her back. Li Yifei was very embarrassed by this. Embarrassed as that woman's shirt was slipping down. Li Yifei tried to stop the unfortunate tripe. At the same time in his mind he felt as if a volcano was exploding. On the sacred mountain a company of soldiers were getting ready to march. A man, apparently the leader, was telling them to take their weapons and shine their shields. He began to say that the devil was opening the seal on the holy mountain, and once they ended it, the world would be doomed. The leader said that they were the last hope of this world. Raising his hand he said that he would command the army, and they should only follow him. For that way I would be able to protect the world. He reiterated that their goal was a sacred mountain surrounded by monsters. After cutting off the head of the first enemy, he told the soldiers to go forward. At the same time, Li Yifei took a blanket and tried to cover the practically naked woman. However, the woman stopped the protagonist's hand. The guy was extremely embarrassed by this action. At the same time on the battlefield, a powerful spell flew into the army, scattering dozens of bodies. Some woman was laughing at the warrior. Sitting on her throne, she was telling the hero to humble himself, for he could not prevent them. With a serious face, the warrior said that there was no way he would let that happen. He made a casual jerk who said it was time to die, however, the woman deftly dodged the all to obvious attack. She hadn't expected this, barely having time to turn around. The woman made her big smirk, clearly up to no good. With black ribbons, she wrapped around the warrior and shouted to the rest of his army that they would all die. And he realized that the seal was about to be opened. He thought it looked like it was time for his tactics. He shouted a spell of sacred light. Immediately, the woman's eyes were blinded from the incredible light. She noticed something wrong, but it was too late to fix it. The warrior you made out of air punches in the fall saying push to seal. At the same time, the protagonists pressed a towel to cover the woman's breasts. Embarrassed by his actions, Li Yifei realized that he really had better leave as soon as possible. He was about to take it when he noticed something wrong. That very lady's foot was heading toward him. Embarrassed even more, Li Yifei repeated in his mind that he couldn't lay his hands on this woman. However, she was adamant. Realizing that Li Yifei had grabbed her leg, she smiled. With a sharp movement of her remaining foot, she nailed him to the bed. Li Yifei decided to turn around upstairs to see what was going on after all. Grabbing the protagonist with her legs, Xu Ying Ying said that her husband was sleeping with another woman and asked the handsome man to keep him company. At the same time, the Hilton Hotel was being ambushed. Two police officers were in the car waiting for orders. Xu Ying Ying thought back to what had happened just a short while ago. The group watched the security cameras that found the same man. Medici said to show the result on the big screen. He marveled at the speed of the Skynet. Displaying the picture on the main screen, Medici said it was indeed him. On the screen was Leong, who has four records of shooting people before handling edged weapons. He was discovered at the Hilton Hotel. Medici said that if they could catch him, they could practically reveal the location of all the other terrorist syndicates. He ordered the arrest to begin. The trainee was still reeling from what Lei Ang had done. She noticed a man walking toward his car. She told the policeman to look in the direction afterward. Lei Ang was standing there just then. Lin Chong said that their target had appeared. At the same time, Li Yifei stared at the woman's underwear in bewilderment. The woman suggested he play. Li Yifei thought that she had seen something he shouldn't have seen. Turns out the girl was conscious in the bar. She said she was watching him. She also wrote the main character as a gentleman with a sense of justice. As she watched the protagonist, she called him the perfect man. Looking around her surroundings, she realized they were already at the motel. Right after that, she said they should start and sat on the protagonist's face. Li Yifei thought, what was this fragrance? What was this source hidden amongst the flowers and mountains? He realized that he couldn't just give up. The man tried to find a way out of the situation while the woman told him to keep going. At the same time, a ringtone was heard from the main character's jacket. The woman turned around at the outgoing sounds. The second Li Yifei realized that this might be his chance. Breaking free from the woman's grasp, Li Yifei picked up the phone. 
Xu Yingying asked him why he wasn't home at this time and where he was right now. Li Yifei said that he went to see a friend and that she shouldn't wait for him. Xu Yingying started to say that she had never heard about friends from his mouth. While Xu Yingying was trying to assume something, the woman in the hotel took off her underwear. At the same time at the Hilton Hotel, in the car, Lin Qiang was saying that their target was fleeing. She also asked where their reinforcements were to surround the area. The man said that they would be here soon, so they just had to wait a little longer. Unable to resist, Lin Chong opened the car door and told Leong to stand. The cop who was her partner radioed in to say the operation was starting right away. Seeing Lin Chong's sudden movement, Leong ran away. The girl led the chase, but no sooner had she looked into the alley than she lost him. She began to look around as she realized he couldn't have gotten that far. Turns out he'd been on top of her the whole time. Saying she was caught, he came down from above with a knife, trying to make an accurate stab. With a death wish, the man smiled. However, Lin Chong wasn't short-sighted and blocked the attack. Taking advantage of her outstretched hand, she grabbed the man's shoulder. Turning the man over, she told him not to move because it was the police. Realizing things were bad, the man tensed up. However, it turns out that wasn't the only knife the man had. Right out of his other pocket dug another one just like it. With a sharp movement of his hand, he pointed the knife behind his back where Lin Chong was. With a hand to stop the unexpected attack, the girl cried out in pain. Leong made a sharp movement with the same knife and freed himself from the woman's grip. He threw her back enough that she covered herself with both hands. However, such a movement cut the woman's clothing right in the chest area. Lin Chong cried out in pain. Leong smiled evilly and began to swing. He punched the woman right in the stomach and toppled her over even further. Tipped it over with such force that it clipped into the other wall. With a stomp of his foot, Leong approached Lin Chong. Twirling the knife in her hands, the man said that she had indeed tried to single-handedly defeat him. Licking it off, he said she was flirting with death. Realizing that things were not good, Xu Yingying reprimanded. However, that's when her partner sped up. He said he found her and started calling for the others. Trying to become Xu Yingying said that she would not be able to escape today. It turned out that the police had already surrounded this alley. The policemen with guns started running up to Lin Chiang. One of them asked if she was all right. Raising the gun at the perpetrator, the man said to put his hands in the air. Lei Ang realized that the policeman was already here he had nowhere to run. Suddenly, however, he noticed the barbershop statement. He threw the knife in his direction. Turns out his goal was to break the statement so it would block the cop's path. With this trick, a huge sign prevented the cops from catching up with him. The man began to run away rapidly. He climbed up this sign and already climbed higher on the building with the help of the pipes. The police officers ran up to Lin Chiang and asked if she was all right, realizing that they let the criminal go and informed their companions. They realized that the man had fled to the hotel. At the same time, the main character had his own atmosphere. While the woman snuggled against the protagonist's back, the protagonist tried to convince Xu Yingying that multiple voices were the norm since he was in a bar. However, Xu Yingying changed the subject. She said that Xu Shanshan hadn't been home since yesterday. Li Yifei was scared out of his wits. At the same time, the woman put her foot on the protagonist's leg. Li Yifei cried out in surprise. Xu Yingying asked him why he was shouting. The woman said that since it felt so good, he should turn his head and look, while Xu Yingying asked why she was hearing a woman's voice. Li Yifei realized that he couldn't control his eyes. Li Yifei started making excuses that it was the bartender serving them drinks. Xu Yingying decided to end the conversation and talk about the rest tomorrow. At the same time, the woman started to say in a seductive voice that Li Yifei was really naughty because he was having an affair while a girl was calling him. She so inquired more honestly or another part of his body. Li Yifei groaned at this. The woman on the other end of the phone was wondering what was going on. Li Yifei hurriedly ended the conversation, saying that he had something to do right now and was hanging up. It was as if the woman had been waiting for this because she was standing behind him. The protagonist's eyes closed because he realized he couldn't hit a woman. Sitting down on the main character, the woman offered to start since he was done talking. Li Yifei tried to back away. He asked to hear him out. He began to say that he saw that she was drunk so he took her to this hotel to make sure she was safe. He said he didn't want to do that. The woman looked unpleasantly surprised. She trembled with the emotions that overwhelmed her. Finally unable to bear it, she covered her face with her hands and began to sob. The protagonist realized that he had upset the girl. With a serious expression on his face, he made a decision for himself. As he pulled himself up, he realized what he had to do. He said it was okay and asked her not to cry anymore. At the same time, he lifted his hand to her tears and tried to wipe it away. Immediately afterward, he offered his lips to hers and began kissing. The woman was already crying from such a drastic action by the man. She realized that this was her chance, and she took the guy down. After that, Feng Qing did this to the main character. After a few rounds, Li Yifei didn't support and come inside her. After a while, they were completely exhausted. The girl was at the peak of excitement and waved hello. 
At the same time, the police surrounded the Hilton Hotel. He told everyone to search all the rooms. Lin Chung's partner told her to go. Another police officer offered her a change of uniform for which she thanked him. The police came to the hotel management and told them that there were criminals in their hotel and they hoped for cooperation. The police officers split into two groups. The group with Lin Chiang went to the third floor. With a serious expression on her face, she had already said that they would definitely capture him. The main characters sighed whether it was a sigh of relief or sadness. Putting a hand to his head, he realized they had done it after all. At the same time, a woman's foot came down on his shoulder again. The woman asked what he was thinking about. At the same time, a team of police officers arrived at the third floor. Already there, they had split up. Lin Chiang was asked to take care of this sector. At the same time, in the main character's room, a woman asked how he was feeling and if he wanted another round. Blushing, Li Yifei asked if she really wanted to do it again. Turned off his brain, Li Yifei decided to go with the flow. They did it again, and once again they were both exhausted. The girl started for this room. She pulled out a bunch of keys and opened the door. A woman broke into the room and said that it was the police and the room was being searched. Li Yifei turned around at the source of the sound. At the same time, the woman who saw the picture was greatly surprised. There were two men lying in an embrace. Li Yifei thought he heard something outside as the woman asked where he was looking. After flirting with him, she asked if he wanted to do it again. The two men who broke into the room screamed. They threw her out of the room, and she tried to apologize for disturbing them. Thinking how scary this couple was, she realized it was time for the next room. The woman once again shouted her shriek about searching the room. At that time, Li Yifei leaned against the wall and realized that the sound was quite close. While the girl was asking him what he was doing, Li Yifei became and felt that something was wrong. Opening the curtains, the protagonist looked out into the parking lot. As he expected, it was filled with police. Li Yifei hesitated and thought that perhaps he had been exposed. At the same time, he felt a woman's hands on his chest. Grabbing the guy, she asked him if he liked doing it by the window. Looking at the protagonist in the eyes, she said that young people these days love it so much and asked him did he really think he wouldn't understand it because she was old. Finished with checking the other rooms, the woman started on the next one. She had already pulled out the key. Li Yifei turned around at the source of the voice. He realized that someone had entered the next room. Tu told me that she had finished shoeing room 302 and nothing unusual had been detected. But she continued searching for the suspect until Li Yifei guessed that this voice belonged to Lin Qiong and wondered why she was here. Such a woman tried to please him in every way. Li Yifei pondered that the woman was searching every room. The next room was number 303. Li Yifei feverishly gave in to throwing himself off that woman's hands, realizing that he didn't want to let her see himself with Fang Qing. Taking out another key, Lin Qiong tried to go through the door. Li Yifei whined and realized that it was her. Already branded slamming the door, Lin Chung said that it was the police and asked for cooperation. That's when the woman saw the main character. He walked around as if nothing had happened and asked why she had come into his room. The woman recognized the protagonist and said that the suspect had fled to this hotel and asked if he had seen anyone suspicious. Li Yifei said that he had not seen any such person. Sama asked the guy if he would mind if she searched. Li Yifei pulled his hand and said sure. And looking into the room, Lin Qiong said that if she saw anyone suspicious, he should report to the police to which Li Yifei agreed. He realized that the police were not looking for him and calmed down. Still wanting around the room with a flashlight, Lin Qiong asked why he was sweating and if he was sick. Sweating profusely, Li Yifei said that he was fine. He also told her not to worry about it. The girl apologized to the protagonist for bothering him and said there was no problem. She also told the guy that if he noticed anything suspicious, he should report it. And at the same moment, the door to the dressing room opened and a woman, all tied up and wearing only a blanket, fell out. And as soon as the girl tumbled out of the dressing room, Li Yifei were in a stupor. Li Yifei realized that he had been exposed. Suddenly, Lin Qiang walked behind his back and said that he was indeed a lecher. Pulling out the handcuffs, she asked if he had really kidnapped an innocent woman. Waving his head, Li Yifei tried to justify himself, but nothing came to his mind. Turning to look at the woman, he was convinced that she had indeed fallen asleep. But suddenly Lin Qiang took a swing at the protagonist, putting out his hand to block the blow and Li Yifei asked to hear him out. However, the block that the guy put up was not particularly successful because the girl grabbed him by the collar. Before he could blink an eye, Li Yifei suddenly stood up to see the world from top to bottom. Turns out the officer grabbed him by the shoulder in a way that knocked him to the floor. However, Li Yifei nudged his knee and prevented himself from falling down completely. Lin Qiang was extremely surprised at the fact that he didn't fall down. After all, such a thing could only be done with outstanding physical characteristics. However, she quickly regained her senses and tried to immobilize the protagonist. She told him no to move her hands down his throat. Li Yifei realized that they had done it so many times that he had no strength left to resist. 
However, even in such a tense situation, he only thinks about being in the woman's chest. He shook his head trying to get rid of these thoughts and realized he had to run. The girl noticed it too and told him to stop moving. Li Yifei tried to justify that he was innocent. However, through the ventilation grate, something was seen that no one expected. While the woman was yelling at him not to move the very culprit down the vent, he kept coming closer and closer to the grate in the main character's room. The perp thought those stupid cops would never think to look for him here. Call in the light, the vent grate of a man decided to see what exactly was going on in the room. Squinting his eyes and leaning against the bars, he saw an indescribable picture. Immediately after, so he realized that the grate was big enough for him to see everything. Without even squinting, he opened his eyes wide. He thought it was a game of S&M with the policewoman. Suddenly, a certain device was pulled out of Lin Chong's belt with the words that he had forced her to do so. It turned out that this device was a portable wand. With loud screams and with orders to not move, she started whipping the guy's legs. Turning to the officer, the protagonist asked if she was crazy when she started whipping him. Swinging in for another blow, she said what a lecher like him should be severely punished. Right after that, she started whipping the main character even harder and faster. The guy started screaming that he was being beaten by the police when the woman told him to shut up and take his punishment. Leong was watching the whole thing. In his thoughts, he was thinking how depraved a couple must be to engage in self-masso in a hotel. Suddenly, Li Yifei heard some sound from the ventilation shaft. He wasn't the only one who heard the sound. The girl also turned to the source of the sound. Li Yifei thought that that was where the criminal the police were looking for was. Lei Ang tried to restrain himself as he realized that he had almost been exposed. He realized that the sound was because he had accidentally bumped his riser against the shaft. Covering his mouth, he realized the cops were going to get him. Peering into the vent, he realized that he should leave the place anyway. However, he heard another shouting. Li Yifei was telling the officer that he had something to report, but Lin Chong didn't want to hear it. Still told him not to move and asked him what he heard. Leong looked through the bars again and saw the indescribable. The woman was again hitting the boy with the same stick. This time, however, she got on top of the guy and pinned his head to the floor with her foot. After watching this scene, the perpetrator became excited again and only begged in his mind for them to stop whipping. As he listened to the sounds, he thought about how he felt like he was receiving these blows himself. Already biting his hand, he realized he had to endure. Startled by his willpower, he realized he was able to stop him. Exhaling, he looked up at the grate again. The woman grabbed the guy in an even more uncomfortable position, saying he still wasn't being honest with her, continuing to harass the guy. And then the iron ventilation shaft couldn't take the pressure. Li Yifei looked up at the thing sticking out and thought it was a gun. He wondered if it could be the same suspect. Covering in his mouth, the criminal realized he had lost control for a moment, and he rose again. He realized that the mine wouldn't last very long if this continued, and he actually fell. He wondered what he should do. However, it was as if the woman didn't hear all the noises and told the guy to be honest, swinging at him again. The man was already yelling for her to stop whipping him. However, she did not stop. Li Yifei covered his face with both hands to protect it. Still biting his hand, the criminal realized that it was all over. The gun was finally loaded. There was a volley. Immediately afterward, the ventilation shaft had already begun to break irrevocably. Li Yifei pointed at Lin Qiong's mine and the latter only had time to turn around. Immediately afterward, Lei Ang fell out of the ventilation shaft. He was falling right on top of our company, and the woman was very surprised to see him there. Falling right on top of Lin Qiong, the culprit made quite a bit of noise. Barely landing, the perpetrator tried to get up. Immediately afterward, he realized the woman was knocked out and became very frightened. As soon as he bounced off the girl, he let out a curse and realized that he had hit the officer. Looking back again, he looked at Lin Chang. He noticed that she had indeed fainted. With a relieved sigh, he thought that this was indeed an incredible happiness, and he should run away from there as soon as possible. However, he decided to stop. Blushing, the man said she liked S&M. Taking the knife in his hand and lifting the girl's shirt, he was up to no good. With a quick movement of the blade, he made a jerk. He cut through the officer's clothing. She shuddered violently at the movement. Licking his lips, the criminal only laughed. He began licking the victim's neck. He was already trying to reach out his hands to the girl's breasts when he was stopped. Someone put a hand on his shoulder and told him to get his dirty hands off her. Turning around, the man asked who are you so bold as to dare interrupt him. Li Yifei apologized and said he had never heard of such a thing before. However, the hero was greatly feared by the criminal, for he knew his real identity. Immediately afterward, a fist flew across his face. He threw the man to the floor. As he approached the poor man, Li Yifei realized that this was exactly who the police were looking for. He said he'd had enough of that for today. Crunching his knuckles, Li Yifei said that the one very timely in the evening will be his punching bags. Lei Ang was very scared of the protagonist. Out of nowhere, he pulled out a knife and said that he dared not belittle him. 
Taking a swing at the protagonist, he said he was an A-ranking member of the cruise organization, one of the strongest groups in the world. Thinking that the guy was no longer alive, he told him to say goodbye to his life. However, Li Yifei stopped such a primitive attack with two fingers. Hearing an unfamiliar word, Li Yifei asked about what kind of organization. However, he did not want to hear an answer and simply swung his foot at the criminal. The blow came right on the head. Since the one's insides were damaged, blood could be seen coming out of his mouth. He realized that Li Yifei was very strong. As the protagonist took another swing at the criminal, the latter thought the attack was like a thunderstorm. Immediately after that, Li Yifei grabbed him right by his face. With a sharp movement, he nailed him to the wall while the culprit himself thought the attack was like a very strong thunderstorm. After running his head all over the wall, Li Yifei threw him to the floor. As he made the finishing blow, the criminal realized that Li Yifei deserved the title of Burkut. Afterward, the protagonist exhaled and said he felt much better. Taking a rope from somewhere, Li Yifei tied up the criminal. Looking at the officer, he said that he would let her go this time. Li Yifei went to his jacket and repeated the name of the organization. As he left the room, he hoped this organization wouldn't bother him again. The next morning, an important guest arrived at the airport in the city. A man with a suitcase walked past the crowds of people inside the airport. A man was walking with a disgruntled look through the airport. He was looking around as if he was looking for someone. Suddenly someone called the man Captain Gu and immediately summoned him to his side. A policewoman stood at the side. She was holding a poster with a portrait of Captain Gu. Captain Gu said hello to the policewoman. He asked her, did they really find the perpetrator? The woman confirmed that they had. The policewoman pointed her hand in the direction and told Captain Gu to go with her to the hospital. After which the captain and the policewoman arrived at South Hospital to identify the perpetrator. Captain Gu, looking at the criminal lying on the bed, called him by his name, Lei Long. The captain asked, did the police beat the perpetrator so badly that he was in a vegetative state? The patient had a skull fracture and a concussion. The policewoman explained that this was the current situation anyway. The captain asked with interest to the policewoman how the perpetrator was found. The girl frightenedly said that when she tried to catch the perpetrator, she was knocked out. When she came to her senses, the perpetrator was already tied up and lying in front of her. The woman did not know who disarmed the suspect without disarming him. The policewoman explained that the perpetrator belonged to a terrorist group, which is why Captain Gu was called here. The woman added that Lei Lang was a Ranka operative. He belongs to the cruise organization. In terrorist organizations, fighters are sent different ranks, according to their level of brutality and ability. A police officer explained that the classification in terrorists shows that the higher the rank of the militant, the greater the brutality and damage. Many countries have qualified their elite forces into four main categories. These are captain, officer, soldier, and policeman. The woman told Captain Gu that the main force on their side consisted of him and soldiers of various ranks. Police indicated that the captured Lei Lang is the weakest among the A-Rang. At the same time, Wan Da is the third strongest. The law enforcers do not know the terrorist leader and his rank yet. At the same time, the organization has another dangerous character S-Rank nicknamed Victor. Captain Gu became very agitated. He interrogated the woman. Is there really a terrorist S-Rank? Captain Gu said that if there is a terrorist of S-Rank, one should ask for help from higher authority. The policewoman replied to the captain not to worry. A woman came up and said in a confident voice that they would deal with the terrorist S-Rank on their own. They called the captain only because of the detention of the Leang. The captain of the Gu very much disliked such words from the woman. The woman said to the captain of the guards that she would be in charge of this operation. The captain did not like the fact that a foreigner would be in charge of the operation. The captain turned to the policewoman and asked her unhappily, Was that really an order from his superiors? After a brief pause, Captain Gu told the calm woman that he would listen to her orders. At the same time, he demanded that a man be found who could defeat Lei Lang. The woman interrogated the man. Why find someone? Captain Gu said judiciously. The one who can easily defeat the terrorist Arang is very strong. The main character was walking down the street at the time. Captain Gu said that the one who defeated the Lei Lang terrorist has the rank of captain himself. The main character was walking down the street. Suddenly a flock of pigeons flew past him. The guy got distracted. Ife remembered that Shan Shan had suddenly left Ingen Villa and left her hometown without leaving a note. Shan Shan didn't call for the next few days. So Yifei stopped living together with Ying Ying. The guy thought that Ingen might be suspecting something. At the hotel, when he hung up the phone, Ingen could hear a woman's voice. Yifei remembered that girlfriend was looking at him strangely. The main character Yifei was at work in the department head's office at the time. The guy interjected to the director if he needed to take care of the warehouse now. Director Zhao, sitting in the chair, told the protagonist that he would take care of the deport warehouse this week instead of the girl Michelle. 
The girl standing next to him wanted to object to Director Zhao. The principal asked girl Michelle if there was anything wrong with the contract. Michelle replied that she can take care of the warehouse, and there is no need for a new employee to take on her role. The principal said that young people should have more opportunities to learn. The girl said excitedly, this was all against protocol. The director shouted to his subordinate. Afterward, Principal Zhao told the girl that he didn't ask for her opinion. The girl was outraged by this decision of the principal. Yifei interrupted the girl and wanted to talk to the principal himself. Yifei told the director that he, as a new employee, was still unfamiliar with the company's system. It would be difficult for him to suddenly transfer responsibilities. Director Zhao asked with a chuckle at the guy. What was the guy even thinking? Principal Zhao looked thoughtfully out the window. He told the protagonist that he was a newcomer and so he was giving him an opportunity. Zhao turned around abruptly and said for Li Yifei to take this opportunity. The boy told the principal that he knew why he had made that decision. Li Yifei reminded the Grozno director that he had interfered with his sexual advances. The main character threatened the director that he would report the rules violation to the management. Zhao wanted to clarify whether Yifei wanted to clarify the rules in the department in the logistics department. Director Zhao looked sternly at his subordinates and reminded them that he made the rules. The main character along with his girlfriend Michelle were surprised and amazed by this response from the principal. Director Zhao told the disgruntled protagonist that he had friends in high places. He also added that he could fire whoever he wanted. Zhao then decided to justify the harassment out loud. He turned to the girl. The principal angrily asked Michelle if he had sexually harassed her. The frightened girl was silent. Michelle felt very frightened. She was extremely embarrassed. Zhao sternly warned the girl that if she said more than she should, that she should prepare to be fired. Michelle's girlfriend was really scared of getting fired. A satisfied Principal Zhao asked the protagonist, Did he have any more questions? Yifei told the girl calmly that they had to go. He added that he would follow Chief Zhao's order. In farewell, the boy looked at the principal and said that he hoped he had really strong friends. The main character slammed the door. Zhao was scared and worried. Then the director reached for the phone, he dialed a number and reached Boss Han. Director Zhao told Platoon that he wanted him to help him deal with someone. The protagonist arrived at the port. There he was told that the warehouse he needed was 500 meters from the left turn. Ai Fei realized that the desired place was very far away. He was walking down the street among people. He thought to himself that his current trip should be counted as a business trip. In parting, Michelle told the guy that he would be away, and he would be there for a week. Ifei thanked his co-worker. The protagonist lit a cigarette. He remembered that Michelle had warned him that the environment in the warehouse was not good. The girl warned her colleague that Chief Zhao might take revenge. The protagonist thought to himself that he shouldn't be afraid of the usual department head. He looked around and realized that this place was terrible. Yi Feng, looking at the poor neighborhood, said to himself that it was as if he had been banished from civilization. Only now the guy remembered that he'd picked up the smoking habit again. At that time, a girl approached Yi Feng from behind. The guy thought to himself that he wanted to remain a non-smoking, non-drinking gentleman. After that, the protagonist reassured himself that no one would recognize him here. The girl with long pigtails called the main character by name very loudly. Ife was very much surprised by surprise. The guy asked the girl Xiao Xiao with surprise, What is she doing here? The girl replied that she was working nearby. Xiao Xiao said she was very surprised that the main character was smoking. Yi Feng briefly threw the cigarette on the ground. He began to stomp the cigarette butt with all his might and explained to Xiao Xiao that he smoked occasionally. The protagonist explained to his surprised girlfriend that this was quite normal for men. Xiao Xiao made an obscene gesture and said that she had already seen guys smoking and playing with their thing in their pants. Yifei thought to himself with surprise that girls these days are so mature. Xiao Xiao walked with the boy holding his hand. She asked, Why did Yifei come here? The protagonist replied that he had recently been transferred to a local warehouse. The excited girl told Yifei that she would help the guy and take him to the warehouse. The protagonist thanked her. At that time, someone rode up on a motorcycle. Guy asked the girl where she works. He said Xiao Xiao's outfit was suspicious. The girl wanted to explain something to the protagonist. At that time, the guys on the motorcycle stopped. One of the guys shouted menacingly at the protagonist to turn around. The motorcyclist turned around and chased the protagonist and the girl. They demanded that they stop. The guy with the bat angrily asked the protagonist, How dare he insult Chief Zhao? Next, the motorcycle turned around and headed toward Yi Feng and the girl. Xiao Xiao was very scared. She hid behind the main character. The guys were riding the motorcycle at full speed. A guy riding a motorcycle prepared to hit the protagonist with a bat. The protagonist dealt with the attackers very quickly. They lay battered on earth. Yi Feng asked the motorcyclist if the Zhao sent them to him. The battered motorcycle driver said that Zhao wanted to cripple the protagonist. Yi Feng held the assailant by his clothes. 
the motorcyclist said that Master Who had sent them. The protagonist thought about it. He remembered that Master Who's name sounded quite familiar to him. Ethan swung around to hit the motorcyclist who was lying down. He knocked him out completely. Shosho was very scared and excited. She wanted to say something to the main character. The girl decided she had to act faster. She turned to Ifei. The girl asked the protagonist if he was okay. Ifeng replied that he was fine. Xiao Xiao asked the protagonist to lend her 2,000 bucks in a modest voice. Yifeng was surprised at such a request. The guy thought that he didn't know Xiao Xiao well enough to give her that kind of credit. Yifeng replied to the girl that he didn't have that amount of money right now. Xiao Xiao suddenly threw her panties on the protagonist's head. Xiao Xiao was hugging the protagonist from behind. She told the surprised Yifeng that she was giving him her panties as collateral. Xiao Xiao hugged the protagonist and asked insistently for him to help her. The girl told the guy romantically that she gave him her panties as collateral. Xiao Xiao really wanted to get money from Yi Feng. She reminded him that her panties had her scent on them. After gathering his thoughts, the protagonist asked in a calm voice, Why does the girl need so much money? Xiao Xiao began to tell the protagonist that she had her own difficulties. Yi Feng suddenly interrupted the girl. After that, the protagonist handed the girl the money and said in a confident voice that he trusted her. Xiao Xiao happily kissed the hero and ran. She thanked him as she walked. The protagonist thought to himself that he couldn't stand it when girls cry. After that, the protagonist arrived at his destination at the warehouse de poor. The guy was greeted at the warehouse by Dong Cheng Huai, the interim supervisor. Yi Feng asked Cheng Huai how many employees he had in the warehouse. The interim manager replied that there were 11 people in total. Cheng Huai shouted to the workers that the manager had arrived and told them to say hello to him. Yi Feng said grudgingly that he was hot in here. The worker said hello to the protagonist. Yi Feng asked that Chai Huai introduce him to the work processes. The next morning, the protagonist was sitting by himself in his office cubicle. He thought to himself that in principle, he was not so badly off here. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Chai Huai walked into the office and suggested that the protagonist go to a place and have a good time. Chai Huai brought his new acquaintance to the King Tiger Karaoke Club. Yi Feng liked the place very much. The main character said he wanted to go back to the warehouse. Chai Huai shouted after the main character to wait. Yi Feng told his new acquaintance not to call him to such establishments. Chai Huai explained to the protagonist that there was a welcome party going on inside the club. The protagonist did not immediately believe what Chai Huai said. Afterward, Chai Huai once again confirmed that he was inviting his new friend to a good place. He agreed to come in. He performed a few karaoke songs inside the club. Chai Huai was very much surprised by Yi Feng's abilities. The main character got almost the maximum number of points for his karaoke contest. The surprised Chai Hui told the protagonist that he had a lot of hidden talents. At this time, Chai Hui waved his hand to someone to the side and told them to come in. The protagonist was wary. The hero was wary. At that time, the door creaked and girls started to enter the hall. All the girls were thin, slim, and tall. The protagonist turned to his friend Don and asked him in surprise, What is it? A group of girls stood silently on the stage. Chai Huai replied to the protagonist that he could choose a girl and have a drink. The main character began to dress. He told his friend Don that he thanked him for his good intentions. At this time, Yi Feng looked closely at the group of girls. The guy noticed that standing among the girls were his acquaintances, Chu Yui and the girl Chu Xiao Xiao he had seen recently. Xiao Xiao's girlfriend was also very much astonished when she saw the main character. Yi Feng was flustered. He couldn't understand what Xiao Xiao was doing here. At this time, Xu Yui asked with surprise, Why is Xiao Xiao's face so red? The guy Don said cheerfully to the protagonist that Xiao Xiao and Xu Yui is the most expensive combination set. The protagonist got even more excited. He told Don that he was wrong. Don pointed his finger at the two girls, Xiao Xiao and Xu Yu, and told them to keep manager Li company. He told the others to leave. The guy Don shouted out to the main character that the girls next to him is the most popular set of this karaoke club. The main character felt uncomfortable because the girl Xiao Xiao was sitting next to him. CCTV cameras were watching everything going on in the club. The surveillance guy spotted the main character sitting with the girls. The guy was amazed. The main character seemed familiar to him. He remembered that the karaoke guest Chief Zhao wanted to punish. The guy jumped up and ran with all his might. He realized that he had to report the protagonist to Brother Hu. The guy opened the door and shouted to Brother Hu that the man Chief Zhao wanted to mutilate had come to their club. The guy noticed that a stranger in a black hoodie and a mask had come in. He was holding the boss with his hand. The stranger demanded that the Tiger Brother tell them where they had hidden their goods. The girl told excitedly all the subordinate policemen that they had found the terrorists in a karaoke club in Porta Dei. She ordered everyone to get into the car. The guy Don approached the protagonist and his girls. He asked with interest, What are they whispering about? 
Suddenly, Xu Yui grabbed and kissed her girlfriend, Xiao Xiao. After a very long kiss, Xiao Xiao pulled her head back. Oh Ha was surprised to ask something to Yui. After that, Xu Yui grabbed her girlfriend, Xiao Xiao, once more and started kissing her. After saying that, the Xiao Xiao girl took her head to the side and touched Xu Yui's shoulder. The protagonist angrily asked the Xiao Xiao girl, Is she really busy with such a job? Xiao Xiao said excitedly that her friend Yui's father was in debt. For this reason, she borrowed money from the protagonist. Xue Yui hugged the surprised protagonist and told him that he was really a good person. After that, Xue Yui tearfully asked the protagonist to lend 20,000 to save her father. Afterward, Xue Yui told the main character sadly that she would belong to him if he helped save her father. The main character touched the face of the girl Xu Yui and told her that he couldn't watch women cry. After a short pause, Ifeng asked the girl, Is her father really here on the fourth floor? Xu Yui confirmed the protagonist's question. Ifeng stood and told the people around him to wait for him. Don frightenedly asked the protagonist where he was going. Ifeng in a formidable voice, he told the girl Xu Yui that he would help her repay her father's debt. At this time, on the eighth floor in the manager's office, a stranger was interrogating the tiger's boss. The stranger put his foot on the tiger's head and told him to tell him where the goods were, and he would let him live. The tiger replied in a frightened voice that he would tell him. Brother Hugh's underlings came running up. They shouted to their boss that they could fight the strangers. The tiger showed his hand to his subordinates not to move. The lying boss told the frightened subordinates not to shoot or they would die. The subordinates were very much surprised by the boss's words. At this time, someone on a video link said that there was bad news and they were surrounded by police. The karaoke club was full of cops. Captain Gu ordered Team 2 to move towards the entrance. Someone asked the coon guy, where are the cops now? He confirmed that they were surrounding the building. The stranger in black told the Hugh boss to have his men guard the merchandise. At that time, the coon guy heard a very suspicious sound coming from outside. He turned around to the side. At that time, a powerful shot rang out, hitting the coon guy in the head. An image of a woman appeared on the screen. She said with a smile to the bandits that it was time for fun. The woman told the gunmen to clear their throats while they waited for her. The stranger in black asked Victor's boss if he knew who had just come to them. The boss revealed that the girl in the red beret is named Beyoncé Medici. This Beyoncé girl is in the French National Gendarmerie. Beyoncé is the strongest among the officers. They call her the red-headed sly fox. Police officers broke into the premises and opened school fire on the bandits. A red-haired masked gunman said the police were going to break through the sixth floor. The red-headed thug was shot by a Korean special forces professional, Choi Seondo. Choi Sando kept shooting. He was good at sneak attacks and had the nickname Ghost. One bandit radioed his associates on the lower floors and asked for help, at which time a gun barrel was pointed at him. The special police unit also has someone in charge of digital warfare. The digital wrestling expert is French officer Barty, nicknamed Electric Mouse. One of the thugs told the Who boss that their security cameras were down. The police still made it through the sixth floor. The stranger in black said he didn't need to stay very long. He said he had to go get the goods. The stranger added that his subordinate Victor was staying in charge. The boss in black instructed his subordinates that when it was over, they were to meet at the assembly point. Victor turned to the Hu boss and demanded that he find him two of the best girls. Hu boss told Victor excitedly that he was bringing him a girl named Lily Love. Victor hesitated and dreamed. He said softly that the name Lily Love sounded not bad at all. On the fourth floor in the entertainment room was playing music from a gramophone. A gangster named San Lee said that the music sounded unpleasant to him. San Lee Zakurin told the old man Su grudgingly that he was taking a very long time to pay him back. Then San Lee told the old man that he had taken 20,000. The sum with interest came to 140,000. San Lee suggested to the old man that he sell his daughter for a karaoke club to pay back his debt. Old man Su said excitedly to the San Lee bandit that he had only one daughter. San Lee took a drag on his cigarette smoke and said he was offering the old man 150,000. Shi Yui's father replied to the bandit that he would sell his beautiful daughter for no less than 200,000. Sun Li liked the old man's answer. Sun Li said that they had finally found the right solution. At this time, the guard stood near the entrance to the office. The main character burst into the office. He started beating and disarming the bandits. San Hu wanted to tell the old man, what is the difference between them and ordinary bandits? Sun Li told slowly that they have guns and Boss Hu is the chief in Southeast Asia. Yi Feng at this time disarmed another bandit with his foot. Old Man Su wanted to warn San Li of the danger he was in. San Li threateningly demanded that the old man not interrupt him. Old Man Su held out his hand. He wanted to say something. At that time, the protagonist grabbed the head of the bandit San Li with his hand. The protagonist sternly asked the San Li what floor his boss was on. The bandit started shouting, calling for his guards. 
Yi Feng threw San Li off the chair with a strong blow. Afterward, the protagonist asked Su Yui's father if he really wanted to sell his daughter. The old man asked the boy in surprise, What does this have to do with him? Yi Feng put the money on the table. The protagonist told the old man in a confident voice that he would repay his debt for his daughter. A group of bandits opened the door on the seventh floor. The leader shouted that the cops were going to break through the sixth floor. The bandits heard the sound of an elevator coming. The leader told his underlings to wait. The ringleader told his subordinates to get ready. The elevator arrived on the seventh floor. The bandits put their sights on the elevator doors. The doors opened. The bandits noticed that the elevator was empty and there was a flashbang grenade on the floor. There was a huge explosion. When Beyonce's girlfriend jumped from the top of the elevator into the car, without wasting a moment, Beyonce opened fire on the thugs. The bullets from the girl's gun hit all the standing bandits. The ringleader wanted his accomplices to kill the girl as soon as possible. An armed SWAT officer named Barty ran into the room with a rifle. Barty began firing confidently at the bandits in the hallway, killing them on the spot. Barty yelled to Beyonce's girlfriend that it was clear. At that time, Beyonce heard gunshots from behind. The girl noticed the bandit standing in front of her, who was protected by an armored shield. Beyonce yelled that the bandit had a shield. At this time, a bright white glow flashed from the shield. The bandit stuck his shield out in front and started shooting at the girl Beyonce and her partner Barty with a gun. Barty's boyfriend was wounded by enemy fire. His partner Beyonce continued shooting. The bullets couldn't hurt Bandit because they hit the armored shield. Beyonce called her colleague's name in fright. Barty replied that he was fine and asked the girl to cover him. Barty watched fearfully as a Bandit with an armored shield rushed against him at full speed. The whole building of the karaoke club was occupied by different people. The most violent massacre took place on the seventh floor. The main character was on the fourth floor. Beyonce's girlfriend fired mercilessly at the Bandit, reloading her magazine. Her bullets hit the armored shield. The bandit got very close to the girl, and with all his might, knocked her rifle so that it shattered into pieces. Beyoncé's girlfriend was left lying on the floor. The bandit's name was Van Da. He had a rank. Van Da told the girl that he defeated her because he used an exoskeleton. Beyoncé looked to the side and saw that Barty's boyfriend was lying against the wall. The girl said to Van Da, which is no wonder he moves so easily with his shield. After which the girl took out a rope and offered her opponent to fight for nothing. Wang Da was very much astonished. He asked the girl in surprise, Does she really want to defeat him in close combat? After that, Van Da accelerated and shouted to the girl that he was about to teach her a lesson. Beyonce's girlfriend quickly and deftly dodged the thug's punch. He couldn't get her. The Beyonce girl deftly used her metal string to grab the Van Da bandit by his arm. The bandit was startled to realize that the girl had found a loophole. Van Da decided to himself that he should not allow himself to be wounded. After that, the girl threw down her metal thread with which she held the bandit's arm. The girl with a professional and quick dodging motion and was able to hit Van Da. The bandit looked at his hand and noticed a serious cut on it. At the same time, the smoke screen was activated. Van Da, standing in the puffs of smoke, thought fearfully, his vision now blocked. Beyonce's girl is on a high-speed run. She decided to take a flying leap at the bandit. Very quickly, the girl was able to get up and wrap her wire around the bandit from behind. Van Da remembered a henchman warning him about the murderous red leaf wire. The bandit realized that the girl was attacking him from above. He grabbed the wire with his hands. Beyonce's girlfriend looked at the thug with consternation. Van Da shouted groggily to her rival that he had finally caught her. Then the thug turned around and managed to grab the girl with his hand. He knocked her to the ground. Boyance was knocked unconscious by the powerful blow. The bandit swung around to finish her off. The exhausted Boyance girl stared unseeingly in front of her. On the fourth floor, police officer Lin Chiang walked by herself through the corridors. She recalled how Captain Gu had promised to bring his team. Captain Gu told police Lin Chung that the sixth floor needed support. He told her to go in the back with the team. Lin Chung looked carefully in front of her and noticed that the entrance was blocked. A policewoman heard loud cries for help. She was frightened and surprised. Lin Kuhn noticed as something began to cling to her shirt and it began to tear. The cop realized she would have to move forward slowly. She heard a woman's voice ahead. The policewoman ran. She shouted loudly ahead that she was on her way. Suddenly Lin Chung stopped. She felt that she couldn't advance any further. The policewoman felt that if she moved now, her clothes would be torn to shreds. Lin Chiang continued to hear long cries for help very close by. Police Lin Chiang stood in indecision. She unhooked her clothes and decided to move on. An agitated policewoman decided she had to slow down or all her clothes would rip. At this time, Lin Chiang heard a suspicious buzzing sound nearby. Something was flying near her. Looking closely, Lin Chiang noticed that a huge and dangerous wasp was flying beside her. The policewoman thought to herself fearfully, what could a wasp be doing in a place like this? The woman was frightened. She could not understand why the wasp had landed on her chest. The insect looked at the policewoman carefully and slyly. 
Lin Qiang thought that if she didn't move, the wasp wouldn't sting her. At this time, the wasp rose from the body of the Ling and prepared to fly away quietly. The police line still continued to hear cries for help. At this time, the police Ling Chong heard the wasp fly towards her from behind again. The woman realized the scream was coming from the room next door. Police Ling Chong tensed up with all her might. She told herself that she didn't have much left. As the cops struggled to make her way forward, Lin Chong thought sure to herself that she is not so easy to stop. She must save the girl calling for help. The policewoman shouted to herself that she could do it. She sprinted forward, losing some of her clothes. Lin Chiang shouted loudly forward. She was on her way. She ran to the door and opened it. A policewoman ran into the room. She yelled for no one to move. She noticed the main character inside, surrounded by several girls. The policewoman was very surprised to see a Lifei in such a place. While on the eighth floor, the Vanda bandit prepared to finish off Beyonce Medici lying on the ground. Vanda prepared to hit the girl lying in front of him with all his might. In the end, his fist hit the floor. The bandit was unable to finish off Beyonce as he was prevented by the drone's powerful shield. Barty came to his senses. He was sending small drones to the aid of his colleague Beyonce. Vanda Bandit was really pissed off. He couldn't handle the drones in front of him. The bandit menacingly asked the Beyonce did the woman think she had led him into a trap? Beyonce's girlfriend shouted to her co-worker Suya to launch an attack. The SWAT officer with the automatic rifle began to move slowly toward the Vanda Bandit, firing as he went. The policeman kept firing in the direction of the bandit. He was slowly approaching. Vanda turned around unhappily. He realized that he hadn't noticed the man with the gun behind him. Vanda realized that the policeman could damage his exoskeleton with his shots. Vanda Grosno shouted to his opponents and asked, Did they really think he was so easy to deal with? He was able to fend off the drones around him. Then the bandit turned around and managed to reach the Barty boy. He grabbed him with his hand. After that, Thug Vanda threw Barty in the direction of the cop with the gun. Beyonce Medici girl came to her senses and prepared to attack further with her wire. The girl wrapped her wire around the bandit from behind. Vanda shouted to her rival that it was useless. The thug menacingly reminded the Beyonce girl that it didn't work last time. At that time, there was shooting from the side and bullets hit the bandit's arm. Vanda was angry. He did not understand who could have shot at him. During this time, Captain Gu came to the aid of his colleagues. He continued firing. The bandit Wanda turned to Captain Gu and said angrily that they had killed many yellow monkeys. Captain Gu continued shooting and shouted to the bandit that they had killed many like him during the invasion of Korea. The Vanda bandit continued to defend himself from the bullets flying at him with his shield. Beyonce's girlfriend was still sitting on top of him. Captain Gu fired two pistols at the bandit. He hit the rear shield. Vanda thought excitedly to himself that this was not good. The bandit then threw his shield at full speed towards his opponent. Beyonce warned the Jiu captain to be careful. Captain Gu ducked very deftly in time to protect himself from the shield flying at him. At which time the Vanda Bandit sensed that he was starting to have trouble with his exoskeleton. Captain Gu flew up to the Bandit very quickly. He dodged all the blows that Vanda wanted to throw at him. The thug called his rival a bloody yellow monkey and said he was going to die. Suddenly the Bandit noticed that Captain Gu had disappeared somewhere. At that time, the man was behind him. Captain Gu swung his foot to finish off the Bandit. He yelled that he was a descendant of the Chinese army. And then the man swung and kicked the thug's leg with all his might. The Vanda Bandit flew into the wall at full speed. The impact was so powerful that the Van Da took out a wall. The thug was lying unconscious. Beyonce commanded that the medical brigade be called. Captain Gu said cheerfully that they were finally done with the bandit. Captain Gu asked Red Fox why she came up with such a risky plan. Beyonce explained that as soon as she saw Van Da's exoskeleton, she knew it was the only plan that would work. Captain Gu asked that if they had such a hard time with Van Da, how would they now cope with Victor? Red Fox asked his colleague, is he really afraid? Captain Gu said that if he had been afraid, he would have been ridiculed by Old Shu long ago. The captain, together with his colleagues, went on further searches. At this time, Victor was watching the progress of the enforcers through the videotape. He was unhappy because Van Da had failed. In the end, Victor crushed the phone with anger and decided that he would have to deal with everything himself. That's when Boss Hu came running up. He called out to Mr. Victor and wanted to tell him something. Boss Hu told Victor he had transferred the girls. It was Xiao Xiao and together with her Shu Yui. On the fourth floor, a policewoman was asking a frightened leafy guy with great interest how he had gotten here. The policewoman angrily asked the protagonist, did he come here to have fun with prostitutes? The protagonist tried to justify himself. The protagonist realized that he got into this situation completely by accident. Yi Feng beat up the girl Shu's father, and after that they came to an agreement, but the old man locked him in a room. The main character tried to find a way out, but found a secret room with girls. Then they jumped him. The police Lin yelled angrily to the guy that he couldn't answer her question. Yifeng realized that the girl wouldn't believe his story. 
The guy pointed a sudden finger at the policewoman and asked if she needed to change her clothes. The policewoman was shy. She wanted to hit the guy with her baton and asked him where he was looking. The police line didn't have time to hit the head hero. She started to lose consciousness. The guy ran up to the girl and picked her up. He got really excited. Yi Feng excitedly examined the Lin woman. He noticed that there was a wasp sitting on her throat. The protagonist realizes that the Lin could have been sent. Now the life of a policewoman is in danger and he needs to take action. Yi Feng crushed the wasp with a violent movement. He realized that he would now have to suck out the poison. Police Lin in a scared voice first asked the guy what he wanted to suck. After that the girl shoved the guy away from her and yelled that he was a pervert. The protagonist said in a confident and frightened voice that he would not let the woman die in front of him. The woman was surprised at such words. She looked at the protagonist in surprise. The policeman's Lin yelled to Yi Feng that she was all right. The guy said fearfully that the poison in the girl's body must be at the level of her leg. Yi Feng said to avoid embarrassment. He closes his eyes and sucks out the poison, although it will be difficult. The guy touched the girl's stomach with his lips. She screamed that it was her stomach. Lin yelled for the guy to go lower. Yi Feng replied that he knew where it was. The protagonist looked at the big chest of the surprised policeman. He decided that the right place was here. After that, Yi Feng grabbed the girl's shoulder with his lips. He thought to himself what it was like. In a romantic impulse, Yi Feng thought it was like licking ice cream for him. Yi Feng, still licking his shoulder, asked Lin, Is this the right place? The policewoman said it was the shoulder and that the guy needed to go lower. The protagonist, with his eyes closed, lowered himself to the foot of the Lin. He decided that the site of the infection was here. The girl started fighting back and waving the guy off with her baton. She yelled for him to get away from her. After calming down a bit, the policewoman said she got worried when she saw Yi Feng's face nearby. The protagonist said that he had to save the girl's life. Then the protagonist walked up to the girl, Lin grabbed and kissed her with his eyes closed. The protagonist felt a strange feeling and an unusual sensation for him. Yi Feng detachedly felt as if he were in a field with flowers that were full of life. The Lin was very confused. The protagonist couldn't understand why he couldn't suck out the poison. The policewoman grabbed the guy's head with her hand and yelled that he was an idiot. Lin forcefully pulled the guy's head down and said shyly, her foot here. Yi Feng told the shy girl that since the place was here, he would start sucking out the poison. After the suction procedure, the protagonist spit out the contaminated blood from his mouth. He told the girl that her life would not be in danger now. Yi Feng explained to the policewoman that she had been stung by a very poisonous wasp. He added that the Lin was very lucky to have him around. The protagonist looked around in surprise and noticed that the policewoman had escaped. At that time on the eighth floor, Boss Victor was sitting on the sofa surrounded by two girls. Victor asked the girl Xiao Xiao to show him her performance. Afterwards, he told Xu Yu that he had a proposal for her. At this time, Beyonce's girlfriend and her co-workers were sitting near the entrance to the room. At this time, Victor told the girl Xu Yi that her father owed money and was being held on the fourth floor. Beyonce told her co-workers that Victor was inside and to get ready. Captain Gu S asked the woman, What is Victor doing? The girl replied to the captain, the lip that the report reported the great lasciviousness of Victor's boss. Beyonce added to the outraged Captain Gu that Victor would pursue the woman using different methods. At this time, Victor slyly told the Shu Yui girl that he would let her father go if she had a couple drinks with him. Shu Yui was incredulous at Victor's words. At that time, Victor discreetly threw a pill into the glass. Victor handed the girl a glass with a drink. He thought to himself that once she drank, he could do anything he wanted to her. Shu Yui held out her trembling hand for the drink glass. At this time, Beyonce ran into the room and yelled for Victor to stop. The girl grabbed her wire to use against Victor. She yelled to the boss that he was going to die today. Victor jumped to his feet. He asked the Beyonce girl in surprise, had the girl finally arrived? Victor then kicked the table with all his might. He shoved the Shu Yui girl aside as Captain Gu flew overhead to attack Victor. Captain Gu grabbed Victor's arm with his hands during the landing. Captain Gu pounded Victor with all his might. Beyonce's girlfriend threw a wire over the boss's head at the same time. A Feng went up to the fourth floor in the karaoke club and saw a girl running away there. The guy was surprised. He didn't understand what had happened and why everyone around him was panicking. Suddenly, the protagonist was startled. He heard the loud sound of a gunshot. Yi Feng immediately plopped down on the floor. He decided to protect himself from the flying bullets after the shots. The chief couldn't understand why he hadn't heard gunshots before. He thought that this place had good soundproofing. Yi Feng realized that the shots were coming from around the corner. He pulled himself up and scrutinized what was happening around the corner. There was gunfire in the center of the great hall. There were dead bodies everywhere. The bandit put a gun to the girl's head and shouted to the police that if they came near, he would kill her. Yifeng thought there was a terrorist attack. A policeman shouted at the bandits to surrender. The criminals responded by opening fire and shouting that they would kill the police officers. The bandits shot at the policeman. 
They hid behind a table to escape the bullets. The ringleader had the girl in his sights. He shouted to the policemen that if they fired, they would kill the hostages at once. Ethan thought to himself excitedly that the matter was bad. A little earlier, police officers were communicating with Beyoncé's girlfriend Medici to help her storm the eighth floor. Beyoncé told a flustered Captain Gu that Victor has hostages that he will use as human shields, so they can only count on themselves. Beyoncé commanded her subordinate Sue to find a normal position. We needed to distract Victor from the hostages and strike one last blow. The girl prepared to grab Victor with her wire and shouted that his misdeeds had come to an end. Beyoncé put a wire around Victor's neck. It had no effect on the thug. The girl wondered. Victor asked angrily. Did Beyoncé really think her tactics would work on him? Victor put his hand on Captain Gu's head and said in an important voice that he was the Russian superior captain. There was some kind of impact. Victor's body began to transform. He tossed aside Captain Beyoncé Medici's girlfriend. Victor's bandit body became covered in advanced nanobronze. He asked angrily to the police officers, did they really want to defeat him with such tactics? A refreshed Victor told the cops that they would use their own blood. The bandit appeared to be clad in the latest and most impenetrable nano armor. Beyonce Medici girl thought fearfully to herself that the nano armor was supposed to be still in development. Overjoyed, Victor decided to try 20% of the power of his nano armor first. Then Victor accelerated out of his seat and sprinted toward Captain Goo and the Beyonce girl. Victor then grabbed Captain Goo with a swing and knocked him to the floor with all his might. Beyonce, looking at Victor in the nano suit, thought fearfully that he was very fast. As the police sniper approached the scene with his rifle, the sniper decided to hit Victor with his rifle. He took him in his sights. Looking closely through the scope, the policeman noticed that Victor had suddenly disappeared. Victor came up behind Sniper and said he looked like a rat. The policeman turned around and opened maximum fire with his rifle on the bandit. The sniper ran out of bullets. Victor asked the policeman with interest if he was tired of wasting bullets. The sniper couldn't figure out what kind of armor Victor was wearing. He thought his nano suit was the latest. Victor then increased the power of his nano skeleton to 30%. He prepared to hit the policeman. The bandit hit the sniper and shouted that this was the killer difference in ability. The cop was knocked aside by a powerful blow from Victor. Beyonce Medici's girlfriend ran up to her co-worker Tsui with fright. She shouted his name. Tsui lay on the ground unmoving. He couldn't fight any longer. At that time the bandit Victor ran up to Tsui and started beating his body against the floor with all his might. Medici's girlfriend was scared. She couldn't help her co-worker. Victor looked at Beyonce and shouted to her that he'd already gotten rid of the rats. Victor looked angrily at the girl nicknamed Red Fox and said that she was the only one left. Beyonce wasn't about to give up. She angrily called Victor by name. The girl prepared to use her wire. She shouted to the bandit that she would fight even if she was alone. The protagonist looked closely at the bandits who had taken hostages. The shootout with the police continued. Ethan couldn't decide whether he should have rescued the hostages or not. He remembered that he couldn't save everyone. And he needed to assess the situation soberly. The guy listened to the hostages' cries for help. Ethan realized there were security cameras. If he did anything, his identity would be revealed. Yifeng heard a huge anger inside him. An inner voice advised him to leave the police behind. If he left now, he could live a normal life. The protagonist was struggling with several thoughts. He couldn't decide what to do. The girls were screaming for help. The police didn't know how they could save the hostages. The protagonist angrily thought to himself that he would leave this place and continue his peaceful life. Ethan decided to himself that he needed to warn the girls. He picked up his phone to make a call. The guy called Xiao Xiao's girlfriend's phone and told her that the karaoke club had become dangerous. They should leave the place immediately. At that time, the bandit Victor answered the phone. He asked, Is Burkett calling him? Victor added that if he wanted to save his favorite girl, he should come to the eighth floor. Victor held the girl Boyonce Medici's hand. He asked the protagonist, Has he forgotten his old friend? At the end, Victor told the protagonist that if he walked too long, his friends might die. The protagonist remembered the instruction of his military commander. All of them, as soldiers, must defend their country. After that, Yifeng turned off the phone. Now he had to go help the Xiaoxiao girl. It was hard for the protagonist to just leave now. He realized that he had to rescue the hostages and the girl Xiaoxiao. Victor held the girl Beyonce's hand and told her that he now understood why those dared to attack him. The bandit said joyfully that the secret weapon of the police turned out to be a special forces Burkut. The girl was surprised that Burkut was here too. O oh, shouted to the bandit that he would not run away. Victor told Beyoncé that she really had grand plans. Victor asked the Beyoncé police officer why she's been following him for two years. Beyoncé Medici asked Victor if he remembered that terrorist attack in Flower City a couple years ago. Beyoncé told the thug that her girlfriend had died in the attack. When she found out Victor was behind the attack, she vowed to make him answer for what he had done. 
Victor impatiently shouted to Beyonce that she was about to meet her girlfriend. He was getting ready to hit her. At that time, a sudden shot rang out and a bullet hit Victor in the head. It was Captain Gu who fired. Victor was surprised that the captain was still alive. Beyonce's girlfriend yelled at her co-worker to get out of here. Captain Gu replied that escape was not his style. He took aim and began to shoot the bandit further. Victor then threw the Beyonce girl with a big swing in the captain's direction. The bandit yelled to the captain to pick up the gift. Beyonce Medici's girlfriend flew at him at high speed. The girl knocked Captain Gu off his feet at high speed. Bandit Victor was smiling contentedly. Captain Gu told the fallen Beyonce girl that she simply lacked practice. He touched and noticed that she had soft muscles on her chest. Taking a closer look, Captain Gu was surprised to notice that Beyonce Medici girl has breasts. A shocked Captain Gu reminded her colleague that she had said she had a girlfriend. Medici asked Captain Gu calmly, hasn't he seen lesbians? The girl shouted to the captain that they could defeat Victor if they worked together with the Golden Eagle. Captain Gu asked Beyonce with surprise, was the Golden Eagle really part of her plan from the beginning? Victor angrily asked the police officers, do they really want to beat him with the bear cut? At this time in the harbor against the background of the setting sun, the loading of goods on the ship was taking place. The leader ordered his subordinates to load all of Master Xianzhe's goods onto the ship. A subordinate asked Master Xianzhe in a black hoodie, why are there no people at the back entrance of the karaoke club? At this time, a deadly wasp suddenly flew towards Master Xianzhe and prepared to land on his finger. The master looked at the wasp and said judiciously that this warrior was as deadly as the Reaper of Souls. A subordinate informed the Master of Information from Intelligence that the Golden Eagle is already in the city. It is assumed that the Golden Eagle may take part in the operation. The Master replied grudgingly that there was a hierarchy even among warlords. At this time, Victor told a surprised Beyoncé girl that Burkut is ranked 43rd among the warlords. He is ranked 9th. He is also ranked 9th. Captain Gu and the Beyoncé girl looked at their opponent with great consternation. Victor asked angrily to his opponents, did they really want to beat him with the help of some burkut? The girl shouted disappointedly to herself that she had miscalculated. Captain Gu wanted to say something in support of her. Xiao Xiao and her friend Xu Yui looked on apprehensively. Captain Gu ordered Beyonce to stop whimpering. Captain Gu jumped up and said menacingly that the concept of surrender did not exist in the vocabulary of the descendants of warriors. Victor asked the captain, was his father a soldier? He added that his father must have been a deserter if he had raised such a son. Captain Gu said that his father sacrificed his life on the battlefield. He also added that Victor will pay with his life for the insult. The bandit cheered up. He asked the captain angrily what he could do to him. Captain Gu accelerated. He decided to kick the bandit's leg at full speed. The captain struck Victor in the face with maximum force from the acceleration. The policeman then beat Victor with all his might, hitting him on the body. Captain Victor was carried far away from the wall by the powerful blows. Xiao Xiao and Xu Yu watched the fight fearfully. Captain Gu angrily demanded of Victor that he apologize, after which he knocked the bandit's hand with a swing. Victor wasn't too impressed by the blow. Captain Gu was very surprised, after which the bandit Victor kicked the captain with all his strength so that he flew far away. Victor watched as the departing captain crashed far into the wall. The bandit said he had used up about half of his armor's potential. He asked the Jiu captain, what's the name of that move he just used? Captain Gu replied to the bandit that he used a move called the Polar Bear Hammer. The captain thought to himself that he'd used all his strength and Victor hadn't gotten a scratch on him, while gunfire continued on the fourth floor. The leader told his subordinates to use their full firepower. Police officers sitting in cover radioed that the perpetrators had hostages and needed help. A policeman came out of hiding and started shooting. A colleague shouted that the bandits had hostages. The policeman managed to wound one of the criminals. The ringleader, holding the girl back, shouted to a subordinate to cover them with a smoke grenade as soon as possible. After the grenade, the whole place was filled with smoke. The leader told his subordinates that it was time to leave. He ordered the rest of the bandits to grab the hostages. The bandit shouted to the sitting hostages to get up as soon as possible. At this time, the protagonist appeared in front of the criminal. The bandit pointed his gun at Yi Feng and asked the man angrily who he was. After that, the guy hit the intruder with all his might. The ringleader told the girl that he would kill her if she didn't serve him well. At that time, the main character's footsteps sounded. Yi Feng walked and counted something out loud to himself. He walked over and told the surprised bandits that he had collected ten pieces of trash. The protagonist, looking at the bandits, remembered that he had spent his whole life defending the country as Burkut. The bandits were holding hostages at gunpoint. Ethan remembered that he didn't want to see innocent people die in Huas. The protagonist didn't want to watch families fall apart. The leader was holding the girl at gunpoint. He remembered very clearly his army oath to protect the country from external threats. And among those the protagonist defended were those who turned into scum. 
The ringleader commanded his subordinate bandits to open fire. Ethan thought he was just picking up a weapon and using it to bully people. The criminals opened a barrage of fire in the direction of the protagonist. He covered himself with the body of one of the bandits. The protagonist covered himself from gunshots with the body of the perpetrator. He thought that sometimes a shadow of doubt appeared in his heart. The ringleader at this time was furiously firing his weapon towards the protagonist. For a moment, the protagonist wondered if everything he'd done was worth it. Ethan covered himself with the bandit's body and ran at the criminals. The leader shouted to his subordinates not to let the boy get to them. The protagonist threw the body of one of his accomplices at the rest of the bandits. One of the bandits commanded the protagonist to drop his weapon. Yifeng hit the criminal with a precise shot, after which the protagonist began professionally shooting at the bandits, hitting them. The bandits couldn't hit the protagonist with return fire. One of the shots from the Ethan hit the hand of one of the perpetrators. He dropped the gun, after which the protagonist kicked one of the criminals with all his might. Yifeng continued to hit the bandits around him with pistol shots in cold blood. Another hit criminal dropped his machine gun. The protagonist fired his pistols, covering himself from front and back. The criminals couldn't stand up to the protagonist. He was hitting them. The protagonist used two guns to hit the criminals around him. Yi Feng managed to turn around in time to shoot the bandits dead on the sides. Gradually, the bandits around the protagonist became fewer and fewer. Eventually, a white cloud of smoke enveloped the entire battlefield. You couldn't see anything. The police officers stood up fearfully from behind cover. They could not understand what was happening in front of them. The leader was very frightened. He realized he couldn't escape now. Then the main character's footsteps sounded. Yifeng asked the terrified hostage. How could he get to the eighth floor as soon as possible? The police heard some cries for help in the smoke screen. They didn't understand what was going on there. When the smoke cleared, the police saw the ringleader tied up. There were various inscriptions all over his body. The bandit Victor was heading in the direction of Captain Gu. He motioned for him to continue. Captain Gu gathered his strength and jumped to his feet. He shouted angrily to Victor that he agreed after which Captain Gu accelerated to strike his opponent. The captain decided to hit Victor with all his might to knock him off his feet. The bandit prepared to defend himself. Victor began the process of activating and strengthening his nanoskeleton for defense. Captain Gu wanted to hit the criminal, but Victor blocked his blow with his hand in time. The captain continued to strike Victor indiscriminately. He defended himself. Victor couldn't understand what was happening. It was getting harder and harder for him to defend himself. The bandit felt the captain's right-handed blows getting harder and harder for him. Victor felt the policeman's blows already pushing him back. The girls excitedly watched the battle. Beyonce yelled for Captain Gu to cheer him on. Beyonce's girlfriend shouted to the captain that he could defeat the enemy. Victor could no longer defend himself properly. Victor decided to increase the power of his nanoskeleton by 60% to give himself more strength. Captain Gu felt that he no longer had enough strength in his punch to stand up to the bandits. Captain Gu no longer had the strength to fight like before. He couldn't understand what had happened. Victor angrily told the captain that the man's right arm was cybernetic. A couple years ago, Captain Gu was in the hospital. The doctor showed him an x-ray of his chest with shrapnel in it. The captain sat and looked closely at the photograph. The doctor congratulated the policeman as he was able to survive. After a short pause, the medic wanted to tell Captain Gu some very unpleasant news. The captain looked and saw that he had an artificial arm. The doctor told the police officer that he had amputated his arm and replaced it with a prosthetic. He added that a disabled person could not serve on the police force, and so the captain could retire. After calming down a bit, Captain Gu asked the doctor if he could use his prosthetic to pick things up. The doctor assured him that he could cover the prosthesis with artificial skin, and the hand would look like a real one. Captain Gu seriously asked the doctor if he could conceal his condition. The doctor was worried. He turned around and asked the captain excitedly what he was up to. The policeman said menacingly that he wanted to continue his career even with a prosthesis. The doctor told the captain that he would make his life difficult for him if he did so. The medic then placed a chair in the center of the room. The medic seriously asked the patient why he wanted to remain a police officer. Captain Gu replied confidently to the doctor that he wanted to protect the weak. Now the policeman was fighting one-on-one -on -one with Victor. Captain Gu with all his might struck the bandit Victor's fist with his hand. He remembered to himself that he was defending justice. The policeman continued to fight mercilessly. He thought he had inherited his father's personality. The fire of justice burned in his chest. Captain Gu kept trying to finish Victor off. The policeman thought angrily to himself that he couldn't stand the villain snooping around freely. The captain thought to himself excitedly that his justice would continue to burn. He swung around for another blow. The captain prepared to dodge another blow from the bandit. He thought his fury had made him lose his temper at an important moment. Captain Gu, looking at Victor, realized that at that moment death itself was smiling at him. Unexpectedly, at the most important moment, luckily for Captain Gu, 
Beyoncé's girlfriend, Medici, intervened. Beyoncé's girlfriend swung her leg at Victor in flight. The sound of the impact brought Captain Goo back to reality. The rescued Captain Goo thanked the Red Fox. The girl asked if the policeman was alright. Beyoncé yelled to the captain to start using their proper tactics. The girl decided that she had found a chance to attack. Victor shouted to the policeman that they had indeed found their own death. Beyoncé stood determined to block another blow from Victor. Victor, a bandit, kicked Captain Goo with all his might. He flew right off. The captain swept the Beyoncé Medici girl off her feet in flight. He marveled at the force of Victor's blow. Beyoncé and her colleague flew off into the wall from a strong blow. When the girl came to her senses, she said it was painful. The girl had a very bad headache. Captain Goo, lying on the ground, began to regain consciousness. Beyoncé said grudgingly to the captain that they had already agreed on how to attack. The girl looked at her colleague and was surprised. The captain yelled to the girl that she couldn't block Victor's punch. His arm was damaged. At which time a police line decided to go through the ceiling to the eighth floor. Suddenly the ceiling collapsed and the police line fell from a great height to the floor. She looked around and couldn't quite figure out where she was. The policewoman stood up and looked around. She thought happily that she had finally made it to the eighth floor. The policewoman contacted her subordinates. A colleague told her not to rush into battle but to wait for their unit. The policeman shouted to his colleague that the fight would be very dangerous for her. Lin Chiang replied that she was immediately going to attack. The woman then turned off her radio and pulled out a gun. She was preparing to attack. Lin Chiang ran confidently forward with her weapon. She thought to herself that she would soon come to the rescue. At which time the bandit Victor hit Captain Gu in the face with all his might. Victor angrily told his opponent that his movements were already slowing down. Victor told the policeman that he had waited a long time for this. He asked the captain, is this really all there is to it? The angry captain prepared for another attack. He decided to use an eight-degree fist. The captain swung around to strike Victor with all his might with a crushing hammer. Gangster Victor defended himself from the blow. He increased the strength of his nanoskeleton to 70%. Afterward, Victor grabbed the captain's head and asked, Is this really all his power? And then Victor slammed the captain to the floor so hard it cracked. The captain was slammed to the floor by a tremendous blow. He couldn't resist any longer. The bandit grabbed Captain Goo with his hand and threw him aside with all his might. Victor continued to beat up the policeman. He asked angrily to the Jew captain, Does the latter still call himself a soldier? Beyoncé Medici's girlfriend called out to her co-worker with consternation. The captain would be unconscious by now. Victor once again accelerated to throw Captain Goo. He yelled that he could no longer call himself a police officer. After a powerful throw, Captain Goo flew at high speed past Beyoncé and hit the wall. Beyoncé's girlfriend looked at the recumbent captain with a slumped look. She said there was a very big difference between the ranks. Beyoncé dropped to her knees. She said there was no chance of winning. Victor shouted that all men in this country are trash. Victor told the girl angrily and angrily that it was her turn now. At this time, the captain woke up. He demanded that Victor take back all the insults. Captain Goo was barely on his feet. He threatened Victor that he would kill him. Beyoncé was surprised that her colleague was alive. Victor staggered. He turned around and headed in the direction of the captain's Goo. The thug standing next to the captain interjected. What did he say? Beyoncé yelled to Victor to stop. Captain Goo gathered his last strength and wanted to remind Victor to take back his words. After which Victor swung around and hit Captain Goo with all his might. The bandit demanded that the policeman speak louder. Captain Goo shouted at the bandit to take back what he said. Victor then slapped the captain's hand with all his might and shouted that he couldn't hear a thing. A surprised and stunned Beyoncé Medici watched as the captain was beaten. Victor shouted to the policeman that he was babbling but couldn't fight back. Captain Goo was on his knees. At which time Victor swung around to hit him again. The thug hit the policeman with all his might and shouted that Captain Goo's father was also trash. The policeman briefly lost consciousness from the strong blow. He remembered that he had said in the hospital that his father had been a righteous man all his life. Looking at his hand, Captain Goo said he inherited his father's character from him. He can't watch the weak being bullied. Captain Gu clenched his hand in a fist and told the doctor that with this he could continue to protect people. The hand would be justice for him. The medic asked with interest to the policeman, Is justice the reason for his obstinacy? Eventually, the doctor conciliatory told the captain that he would cover up his condition. The medic warned the cop that the process would involve the nervous system directly. At this time, Victor tapped Captain Gu's arm with a swing and asked, Is the prosthesis his secret weapon? From the powerful blow on Captain Gu's arm was pierced by a very intense pain. Victor kept tapping his foot on the policeman's arm. He shouted excitedly that he had already broken it. Captain Goo shouted with pain in his voice that his arm hurt very badly. The bandit told the policeman that he would keep him alive if Captain Goo barked. The policeman wanted to say something, but he couldn't. Victor shouted that he couldn't hear anything. 
Captain Gu shouted menacingly that a policeman should be ready to sacrifice his life at any moment. Victor and Beyoncé were very much surprised. The bandit was still holding the captain. The policeman could say nothing more. Victor told the captain angrily that he had already made his choice. He swung around to finish the cop off. Victor didn't have time to land the decisive blow. Someone behind him yelled for the bandit to stop and raise his hands. A Lin girl ran into the room. She shouted menacingly that she was a police officer. The policewoman told Victor to turn around very slowly. She had him in her sights. The policewoman commanded the thug Victor to let go of Captain Gu and slowly turned around. The girls were very happy to see a police officer show up. Beyonce was surprised that Officer Lin arrived on time. She had the bandit in her sights. She asked the captain if the man was all right. Captain Gu shouted excitedly for Ling Chiang to stay back. Victor still had his hand on the captain's head. He swung around with all his might, knocking the girl's Lin with his hand. Then the bandit swung around and kicked the policewoman so that she flew aside. Lin was lying on the ground and an excited Beyoncé rushed over to her from the side. Lying down, she said she was in a lot of pain. Beyoncé and other girls were next to her. The protagonist was on the eighth floor. He thought to himself menacingly, who could defeat a monster like Victor? Beyoncé yelled for the cop to stop right there. Lin prepared to attack further. Victor was easily able to defend himself with his arm against the blow from the police linchpin. The bandit shouted very angrily to the police lineman that he was sick of playing with her. After which Victor swung around and launched the policewoman sideways with all his might. After a long flight, a cop almost crashed into a pole. Beyoncé rushed to her aid. Beyoncé made it in time. She shielded her body from hitting the pole. The policewoman asked Red Fox if she was okay. Beyoncé said not to be so reckless. Beyoncé then commanded her co-worker to back off. Captain Gu shouted with his last strength to his subordinate Ling to retreat as quickly as possible. The captain kept yelling at the policewoman. She yelled that if the Lin isn't back off, they're all going to die here. Victor angrily told Captain Gu that no one was escaping anywhere from this place. At which time, someone from the side shouted to the bandit, Victor to stop! The police lynch grabbed Victor's arm and demanded that he let Captain Gu go. Captain Gu was very much frightened. He called out to Lin Chung in an agitated voice. The hostages were very frightened. Chu Yui shouted that they would all die soon. Xiao Xiao consoled her. The police lynx menacingly told Victor that she knew who she was. The bandit knocked the policewoman to the ground and asked cheerfully what she was mumbling about. The policewoman remembered her father. She remembered the day she became an honorary police officer. The father told his daughter to absolutely never cry when she was having difficulties. Lin lifted herself up on one arm. She shouted that a police officer should never give up. Barely alive, Captain Gu looked at his subordinate with great fear and surprise. Victor tapped the policewoman's arm with a swing. He asked her with interest, what was next? The bandit stood and counted the number of victims in front of him, four girls lying on the floor. The bandit looked at the girls carefully. He couldn't decide which one to start with. Victor made a choice. He extended his hand towards the Xiao Xiao girl. The bandit wanted to grab the girl Xiao Xiao. She pleaded fearfully to the protagonist. The bandit shoved Xiao Xiao and she fell to the floor. The girl whispered to be rescued. Victor held out his hand to the girl. Suddenly from behind, someone shouted for the bandit to stop. Captain Gu showed up. He shouted to Victor not to touch the girls, as he was his adversary. The bandit was surprised. He turned to the policeman and asked if he really wanted to die first. Victor raised his hand. He prepared to crush Captain Gu once again. Captain Gu was still on his feet. The bandit marveled what amazing willpower the policeman had. Victor swung around to finish off the cop. He yelled that Captain Gu was about to die. At this time, the protagonist appeared next to Captain Gu. Yifeng told the policeman that he sensed his strength from afar. Victor turned to the protagonist and asked the man in a calm voice, Does he see the difference between the two? The bandit told the protagonist that he would not spare him. Yifeng told Captain Gu that he respected his willpower. The protagonist extended his hand toward the captain. Victor was a little surprised by Burkett's actions. Yifeng, holding the policeman's hand, thanked Captain Gu for fighting courageously. The main character leaned the captain against the wall and told him to rest, and he would take care of the rest. Victor said the others had passed out. The bandit asked Burkut why the latter was ignoring him. Ethan angrily asked his rival, did the latter mock his friend? Victor looked angrily at his rival and said that he was very guessing. After that, the bandit hit Yifeng with a U-turn and said he would beat him to a pulp. Victor was surprised when the protagonist addressed him in a calm voice and called him bro. Yifeng withstood another blow and asked Victor if they happened to know each other. Li Yifei wasted no time in punching Victor in the stomach with all his might, knocking him aside. The impact was so powerful that Victor was blown far into the wall at the other end of the room. After the blow, the protagonist caught his breath. He looked at the unconscious policeman lying there. Victor came to his senses very quickly. He decided to attack the protagonist while he was smoking. Victor quickly and confidently jumped to his feet. The protagonist prepared to defend himself. 
the bandit told his rival Golden Eagle that he would not have 70% enough to defeat him. He asked Ife if he remembered him. Ife looked excitedly at the bandit. Victor asked Burkut if it had finally come to that. The protagonist called the bandit by the name of Lee Chung Shin and remembered immediately that he had already shot this Korean captain. After that, Ife called his rival to Sanbad. After that, the boy remembered that Sanbad was black and tall. The protagonist revealed excitedly that he recognizes Victor's height and skin tone. Yifei confidently called his opponent a Nixia captain who uses the finger-killing technique. The bandit cheerfully told the Golden Eagle that he had a bad memory. He added that he would make Yifei remember. Victor activated Cyclops mode in his nano suit. The protagonist was still standing motionless. After modifying the nano suit, the bandit gained a 100% power output. Yifei stood in front of Victor ready to defend himself at any moment. The bandit then decided to change tactics. Victor decided to attack his opponent from afar. To do so, he picked up a huge stone from the floor. The bandit, with all his might, kicked the stone into flight. The protagonist repelled the stones flying at him with his bare hands. Ife couldn't defend himself in time. Victor shouted to the Golden Eagle that he was acting too slowly. A satisfied Victor called Burkut by name. The protagonist looked excitedly at his opponent. Ife continued to attack the bandit's arms to no avail. Victor shouted that Burkut's blows were very weak. The bandit prepared to hit the guy with his arm from the side. He yelled to the Golden Eagle that he had to hit harder. The protagonist felt his strength waning. The bandit at this time laughed menacingly. Victor accelerated for another punch and yelled that he was sick of playing with the main character. The bandit then attacked the Golden Eagle with a merciless blast. Bandit continued to throw punches at his opponent and yelled that he couldn't even respond. Victor swung around for another blow and reminded the protagonist that all soldiers are weak. The bandit looked menacingly at the Golden Eagle and reminded him once again that absolutely all soldiers are weaklings. Suddenly, Victor was afraid. The protagonist looked at his opponent with a powerful gaze. He continued to fend off all the blows. Victor bounced away. He felt he had no more strength. The bandit didn't understand what was going on. Ife asked wondering why Victor had backed off. The bandit knew his opponent was weaker than him. He didn't understand why his instincts were fluttering. At the same time, black smoke appeared around the protagonist. Looking closer, Victor saw the face of a merciless monster in front of him. Ife asked his rival in surprise. What's the matter with him? Victor couldn't understand. Was he afraid of the Golden Eagle? The bandit realized decisively that he couldn't lose. He raised the level of strength to 200%. At that time, Xu Ying Ying was in the Huayang Company building. Suddenly, a cup on her desk cracked by itself. The woman stood up and was surprised to notice that the cup had cracked on its own. After that, the woman developed cracks on her clothes. Ingen got excited and thought it was a bad sign. Afterward, the woman's phone rang on her desk. Ingen asked the caller, Chief Zhao, what can she do to help him? The woman was surprised to hear the main character's name from Zhao on the phone, while the protagonist continued to fight. Victor was preparing for the attack after upgrading his nano suit. The excited Ifi saw that the bandit's body had become more demonic-like. Victor shouted that he was able to increase the power of his armor by 200%. It was hard for the bandit to bear such a drastic improvement. Because of this, he had to pay the price. Victor shouted loudly that once improved, the core would be permanently damaged. The bandit accelerated and prepared to attack. He shouted to the Golden Eagle to be afraid of him. Without wasting a moment, Victor rushed in the direction of the protagonist. Yifei prepared to defend himself against the bandit with professional fighting moves. The protagonist used a skill called Dragon's Hand of 8 Trigrams. Victor was almost on par with the protagonist. Yifei fought back with his palm. The protagonist was able to stop the bandit's onslaught with the strength of his arm. Victor could not understand what had happened to his nanobronze. The bandit shouted angrily that his armor could regenerate. For this reason, a blow from the protagonist would have no effect. The protagonist questioned in a menacing voice. Will there really be no effect? Yifei struck the bandit with a powerful palm strike. He yelled for more strikes. The protagonist shouted that he had already thrown seven punches. Victor could no longer resist. The protagonist sped up and he had already managed to land 49 blows on the bandit. Victor's clothes began to tear. He shouted fearfully as the regeneration of his armor slowed. The protagonist pulled himself together and focused. He needed to finish the bandit. Ife swung his arms around and shouted menacingly that he was delivering the final blow. The main character struck Victor with a double dragon blast with both hands. The police lineman barely heard the thug keep saying that such a thing was impossible. A stunned Victor didn't understand why he couldn't defeat the main character with his armor, and his regeneration no longer worked. Lin thought about the protagonist here. He's very strong if he saves her. I've shouted to Victor that he was beating him using his inner strength. The Lin girl collapsed exhausted. The protagonist told Victor that there was another unique thing about using inner strength. Ife hit the bandit with all his might with a delaying blast. A powerful blow finally killed Victor. 
He flew sideways. He couldn't understand how he could have lost. Already calmly Yifei, holding his hands in front of him, said that he had beaten the man who had come to him once with a list of captains and instructed him not to assign him any ranks. The protagonist turned around and started walking away. He said that his position on the list had not changed since then. From the earliest times men have been the epitome of determination. The man recalled being beaten by a lawyer after he showed up in town. He realized something important. The man realized he couldn't stop. For this reason he put his heart and soul into training. The man's powerful workouts turned him into a pumped-up athlete. Hugh Brother became the best man in Asia and gained confidence in his muscles. Hu's brother was ranked number nine. He was the muscle man. Brother Hu was fully confident that he could now knock the Golden Eagle down with a single blow. Then Hu's brother kicked the door with all his might. He didn't like that Victor had put him here as a guard. After which the man suddenly heard someone calling him from outside and calling him a big guy. The protagonist asked his brother Hu in a completely calm manner. Does this path lead to the exit? The man was very much frightened. He thought to himself that he was now in grave danger. After that, Brother Hu plopped down frightened in a corner and shouted at the protagonist to forgive him. Ife calmly thanked the big man. The man was surprised that the guy didn't recognize him. Hu's brother jumped to his feet. He asked the Golden Eagle, did he not recognize him? The main character seriously told the man that his name was Li Chang and he sold salted fish at the entrance. The man was angry at such words. Yifei asked the big man seriously if his name was Jen. The man realized that the protagonist had forgotten him. Brother Hu shouted menacingly for the protagonist to taste the strength of his new muscles that he had built them up. After the defeat, the big guy sped up and shouted angrily to the guy that he was taking his revenge. Yifei was completely calm. The protagonist dodged the blows that Brother Hu wanted to hit him with just in time. Yifei calmly and smoothly threw the big guy over himself and drove him into the floor. The man said in a calm voice that his name was Zhao Hu. He asked, Did he lose again? After that, Yifei remembered the big man. Half an hour later, the second police team entered the building where the battles were taking place. The protagonist stood in the middle of the crowd. He could hear people talking about the fact that they had heard gunshots. Suddenly, the protagonist heard someone calling his name. He turned around. A woman named Xu Ying Ying came over. She asked the protagonist if he was alright. There were still people walking around. Yifei asked Shu why she had come here. Ingyan explained to the protagonist that someone had snitched on him. At that time, Zhao appeared. He shouted that he wanted to explain something. Zhao shouted that the main character had gone to a karaoke club on the first day, after which a lot of goods were stolen from the warehouse. Yifei asked excitedly, Did someone break into the warehouse? Zhao shouted. They received a report from Dong Chengwei about the missing items. The chief accused the protagonist of stealing, Michelle said excitedly. Yifei would never do such a thing. Xu Yingying asked strictly to the protagonist, is what Chief Zhao said true? Zhao pointed at the protagonist and shouted that he had called the police and Yi Fei would be going to jail soon. A policewoman came over. She asked the chief if his name was Zhao Ting She. Chief Zhao pointed his hand at Yi Fei and said unequivocally that the guy was guilty. The police lin told a subordinate to handcuff Chief Zhao as soon as possible. After that, the policeman handcuffed the chief. Zhao was very surprised because he was arrested. Chief Zhao cried out loudly and shrilly in surprise and fear. Zhao shouted at the policewoman that they had arrested the wrong guy. Lin replied calmly that they had arrested the right person. Lin explained that they had detained Zhao Hu and found a recording on his phone. On the recording, the bandit was telling the director of Zhao Hu that he had sent people to steal goods from the warehouse. Lin ordered her subordinates to take the shocked chief Zhao away as soon as possible. The police took the chief aside. Zhao kept shouting that this is all a big misunderstanding. Lin watched the protagonist. She thought, could this all be part of Li Yifei's plan? Suddenly, the policewoman became agitated. She looked closely at Yifei's silhouette. The policewoman remembered the mysterious figure of the unexpected stranger who had defeated Victor. Lin even trembled with surprise and admiration. She thought she saw a mysterious hero in front of her. After that, the policewoman decided to ward off such a conjecture. She couldn't believe that Yifeng could be the mysterious hero. Mrs. Xu Yingying told the protagonist that thanks to his help, there was one less parasite in the company. Ingen said the protagonist came to the karaoke club to collect evidence. She offered him a position in the administrative department. I've thought about it and decided that the administrative department with the hotties was waiting for him. Suddenly, the protagonist heard a girl run up and call out to him. The girls Su Xiaoxiao and Xu Yuei ran up to Yifei. The excited Xiaoxiao asked the boy if he was all right. Xiao Xiao ran up to the protagonist and hugged him. She said that she was very frightened. Xu Yui thanked the protagonist for his help. Her father asked her to thank Yifei. Chu Yui told the main character that she has no money. Yifei replied to the girlfriends that it's okay now. 
Shui Yui, standing next to the protagonist, told him that she could only repay him with her body. Shui Yui, standing next to the protagonist, said that she could give him her heart. Shui Yui girl's words made Shui Ying Ying very agitated and wary. The protagonist turned around and said excitedly to Ingen that he wanted to explain things to her. Shu Ying Ying said to herself tragically, Where could there be a misunderstanding here? Ifei said to Ingen that he will explain everything tomorrow when he gets to the office. Xu Ying Ying's woman told the protagonist in an iron voice that he belonged in the logistics department. The protagonist shouted excitedly to President Xu that she had misunderstood. At the same time, Xiao Xiao threw her panties over the protagonist's head again. Yifei was very much confused. Xiao Xiao told the guy that her panties were a gift for him. The protagonist turned around and noticed fearfully the police lineman looking at him angrily. For a brief moment, the protagonist felt surrounded by danger in a movie about a female version of the Avengers. Xiao Xiao asked excitedly to the protagonist, isn't that not enough? At this time, the girl picked up her bag. The protagonist covered himself with his hand out of embarrassment. Xiao Xiao opened the bag and told Yi Feng that she had a bunch of panties. The police lin saw everything. She sternly called the protagonist a pervert. Yi Fei yelled that he would explain everything. Xiao Xiao said cheerfully that all the boys in her class were fighting over her panties. The main character was silent. Police Lin said with a waiting tone that she would listen to Yi Fei's explanation. Xu Ying Ying also looked at her subordinate with interest. The protagonist thought about it. He decided to tell and explain everything to the people around him. The main character began to tell us that since the beginning of existence, humans have had carnal desires. Then there was a king in triangular straw underpants. Then the triangular underpants united everyone. If an asked rhetorically, why do underpants have to be triangular? The main character said that all heroes wear triangular underpants in defense of justice in the world. Yi Feng explained that the triangle is the most stable in the universe. One theory says that humans got the triangles from aliens. People who got the triangle built the pyramids and created Egyptian civilization. Yi Feng said excitedly, since the birth of mankind, everyone had been honoring triangles. The main character yelled that there's nothing wrong with guys liking triangle panties. Police line and Xu Yingying girl said angrily that there is no misunderstanding here, and the protagonist is a pervert. Yi Feng started to run away with all his might. He shouted that Lin was also wearing underpants. The policewoman chased after the protagonist and shouted that he was really a pervert. Yi Feng was able to hide from pursuit around a corner. He thought tragically to himself that there was no hope that those around him would get it right. The guy heard some noise from behind. He lit up and told the stranger to come out. The woman called the main character by his nickname Burkut. Beyonce Medici showed up. She introduced herself to the main character as Red Fox. Ethan asked the girl what her name was. Beyonce thought Burkut was really forgetful. The main character asked the girl how her wounds were. Beyonce said she was fine. She thanked Burkut for his help. Beyonce warned Burkut that a European gang was looking for him and advised him to be careful. Beyonce reported that bandits were trying to infiltrate the Huaxia drug market. The protagonist replied that they were flirting with death. The subordinate told Master Xianzi that all the drugs had already been transferred to the ship. After that, the guy told the master to go into the ship. Xianhe praised the subordinate for faithfully performing the duties. The master said you can't sell drugs in Huaxia City because they are forbidden there. A thug came running up. He shouted that the police from the drug squad had already surrounded the warehouse. The master saw some guy on the ship and asked him what he was doing here. The foreman asked the guy, did he really come to kill Burkett? He added that Victor had already finished him off. The guy said judiciously that according to the new data, Victor lost in the end. The master was amazed at such information. The sword boy said judiciously that he had once been his brother. On a clear morning, a young woman arrived at the Huangyang shopping mall. Woman drove an expensive blue race car up to the mall. The woman's name was He Fangqing. She got out of the car and walked towards the building. He Fangqing walked confidently and held the folder in her hands. She decided to herself that she was starting a new life. He Fangqing was executive director. Her subordinates bowed to her. The woman stepped into the elevator and pressed the desired floor. There was only one person in the Fang King company she obeyed. Only the queen of the company named Xu Ying Ying was in charge of Fang King. Fang King greeted Xu and said that she didn't expect to see her in the elevator. Xu replied to her subordinate that she looked good. Fang Qing thought that she would have unfortunate events and an unfortunate one-night stand behind her. At that time, Yifeng waved to her. Fang Qing was still dreaming that she had put the trouble behind her. The protagonist greeted performer He as if nothing had happened. Fang Qing felt bad. She barely responded to the main character's greeting. The elevator rose and drove at full speed to the desired floor with the passengers. The elevator was full of people. There were two executives and various company employees. Yi Fei thought excitedly to himself that the woman from that night turned out to be the new executive director of He. Fang Qing didn't know what to do. The protagonist recalled how he lay in the arms of the Fansen. That night he fought against all odds. 
The protagonist thoughtfully recalled to himself the legs of a female fanking in black stockings. He Fang Ching commanded sternly to herself to keep her cool. Suddenly the woman became agitated. She felt the protagonist coming up behind her. Fang Ching felt the main character touching her. Yi Feng stood behind her. Fang Ching said something excitedly to the guy. Yi Feng immediately replied that he would fix it immediately. The horny protagonist tried to focus. He wanted to force himself to take his mind off the black stockings. Yi Feng remembered that in ancient times, stockings were fishing nets. It was a divine gift. When a sailor threw his net deep into the sea, he counted on a big catch. Ethan thought to himself that with the net the fisherman might have caught something. The main character envisioned the fisherman's huge catch in the form of a fish. Yi Feng couldn't give up the gift of innate ability that is hidden in his genes. Fang Ching woman excitedly felt the protagonist behind her move again. The terrified protagonist berated himself inwardly for his dirty thoughts. The fancying woman turned around and formidably whispered to the head hero to be careful. The people in the elevator looked intently at the indicator, waiting for the right floor. The doors opened and the passengers began to get out. Ethan thought to himself that such a misunderstanding would be difficult to explain. Chief Xu Ying Ying watched the whole situation with great interest. Late at night, the protagonist returned to his apartment in the big house. To get the latest information, the protagonist took the remote control and turned on the TV. News reports said the perpetrators of the karaoke club shooting, named Zhao Hu and Victor, escaped during transportation. The news added that Captain Gu and police Lin Jing acted very quickly during the operation. Yifeng thought unhappily to himself that he had offended the executive director on his first day in his new job. The main character was distracted from his reverie by a knock on the door. A package had been delivered to him. Yifeng walked to the door. He couldn't figure out who could be delivering packages at this late hour. Then the protagonist looked closer and noticed a large box. The box was standing near the entrance. It had a beautiful bow on it and a sign that said it was for Li Yifei. The main character started to untie the bow himself. Suddenly the lid opened and someone jumped out. A Yu Yui girl in a revealing costume jumped out of the box and lunged at Yifei. The protagonist was amazed. He didn't expect to meet a girl at this time and place. Yifeng repeated the girl's name Xu Yui with consternation. The guest excitedly shouted to the guy to catch her. Shui Yui tearfully told the guy to forgive her and threw herself at him. Lying on top of the protagonist on the floor, the girl Shu Yui asked if he was okay. At that time in Capital City, a woman asked her subordinate if they had found Burkett. The subordinate replied that Burkett was retired and living in the City E. The woman headed for the airplane ramp. She gave instructions to depart for City E. After an unexpected encounter in the night, the protagonist woke up the next day in his apartment. Li Yi Feng stretched out on the bed and remembered that it was Saturday. He didn't need to go anywhere. The protagonist opened the door, expecting it to be a happy day for him as always. The guy saw in front of him a completely outlandish dish on the table that looked like a monster. Yi Feng asked the girl, What is that on the table? Shu Yui replied that there is a specially prepared love breakfast on the table. The guy asked the girl, Did she really put monosodium glutamate in the dish? The main character decided to taste the cooked dish with chopsticks. After the tasting, the main character collapsed on the floor unconscious. Xu Yui rushed to him excitedly. The main character, after coming to his senses, told the girl that he almost died. Xu Yui got ready to pour water for the guy and said that she had added the wrong flavoring. Yi Feng remembered that the girl last night had said she would do housework for two months to pay him back. Xu Yui got up very early and cleaned the apartment to a shine. Yi Fei thought the girl was a very hard worker. The main character sipped water and decided that the girl was not cooking very well. Xu Yui turned to Yifei. The girl clutched the teapot to her and told the guy with tears in her eyes not to send her away as she had no other option. The main character got a real kick out of seeing the tears in his girlfriend's eyes. Xu Yui fell to her knees and told her that all the stores she worked in had gone bankrupt. She once again asked the guy not to send her away. Yifei replied to the girl that she could stay. The main character told the girlfriend in a calm voice that everything was fine. Xu Yui thanked the guy with tears in her eyes. Yifei sat down on a chair and decided to drink some water. He grudgingly thought to himself that this could be a curse. The protagonist, after drinking the water, immediately spit it out. Afterwards, the shocked protagonist noticed his TV lying broken on the floor. Xu Yui was wiping it up. Xu Yui tearfully apologized. The protagonist said soothingly that he wanted to change the TV anyway. At that time in the harbor, a police line was chasing a criminal. She shouted for him to stop. The girl ran at full speed in pursuit of the thief who had escaped from her. Lin ran at full speed yelling at the thief to stop running. The perpetrator in the green sweater shouted for the policewoman to surrender, as she had already run two kilometers behind him. The thief thought he had decided to steal a wallet today, but he was suddenly seen by a police officer. She pulled out her baton and shouted at the perpetrator to stop. The perpetrator turned around and looked at the policewoman with a frightened expression. 
The thief lay unconscious on earth. Lin told the criminal to try to escape now. The girl grabbed the handcuffs and wanted to put them on the thief. Suddenly, she heard something interesting outside the window. Lin saw some mysterious encounter in the street. She couldn't figure out what the smugglers were. The subordinate told the ringleader that Burkett must be hiding in the city. The ringleader said menacingly for Blood Wolf and Bloody Woods to find the protagonist. He must avenge his brother. The leader told his subordinates to follow him. Their master had prepared a feast. The thief decided to get out of the room as soon as possible. The police line was very excited to see the criminals on the street. Suddenly the policewoman's hand touched the shards of glass in the window. The ringleader became alert. He warned his accomplices that someone was here. The girl yelled out what she had found and launched her combat knife with all her might. The Lin was frightened. She thought that the criminals had discovered her. At that time, a knife flew in her direction. The policewoman was very frightened by the flying knife. She decided to dodge. Lin hid behind the wall. The knife flew at full speed into the perp's face. Lin thought fearfully to herself that luckily she had not been seen. The girl looked through the window and said that she had hit a beggar who couldn't survive after her hit. Lin carefully looked out the window to notice the license plates on the car. The girl on the street said they needed to meet the owner. The criminal lying on the ground with a knife in his nose thought to himself that he was lucky to have such a big nose. On Monday, the main character was told by a girl named Shu Yui that she was going grocery shopping. He was going to work. On his way out the door, he remembered that he forgot his phone. Ethan wanted to go back to the apartment. When he looked in his pocket, he noticed that he had forgotten his keys. Ifung thought angrily to himself that he had been very unlucky since morning. The main character remembered that the girl Shu Yui took a bunch of keys with her to make a duplicate. After that, the protagonist looked around carefully. There was no one there. The protagonist decided to try to pick the lock on his front door. Ifung standing in front of the door decided that it would take him 20 seconds to open it. There was the sound of the elevator doors opening. I heard someone's footsteps. Ifung heard the sound of a woman's heels. He thought that the girl Shu Yui had already returned. The protagonist didn't notice the police line coming at him from behind. The police line kicked the wall next to the guy with all her might. Lin angrily asked the protagonist, How dare he break into other people's apartments? Yifei looking up at the policewoman from below, addressed her by name and wanted to say something. Yifei asked the policewoman, Did she want to show him her underwear? Lin got really angry. The protagonist accelerated and started running away. The policewoman yelled for the Yifei to stop. The protagonist reflected to himself that Lin Chong had beaten him more than once. But there was a limit to his patience. The policewoman grabbed the guy from behind with her hand. Ifei decided that he should give the Lin a lesson. The policewoman pinned the protagonist against the wall with her foot and shouted for him to stand. Ifei kept repeating to himself that he was innocent. Lin yelled at the guy to shut up. Suddenly the girl stumbled. The police lynx realized fearfully to herself that she couldn't hold still any longer. The police line fell to the floor. The protagonist was under it at the time. The protagonist felt a strange feeling sweep over him on the floor. At which time the policewoman decided to put her arm around the protagonist's neck. Lin yelled at the guy to stop prying. Ife yelled to the cop that he wasn't an intruder and he wanted to go into his apartment. The protagonist closed his eyes. He felt as if he were lying on a cloud. Then the cop pulled out her baton to hit the protagonist with it. Lin yelled at the guy for being a lecher. Ife thought the girl wanted to spank him. After which the cop wrapped her legs around the guy and threw him on his side. Lin held the protagonist's hand. Ife decided angrily to himself that this was going over the top. The policewoman held the guy with her hand and yelled for him to surrender at last. There was the sound of an elevator arriving. Xiu Yui came out of the elevator and said that she had bought a lot of things that Ife liked. The Xiu Yui girl was very much surprised by what she saw on the floor. The policewoman grabbed the protagonist's groin with all her might. Xue Yui even dropped the bag in surprise. The police lineman fearfully apologized to the protagonist and said she grabbed the wrong spot. The protagonist is cut off from reality. He struck by a feeling. Ife thought that he felt such pressure as if he was in the legend of the Monkey King who was imprisoned under the Mountain of the Five Elements. The main character noticed that the girl Shuyui had gone back to the elevator car. Ife shouted to his girlfriend that she had misunderstood everything. The policewoman asked angrily to the guy, Why did the guy hit back at her? Ife replied that Lin started first. The protagonist was on his way to work. He recalled that police officer Lin Chong admitted that this time was her mistake. Police officer Lin Chong explained that she was chasing a group of poachers. She gave the protagonist the license plate numbers and asked if he had seen such a car. Lin told the protagonist that she would return to the headquarters and continue the investigation. Yifei thought to herself, what kind of poaching organization could this be? The guy shouted angrily after the protagonist so that he should watch where he was going. The servant told the guy named Mr. Sun not to be angry. 
because Mr. Xiao was coming. Sun approached the car. He said angrily that Xu Yingying does not see at all what she's losing. The servant told the boy he'd have time at tonight's banquet. At this time, the protagonist received a message from his boss, Ingen. Ingen ordered the main character to pick her up and take her to the banquet. She reminded her about the dress code. In the evening, the protagonist arrived at Ingen's mansion. He called his boss and told her that he was waiting for her downstairs. Shuei came out to the protagonist. Ifei asked what event was the banquet in honor of. Xu Yingying replied dreamily that the banquet would be in honor of the city's first beauty. The protagonist arrived at the hotel at night with his companion. He opened the car door. As she got out of the car, Xu Yingying told the protagonist that he would now be her bodyguard and friend. All the guests marveled at how beautiful the woman was. Xu asked the protagonist how her outfit looked. Yifeng replied to the boss that she looked great. The protagonist asked his boss why he should be her friend tonight. Ingen explained that she would be drinking tonight. The main character would have to stop anyone who wanted to drive her home. Yifei asked her boss, Is there anyone who might wish her harm? Xu warned that there would be a troublesome person at the banquet. Yifei asked the girl why she had come here in the first place. Ingen replied that a very important person was coming to town. She couldn't miss him. Xu Yingying dreamily turned to the guy and said that she would show him the real world. The main character opened the door to the banquet hall in front of his boss and told her to come in. The guests around were marveling at how much of a gorgeous hottie had walked into their lounge. The guests were talking among themselves. They couldn't figure out what kind of beauty was in front of them. Someone said that Master Sun had already set his eyes on Shui Ying Ying. The main character overheard someone saying that Master Sun had recently beaten up his manager. Injun was drinking champagne. She handed the glass to the boy and said that he would soon get used to these people. Zhue asked the boy if he had worked as a bodyguard, and he replied that he had no experience in that kind of work. The protagonist remembered that he had protected a leader. The protagonist noticed in front of him dangerous fighters with high-ranking nicknames, Poison Fist and Sinner. Ifei pointed his finger at the fighters and asked the girl why they were here. Xu Yingying explained that they are mercenaries who are bodyguards. The Sinner told the Poison Fist to work hard, and one day he would be able to surpass him. The Poisonous Fist replied to his colleague that he would never be able to match him. The Poison Fist said that the Sinner would be able to defeat the Ling Chong officer. The Sinner replied that the police Ling Chong must surely be struck by the Poisonous Dragon Fist. Ifei listened with interest as the two gunmen reasoned how they would smite the policewoman. At this time, Poison Fist noticed the main character chatting with the Exu girl. Poison Fist asked, surprised, Doesn't he see President Zhu in front of him? The Sinner turned to the girl and said that Master Sun had invited her to have fun together. The Sinner asked Xu, Does she no longer want to do business in her own city? Ingen replied that she herself did not think she would come here until the last moment. The sinner fighter thought for a moment. He looked intently at the girl Xu Ying Ying. The sinner was examining the Xu girl's outfit and breasts very carefully. Fighter Sinner noted to himself that the girl Xu Ying Ying had a very good figure. The sinner offered the girl that if she would spend a couple of nights with him, he would put in a good word for her. The protagonist approached the sinner and told him to take back his offensive words. The sinner scrutinized his opponent and asked what rank he had. Yifei replied calmly that he has no rank, he left the army, he is now bodyguard Shu. The fighter's poison fist and sinner looked at the protagonist intently. The poison fist thought it was funny that a former military man was standing in front of him. Shu shouted for Yifei to calm down. The sinner came right up to the protagonist and grabbed him by his clothes. He asked him if he knew who he was. The sinner asked angrily, how dare the former military trash provoke him? At which time someone came up behind the sinner and called out to him very sternly. A group of professional bodyguards approached. One of them asked the sinner gruesomely what he had against them. The fighters were frightened. Poison Fist timidly replied that he had nothing against it. From the fright of the fighter, sinner even fell to the floor. Guards were standing next to him. The frightened sinner realized that the Jongnan High bodyguards were now standing in front of him. These bodyguards are considered the elite. They are of the middle rank of a class. One of the bodyguards turned around angrily and looked at the protagonist. After that, the Jongnan High bodyguards walked calmly down the hall towards the stairs. Poison Fist shouted excitedly, which was a very eerie atmosphere. The frightened sinner said that the guard in front of him was Ranka Yifei thought that if the Zhang Nanhai bodyguards had come here, then it meant that a very important person had come here, at which time someone in the audience shouted that the sister had arrived. Everyone looked up. At this time, a beautiful girl started to descend the stairs from above very slowly. The girl had long red hair. Her name was Su Mengxin. She was the first beauty of China. The main character remembered this girl. He'd seen her once in the service. Ifei was very excited. He thought to himself, what could be the purpose of the most beautiful woman? The girl was walking down the hall. All the guests were very much enraptured by her beauty. Ifei realized he was looking at the right girl. Everyone around him rushed over to Miss Su. Shu said she'll be gone for a while. 
the protagonist can get something to eat in the meantime. Ife decided to take a sip of champagne. He decided it was a good time for him to eat something. At this time, Miss Sue was surrounded by a large number of fans. They all wanted to talk to her. Sue Girl was completely silent. She held her glass in her hands and looked at the people around her. The sinner looked at the girl and said she was very beautiful. He added thoughtfully that he would die peacefully if he spent the night with Miss Sue. The sinner said the bodyguard had messed up their plans. He added that he'd beat him to death if he saw him. The poisonous fist indicated that the protagonist was walking towards Junanhai's bodyguards. The sinner shouted that Yifei was now a dead man. The protagonist calmly turned to the standing bodyguards. They looked at him in surprise. Yifei said quietly to one of the guards that he too was in the capital troops. The guard asked, what unit was the main character in? The protagonist said that he was already in the same unit as the guards. He then gave the guard his phone number and said that he suggested they meet for a drink. The guard looked at the protagonist very incredulously. He interjected, did they serve in the same unit? Sinner looked at the protagonist in surprise. He figured the guards were about to beat the Eif. The guard extended his hand to Ife and said that they were now brothers. He added that they would drink together when they had free time. The fighters poisoned fist, and Sinner looked at the guards and the protagonist in surprise. Ife stood and listened as someone from outside called out to the ex Xu girl and said that she was very beautiful. Xu Yingying asked Master Sun affably how things were going. Sun Dongzhan was the son of the owner of the Tianli group. He asked the girl why she had declined his invitation. Ingen told Master Sunu modestly that she was busy until the last moment. The protagonist noticed that Master Sun had taken the champagne glass behind his back. Aloud, Sun told the girl that her apology sounded implausible. The protagonist noticed Sun Guy throwing some kind of pill into the girl's glass. After that, Master Sun decided to offer the Xu Yingying girl a drink. Sun held out a glass to the girl and told her to drink it as an apology. Xu looked at the glass with uncertainty. She reached out her hand for it. At that time, someone called out to her. The main character ran up to the girl with his phone and said someone was looking for her. Xu Yingying turned around and started to leave with the main character. She apologized to Master Suna. Master Sun was very disappointed. He looked unhappily at the departing girl, while security guards outside the hotel kept a close eye on what was going on. Suddenly, the killer girl appeared. She was covertly sitting behind the unsuspecting guard. The assassin threw herself into a rapid sprint. She thought to herself that infiltration was child's play. The assassin recalled what her head had said about Su Mengxin's arrival in the city. He was alarmed by the time of arrival. The headman then warned of the possible danger to them of the union of Su Mengxin and Berkut. The leader emphasized the importance of killing Berkut. He reminded the girl that she was only an assassin. The killer thought to herself that this banquet has a terrible security system. The assassin thought to herself that her leader was just imagining things. Suddenly the killer spotted a police lineman standing there with a flashlight. The killer was very surprised to find someone unexpectedly on the road. The police officer remembered that the license plate she had found could only belong to an elite businessman. The policewoman remembered that the license plate she had discovered could only belong to an elite businessman. The assassin prepared to attack. She didn't realize how she was discovered. The killer prepared to attack the cop. She drew her combat knife. The policewoman asked the stranger who she was. The killer prepared to throw a knife. And then the stranger swung the knife at the policewoman. The cop got really, really scared when she saw the knife coming at her. At the last moment, the policewoman was able to dodge to the side and the knife hit a tree. The killer was very surprised that the policewoman was able to dodge. Police line. Seeing the knife, she immediately remembered that she had seen the stranger before. Lin pointed to the stranger and said that she had crossed the border illegally last night to hunt golden eagles. The killer realized their plan had been discovered and she was trapped. She pulled out more knives. The killer said her name was Sophia. She asked the police line what her name was. Yifei shouted to the girl yinging that Master Sun had added something to her drink. Shui thanked him. The protagonist asked the supervisor, Can't she talk to the VIP? Shu looked at the beautiful Su and said that she was going to work with Sun Nenhui. Injin said, Judging by the expression of the guy's eyes near the beauty Su, the woman will be just a toy for him. Ying Ying told sadly, she knew a female manager who jumped off a building. After that, Shu called the protagonist by name. Injin said it's sad that she sometimes wonders why she couldn't have been born a man. Ife handed the girl a handkerchief and told her that it would protect her from anything today. Xu took the handkerchief and asked incredulously to the guy, Would that guy be able to stop them? After a short pause, the girl said in a confident voice that she was feeling better. The protagonist turned to his companion and said they had to go. Xu took the guy under her arm. The protagonist asked his companion, Does she really want to use him as a shield? Master Sun was still inside the banquet hall. He looked angrily at the returning engine. The girl told Mr. Sun that her boyfriend named Li Yifei was beside her. Mr. Sun said angrily to Ingen that she had taken a stranger under her arm to pose as her boyfriend. Shui thought for a while. 
And then the girl came close to the surprised protagonist. Xu's face was right next to his. Yifeng's face had a trace of Ying's kiss on it. The protagonist realized that the girl had taken the initiative. Mr. Sun was very unpleasantly astonished to see such a scene before him. The engine girl quietly told the surprised protagonist to play along. Xu said excitedly that Yifei lasted a couple rounds last night. The protagonist replied in a tone that he was known as a paragon of male beauty. Ingen said in a worried voice to the main character that they could do it tonight. Yifei agreed loudly and clearly out loud with this suggestion of the girls. Mr. Sun was very disappointed and displeased with the words he heard from the girl. Ingen snuggled up to the main character and told Master Sunu that her boyfriend was standing next to her. Master Sun shouted to the girl that Ta could not be with the guard since they had different statuses. He also threatened that Xu Ying Ying would regret a lot. The guy was walking disgruntled through the hall. Someone asked indignantly to Mr. Sun who dared to offend him. Master Sun ran up to the fighter's sinner and poison fist. She demanded them to break their legs to the protagonist. Sinner asked Yi Feng menacingly, how dare he provoke Master Sun? The main character told his girlfriend to be careful. Shu told Master Sun that love cannot be measured by money and status. Someone among the guests said fearfully that young Master Sun was now quarreling with someone. The beauty of the Su distracted herself from her fans and looked at the conflict in the room. After that, Mr. Sun told the ex-Yu girl that his father could fire her. Master Sun said that his father was talking to a VIP for now. He threatened that his family would be the main one in commercial circles. Ingen listened to her interlocutor fearfully. Sun then told the girl that she still had a chance. He added that she should drink champagne to apologize. Mr. Sun held out a glass to the girl. He asked Ingen, how would she like that? Sun was still holding the glass in his hands. He said excitedly to the girl that he would help her get closer to the guest from the capital. Xu Yingying looked at the glass anxiously. She was hesitant to drink it. At this time, the main character turned around and addressed the engine girl to reassure her. Yifei waved a welcoming hand to the engine girl and said he was here. Xu Yingying looked at the main character with great hope in her gaze. Injin couldn't understand why she was hesitating. She boldly reached out for the glass. Xu questioned the guy. Would it forget everything here if she drank a glass? Mr. Sun hurried the girl. Then Injin banged her shoes with all her might on the guy's foot. Sun screamed. The surrounding people were very surprised. Injin took her glass and poured the contents into Mr. Sun's mouth. Mr. Sun was very frightened. He knew the drink was an aphrodisiac. Ingen asked Sun menacingly, How dare he poison her drink? While on the forest edge, assassin Sophia fought against a police lynch mob. Sophia swung her blades and launched them in her opponent's direction. The police line was very quick and nimble in dodging the flying knives. Lin thought to herself in surprise that she had been able to dodge. Sophia braced herself for further attack. The killer launched several more blades. They wounded the police line. She realized that she could no longer dodge the next attack. The policewoman realized that she could no longer dodge the next attack. She needed to get closer to Sophia. The police line accelerated with all its might to deliver the final blow. Then the policewoman in flight grabbed the killer with her hands and threw her to the ground. Then the cop and the hitman rolled on the ground. Sophia ended up lying on earth. There was a police Lin Chong on top. Mr. Sun approached the fighters. Poison Fist asked if Mr. Sun was all right. Mr. Sun was very angry. He told the soldiers to stand aside. After calming down a little, Sun said formidably to the girl Xu Yingying that he likes unbridled like her. Injin looked at the boy intently. She decided that the drug was beginning to take effect. Sun told the girl menacingly that he could fuck her, and her security guard wouldn't stop him. The guy shouted that in this city all women are his toys. Someone came up from behind and said the name of the beautiful Su Mengxin aloud. Mr. Sun Gambling shouted that if Su was drugged, she would be just like the others. After saying that, Sun San turned around and saw an unexpectedly red-haired beauty behind him. Sun was amazed and frightened. Everyone around him began to greet the beautiful Su Mengxin. One of the guards angrily asked Mr. Suna, How dare he insult the beautiful Su? Mayor Chin asked the beauty what brought her here and if the service was good. Miss Su replied that she was just walking around and heard something interesting. Mr. Sun said very excitedly that he didn't say anything. Ife standing next to him said that Sun forgot what he just said. The protagonist Grozno asked Sunya if he needed to repeat his words in front of everyone. The gray-haired man pointed at the protagonist and sternly asked who he was and how dare he speak like that. The main character pointed at the girl and said he was her bodyguard. Ingen replied to make Ife calm down. Ife told his girlfriend calmly that he could handle it. The man shouted that the bodyguard here had no right to speak. Beauty Sue said conciliatingly that the protagonist could talk. The man wondered in surprise. Could it be that the main character and Miss Sue could know each other? The protagonist told the audience that Master Sun had insulted him and the other two bodyguards. Sun shouted that none of this was true. One guard told Grozny that he immediately heard Sun's words. 
Mr. Sun and the fighters were very frightened. The protagonist raised his glass and said that Mr. Sun had added a drug to the drink. The people around them became very indignant. One girl shouted that they were drinking from the glass. Mr. Sun began to shout fearfully to those around him that he could explain everything. The man led the girl away and shouted that he would deal with Sun later. The protagonist told the audience that Mr. Sun behaved very rudely to the girl Sue. Pretty Sue said she was scared because Mr. Dream was trying to drug her. All the guests were very startled by such words from Miss Sue. They were shocked. Mayor Kin said excitedly to the beautiful woman, What has nothing to do with it? Miss Sue replied to the mayor that it was all right. The gray-haired man timidly reminded Mistress Sue of the topic they had been discussing. Beauty Sue replied to the man that they would have to wait. She was suspicious of the company's reputation because of the words and actions of the man's son. The man was very much affected by such words. He realized that he had suffered because of his son's actions. After that, Beauty Sue looked at the engine girl and extended her hand to her. Beautiful Sue said she wanted to make an investment here. She asked that Ingen show her around the neighborhood. Mayor Chin told Ying Ying that she would take the beautiful Miss Sue around town. Mr. Sun was completely smitten. He fell to his knees and shouted that he was finished. The protagonist walked up to Mr. Sunu and grabbed him angrily by his clothes. Thereupon Ifen struck Mr. Sun with all his might and with a swing. The protagonist told an angry lying Sunu that he had touched his woman, Yifeng. Looking at the lying Suna said strictly that he had entered into a game with death. Su Girl and Xu Ying Ying were very much amazed and admired by the main character. After the banquet was over, the protagonist rode home in the red car. If I remembered that a lot had happened tonight. Ingen was lying in the back seat. The protagonist thought to himself that the guests at the banquet were planning to visit the temple of Tianlun, and he had absolutely no idea why Meng Xin was doing all this. Suddenly some obstacle appeared on the road. There were two fighters standing there. Ifei stopped the car. Sinner said angrily, getting in the way of their young master. The protagonist asking for trouble. The protagonist leisurely got out of the car and addressed the fighters. Ifei asked the fighters, who are they? Sinner asked menacingly, how dare a guy ignore him? Sinner accelerated and prepared to use a devastating straight punch. The protagonist calmly grabbed the hand of the Sinner fighter and squeezed it with a handshake. Afei held the fighter's hand in his and said that those are farmers with fruit who have trouble selling. Afterward, the protagonist twisted the fighter's arm to the side and told the Sinner that it was very nice of the fighter to shake his hand. Fighter Sinner felt frightened that he couldn't pull his arm out. Plucking out his arm, the shocked Sinner noticed that it was completely fractured. Afei asked the Sinner for forgiveness. He said he shook his hand too hard. The poisonous fist launched a fan at the protagonist. The fan flew around the protagonist and he launched it back in the direction of the fighter. The flying fan clipped the head of the fighter nicknamed Poison Fist. Very hard. Ifei asked calmly to the Poison Fist fighter, what happened to his head? On the other side of the woods, a police lineman grabbed Sophia's killer with a professional tackle. Sophia not confused, she reached out her hand and grabbed the policewoman's head. Sophia held the policewoman by the hair and threw her over herself in a strong motion. The police line ended up lying on the earth after a powerful throw. Sophia jumped up. She pulled out a knife and ran with it against the policewoman. Suddenly something very fast flew past Sophia's killer. Lin looked up and noticed a fan sticking out of the wood. It was an impressive weapon, she thought. The killer got excited thinking her backup was heading toward the cop. Sophia decided to run away. She decided that Burkett was indeed very powerful. Sitting on the earth, the surprised Ling realized that she had indeed been saved. Half an hour later, the sun guy was standing beside his yellow car somewhere on the road. Sun was very angry. He was embarrassed in front of the guests at the banquet and decided to take revenge. Sun remembered that the fighters had promised him to deal with the protagonist. He didn't understand why they were delaying. Sun excitedly and excitedly thought to himself that he should wait and the girl engine will belong to him. Suddenly, Sun felt the drug's effects in his body begin to abruptly take effect. The boy noticed a dog walking beside him on the road. Sun thought to himself excitedly that he would explode with patience. Sun looked at the dog and he thought it was adorable and similar to Xu Ying Ying. Mr. Sun felt his heart beating very fast in his body. Sun Guy plopped down on his knees and shouted to the surprised dog so that Injun didn't run away from him. After which a very excited fellow Sun rushed forward at the dog. At this time in the car, Mayor Kin sternly asked the man Sun Ning Hui what his son was doing. The mayor asked how did Sun's boyfriend dare to touch his daughter. The man excused himself by saying that his son was normal and that it was a misunderstanding. The driver shouted that there was someone in the road. The mayor asked fearfully what was the matter. The car stopped. A man named Sun Ning Hui got out, along with the mayor. Sun's boyfriend yelled very excitedly to the dog, calling her engine that she was adorable. The men were shocked. The father sternly asked the boy Sunya, what on earth was he doing? At the same time, the protagonist was driving his car through the city center. At this time, the girl Xu Ying Ying came to her senses. She opened her eyes abruptly. 
Ingen didn't realize where she was. The protagonist noticed that his companion was already awake. Yi Fei told the Shu girl that they were already in the city and would be home very soon. The Shu Ying Ying girl thought happily to herself that she would finally be able to get a good night's sleep. Yi Fei asked Ingen's companion with interest, Was she very tired? Ingen replied that she hadn't slept well many nights already. She was having trouble finding passbooks. Shu complained to the guy that she had a hard time memorizing speech and studying her opponents. Ingen suddenly commanded sharply to the protagonist to stop the car. The car stopped. The girl opened the door and stepped outside into the street. The surprised Ifei asked with great interest to Injin, where is she going? The girl approached the large street fountain with a slow step. Jets of water were spurting from the ground. The main character looked at the girl with surprise and admiration. Ingen took off her clothes. The girl was walking barefoot on the street fountain. She was looking at the protagonist carefully. Ifei watched mesmerized and dreamily as his companion was enveloped in a spray of water. After a brief pause, the protagonist decided to distract himself. He lit up a cigarette. Shui was still walking on the fountain. Ing said with pleasure that she felt much better now. She thanked the protagonist for spending the evening with her. The protagonist stood and smoked quietly. He told his companion that everything was fine. Ifei finishing his cigarette told the girl that she had a lot of stress built up lately. The main character said in a judicious voice to the girl that she should learn to relax. Suddenly, the protagonist noticed someone very suspicious in the crowd. Ifei concentrated and put away his cigarette. The main character saw a guy he didn't know standing in front of him. He really stood out from the crowd. The protagonist stared intently at the stranger. He couldn't look away. Ifei saw that suddenly the stranger disappeared as quickly as he had appeared. The main character was excited. He thought it was impossible for him to see this stranger. Ifei didn't turn around and told the girl engine that it was already time for them to head back. Shu was putting on her shoes. She told the protagonist that they should discuss the travel route. Yifei asked if it would be just the two of them. Su Ying Ying told the shocked protagonist that she had invited director He Fang Qin. Yifei was very much taken aback. Half an hour later, Fang Qing woman arrived at the luxurious house belonging to Shu Ying Ying. The woman announced her arrival to her boss. Ingen replied, for the guest to come in and said that Yifei had already arrived. Fang Qing was surprised that the main character was also in the house. The woman wondered what an Yifei could be doing here. She was at a loss to guess. After thinking for a bit, Fancine decided to herself that the protagonist might start threatening her. The woman realized it could be dangerous for her if the guy revealed everything that happened that night, in which case Fancine will be fired and word of that night will spread. After that, Fancine will exist surrounded by gossip and she won't be able to get over it. The woman decided to herself that she had to be the first to act. She knocked on the door. Fang Qing entered the room, bowed and said hello to the supervisor. Xu Ying Ying sitting on the chair told her subordinate to sit down. Shu told his subordinate that they should show the city to Miss Su in a couple of days and talk business during the trip. Fang Qing told her boss that they needed to discuss the route. Chu was pouring whiskey into a glass at the time and her phone rang. Ingen told the audience that she had to take a call. Fang Qing and Yifei can socialize for now. Fansen tasted the whiskey from the glass and she choked on her drink. The protagonist walked up to the woman and asked if she was okay. He held out a napkin. Fang Qing looked at the guy incredulously. The protagonist told a perfectly calm woman to get a napkin. The woman very slowly and carefully took the napkin from the protagonist's hands. After that, Fonsin grabbed Ifei's boyfriend's arm and threw him to the floor. The woman sitting on top of the Eif asked the guy sternly what he wanted for keeping the information about that night a secret. The protagonist stared at the woman with a startled look. Suddenly, Fang Qing realized the situation she was in. The woman looked around and couldn't figure out how she ended up on top of the guy. The flustered Ifei offered to talk sitting down. The frightened woman asked the protagonist what he wanted. Yifei replied that Fang Qing had jumped on him himself. At this time, the girl Xu Ying Ying told the interlocutor that she would now hand the phone to the protagonist. Fang Qing was still sitting on the guy. Injin looked around carefully and noticed that the main character was nowhere to be found. Xu asked her subordinate, Where is Yifei? The woman replied that the guy had gone to buy a drink. Injin continued talking on the phone. Fansen trembled with excitement and fear sitting on the guy. The protagonist crawled halfway under the table. He was holding a female fanking sitting on it. Ifei pressed his hand to the floor with all his might. He thought to himself that he was clever. Injin came back. She told her subordinate that they needed to plan a tour of the city. Shu sat down at the table. Ifei looking at his boss's legs, he decided that he wouldn't last that long. The protagonist could hardly contain himself. He was doing his best not to give himself away. Ingen was sitting at the map at the time. She was telling her subordinate how she planned to show the beautiful Su Old Town first. Fang Qing woman felt very uncomfortable sitting on the main character. The woman could barely hear what her boss was saying to her. 
Suddenly, Fong King felt that the protagonist was becoming aroused. With excitement, the woman even grabbed the table with her hand to keep from falling over. The flustered Fang King couldn't understand why the guy got excited at such a moment. Yi Fei was getting more and more difficult. The protagonist felt aroused as his boss's legs were next to him. The excited Ai Fei struggled to keep his hand resting on the floor. Looking at Ingen from below, Ai Fei for some reason immediately thought of a bottomless hole. There was a pickpocket hiding in a restroom in Star Park this evening. The perpetrator looked into his reflection and asked why he wasn't doing anything. The thief told himself that his nose had been mutilated by two women. He assured himself that he was not afraid of anything. The reflection asked the thief, If the thief is not afraid, why is he running away? The criminal stopped and asked surprised at himself, Is he really running away? After which the thief unzipped his green jacket and shouted that he was not running away, but preparing revenge. Looking manic, the thief said that he couldn't go back to normal until he avenged his nose. The perpetrator then ran out of the restroom and began walking briskly through the park. The thief saw a female figure in front of him. He thought to himself that the women would be sorry for breaking his nose. The thief ran down the street without seeing anything around him. He came upon a policewoman, Lin Chong, who was talking on the phone. The protagonist recalled to himself philosopher Nietzsche's statement about the vast abyss. If I thought that when the dark abyss appears, the world starts to collapse. The protagonist, barely containing himself, realized that he was now looking into that abyss. Ife couldn't move or turn away. He was having trouble controlling himself. Ife stared without taking his eyes off his superior's feet. Shu, ask his interlocutor, where should they go next? The protagonist realized that when Ingen ponders, he changes the position of his legs when doing so. It occurred to Ife that if the boss stopped thinking, the abyss would close and no longer have an effect on his body. Fang King strictly asked the guy how can he get excited at a time like this. Yi Fei replied that this is not the time for it. The protagonist explained to the woman that the boss moves her legs when she thinks. Fang King should help Shu in her decision making. The flustered woman realized that she had misunderstood the protagonist. Ingen sitting beside the map asked her subordinate Fang King where they should go. A woman suggested a water park to her supervisor. Ingen praised her subordinate for a good idea. The protagonist, lying under the table, noticed happily that the abyss was closing. Fansen was suggesting new places for her boss to visit. Ingen said she'd write it all down. Fang Qing woman immediately felt that the main character's arousal was dropping. Ingen asked her subordinate what is the best way to end the walk with a temple or a water park. Ife being under the table thought excitedly to himself that the abyss is opening again. Fansen woman unequivocally and emotionally shouted that it was better to visit the temple at the end of the walk. The supervisor liked the temple suggestion. Suddenly Ingen dropped her pen on the floor. The fallen pen rolled under the tablecloth under the table. Ife could hardly contain his silence. The leading edge got really scared. He realized he could be exposed now. The main character abruptly grabbed the nearby Fang Qing woman by the arm. Ife gave the woman a pleading look to do something or he would be discovered. Xu Yingying crouched down, picked up the tablecloth, and began to look for a pen. Ife was getting more and more worried. The protagonist looked at his boss's hand. He knew she was about to see him. Fang Qing woman was also very frightened. She didn't know what to do. Ingen fumbled under the table for her pen. She wasn't happy. The main character was very scared. He imagined what would happen if the boss saw him. Fei imagined holding out his hand to his boss. Ingen would yell that everything was disgusting. The woman looked under the table with a piercing gaze, searching for her pen. Ife watched the top with an unblinking stare. Suddenly, the supervisor heard some shouting from the side, and she was immediately distracted. Fang Qing ran after her wedding ring, which rolled across the room. Xu was still near the table. Ingen told her subordinate that her ring had rolled under the cupboard. She asked why Fang Qing was so careless. The woman apologized. At this time, a loud thud was heard at the door. Ingen asked what could it have been. Fang Qing replied that there might have been a mouse. The protagonist stood listening to the two girls chatting. Fang Qing asked the boss to ignore the mouse and look for her ring. Ife thought wistfully to himself that the woman had used her ring to distract the Ingen boss. At that time in Star Park, a police line was chasing an offender. The policewoman was able to catch up with the intruder and grabbed him from behind by the pants. She eventually ripped the pants off the thief. The police lineman swung her baton with all her might to throw it at the perpetrator. Launched a baton at full speed into the ass of a fleeing felon. The thief ran around the corner at the same time. The perpetrator ran in the direction of the women's locker room. Lin asked menacingly where he was going. The thief grabbed the doorknob and told the policewoman that she would regret breaking his nose. The perpetrator shouted at the Ling that he was breaking into the ladies' room in the girls' school to take revenge on the policewoman. Suddenly the door to the locker room opened and the thief was hit hard in the face. The woman came out and asked grudgingly, looking at the thief, Where did this scum come from? The other girls said their base had been discovered. A subordinate asked her superior, Do they need to change the shelter? 
A leader named Captain Hunter said that tomorrow they would capture Burkut at the Hualan Temple. The criminal brother Hu managed to successfully escape from prison. The police never caught him. The protagonist, accompanied by the girls in a car, arrived at the Hualong Temple. Beautiful Su got out of the car. She asked in surprise, Is this really the Hualong Temple? Miss Su said in a cheery voice that it was a very nice place. Su asked with interest to Shu. How did she find such a place? Ying Ying thought to herself that she had organized everything well. Ifei remembered his dangerous adventures yesterday with Fang Ching. Ifei thought sadly to himself, under what conditions the trip route had been worked out yesterday. The protagonist, accompanied by the girls, was climbing the steps towards the temple. Beauty Su told her companion that she could not believe there could be such a lovely place in the city. Ifei decided that he shouldn't look at girls, but rather look around. Su asked Ingen who had been with her yesterday. Asus asked in a sly voice to Injun if the main character was her boyfriend. The protagonist detected a strange and mysterious aura around him. Shu pointed at the main character and said he was her bodyguard. Su replied that she was clear. Su was thinking about something of her own. She smiled. Ife confirmed, pleased that he was some sort of guard. Ife thought to himself that the trip would not be easy. He continued to climb the stairs with his companions. At that time, someone from the forest thicket was following the protagonist with a rifle with the girls. A sniper named Cutie has requested permission to fire. She reported that a Burkut target has emerged. The commander informed the Cutie that you can't shoot because Burkut won't just show up. The Cutie said there was a man coming to see her commander. She asked if it was Burkut. The commander said the target was found, but it's not a Burkut. The woman with the sword said she saw a patrol officer and plans changed, at which time a completely lone police lineman was walking through the forest thicket. The woman with the sword said confidently, the assassination squad acting first. At this time, the protagonist was near the temple. They approached an auction to throw objects at a target. The perpetrator changed into a yellow suit. He shouted to those around him on the megaphone that the ride costs one yuan per throw. Ife launched a stone at the target so that it collapsed. His companions received a toy as a reward. The girl was walking through the fair. Everyone looked at her with wonder and admiration. After that, the girls approached the bead merchant near the temple. Ife followed them. Both girls entered the temple and held a prayer near a huge statue of Buddha. A girl Su came out of the temple. She carried a large and white hat in her hands. Suddenly the beautiful Su stumbled on the sidewalk and twisted her ankle. Shu told the protagonist to guard Miss Su. She went to get bandages. The main character was sitting on a bench. He looked at the Su girl's leg and noticed that her ankle looked normal. Beauty Su looked amazingly at the protagonist and said that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. At this time, a policeling wandered lonely in the forest near the Hualong Temple. The policewoman was walking and thinking about something. She didn't pay attention to the sounds around her. Lin remembered what she had heard yesterday about the Hualong Temple. She came to check it out, at which time a woman with a sword suddenly attacked the policewoman from the side. The woman wanted to hit the policewoman with one punch, but Lin ducked. Lin ducked down and looked closely at the woman who was attacking her, at which time another woman with blades rushed at the policewoman from above. At once even the Lin didn't see or hear the danger behind her. Lin was mesmerized, still staring at her rival's face with burning red eyes. The woman with the blades struck the policewoman with all her might, but missed. The police lynx deftly dodged the attack and landed on her feet. The masked woman's attacker told the policewoman that she was able to dodge her blades. The woman then commanded her subordinates to proceed with caution and take their time. At this time, the escaped criminal brother Hu was hiding from the rain in a chimney and thinking about his future. The police line was attacked by a ninja in black clothes and a mask with a sword. The ninja swung around to strike the policewoman. Lin managed to duck in time. The policewoman glanced to the side and noticed more warriors running at her. A shuriken-wielding warrior was approaching towards the police line. Deadly steel stars flew in a flock towards the Lin. The policewoman at the last moment noticed the shurikens flying at her. Lin ducked professionally and dodged all the incoming stars. Lin thought to herself that she may have gotten stronger as she dodged the sprockets. Then a woman with swords in her hands appeared in front of the police line. The woman sternly told the policewoman Lin to get Burkut right away. The police Lin asked with great interest to the warriors, Who are they all? The woman said that Burkut had sent a small drying party to test their capabilities. She decided to tell the policewoman who they were. The woman reported that there was a team of deadly mercenaries in the dark part of the world. These mercenaries are very professional and use a variety of weapons. Many elite soldiers were defeated by the mercenaries. Because of this, the mercenaries started calling themselves soldier hunters. The mercenaries eliminated the former captain of the Alpha Squad, who was called Ivanov. The woman said menacingly that they were a mercenary unit called the Blood Fox. She promised that Burkut would die soon. Lin listened in amazement to the story from the woman. Lin couldn't remember if there was a breed of bird called Golden Eagles in their country. At this time, Miss Su told the protagonist cryptically that they hadn't seen each other in a while. 
The protagonist was agitated. He tried not to give away his emotions. Sue addressed him as Golden Eagle and then by name. After calming down, Ife thanked the beauty for not revealing his identity. Sue said she understood. She asked the guy, why is he working as a small-time employee? Ife said that he had served in the Soaring Thief Squad for five years, but he was very tired of everything. The main character wanted a cigarette. He asked the beautiful woman why she had come to this town. Miss Sue snatched the cigarette from the boy's hand with a sharp movement. Beauty told the protagonist that she was just as tired as he was. The protagonist looked silently and questioningly at his interlocutor. Sue reported that her identity has been revealed, for which reason she is only dealing with personal matters. The main character remembered that the family of the beautiful Su Mengxin is one of the strongest in all of China, Beauty Sue said in an excited voice. The protagonist now didn't look like the cold-blooded Burkett she knew. The protagonist liked this unusual compliment from the beautiful Sue. Ife said calmly that he is like other men in town, drinking, smoking, and dating women. Sue said playfully that Mr. Burkut is very angry. If he asked in a serious voice, was Sue disappointed after seeing the true Burkut? At this time, suddenly the beautiful Sue approached the protagonist and grabbed him from behind. Sue told the protagonist that her leg still hurts. Let Yife carry her and she'll look at the beautiful views. Ten minutes later, the boy was walking and carrying the girl through the hills of the Dragon Temple. Ife didn't understand what Miss Sue wanted to accomplish. The protagonist wanted to ask the beautiful woman something but she cut him off at half a word. Sue pointed to Ife not to turn around. The main character carried the girl further. Sue said in a worried voice that she felt that moment. The beauty reminded Ife that it was just like the time he carried her when he was still a soldier. Sue plunged into the memories of her service and what had happened to her a month ago was that the enemy had located the Sue in the middle of a secret deal with the other side. The Sioux girl was chased by soldiers from the terrorist group Stika. A very powerful team was hired to protect the daughter of an important Chinese executive. It turned out that Sue was in danger, and her pursuers were getting bigger and bigger. To protect the Sioux girl, her country sent a very important reserve in the form of the Burkut. Sue told the protagonist that after an incident of real danger, he helped her realize one thing, that she is an ordinary woman. Miss Sue reminded the protagonist that he had carried her through explosions before, similar to how he does now. The beauty hugged the Ife even tighter and reminded him of how he had once thrown himself with her. The protagonist and the girl threw themselves into the blue water under the scorching sun. The protagonist began to dive to greater depths with the girl. Ife kissed a girl underwater. Beauty Sue remembered her saved by oxygen from the protagonist. Miss Sue vividly remembered that the main character used the torn clothes from her body. Thanks to the Golden Eagle, Sue was able to safely cross the river and survive. They were not found by their pursuers. Ife replied dryly to the girl that no thanks were needed as it was his job. Sue told the guy that it takes a lot of courage to do such a thing to her. The girl said that her father was angry, even though she was saved. Sue asked Burkut if he resigned because of her. The protagonist sharply replied to the beauty that he didn't leave the army because of her. The beautiful Miss Sue told the protagonist that she was very happy to hear him say that. After a short pause, the handsome Sue asked sternly of the lad. So why did he resign? The protagonist got tired of being questioned. He decided to tell the Sioux the real reason for leaving the army. Suddenly, the protagonist heard something. He looked around worriedly. The protagonist shouted to his companion to be careful. He dodged sharply to the side. A shot rang out. To protect himself from further gunfire, the protagonist fell to the ground with Sue. A happy sniper cutie was walking through the woods. She shouted happily that she had hit. The cutie held the rifle in her hands and told her subordinates to bring her Sue mention. Warriors with guns and uniforms told the cutie that they would. The cutie thought happily to herself. Cheered up by the murder, the commander sternly shouted to the cutie that she might reveal her location. The sniper replied that there was nothing to be afraid of. Burkett would not just come out to them. The commander angrily shouted that the cutie had ruined Master Bloodfox's plan. After that, the commander asked the capture team if they had caught Sumanen. Suddenly, the cutie saw something very exciting. She shouted to the captainess to help her. The sniper apprehensively grabbed her rifle to see what was going on in front. The cutie saw two soldiers lying on the ground. Sue was standing next to them. The sniper couldn't figure out where the guy had gone. Cutie couldn't understand how the main character was able to disappear so quickly. The sniper heard a noise behind her. She kept thinking about Belle Sue's bodyguard. She turned around and saw the main character. Ife looked at the sniper completely calmly. He prepared to finish her off. The cutie couldn't believe that an ordinary security guard turned out to be the mysterious Burkett. The protagonist was able to quickly and completely neutralize the woman in the nun costume. Ife then used his skills to neutralize the woman in the blue robe. The main character at the end was able to completely neutralize the masked and sword-wielding captainess. The cutie thought fearfully to herself that she had done something stupid since she had revealed her location. She didn't know what to do. The sniper was angry. 
She thought angrily to herself that she would not sit idly by. Cutie grabbed her rifle and started firing it in the direction of the protagonist. Ife had no problem dodging the bullets quickly. The cute girl pulled the bolt and got ready to shoot again. Then the sniper cutie jumped high up from her seat. Cutie bent over with her rifle and yelled at the main character that he was about to die. Suddenly Burkett appeared out of nowhere in front of the cutie's crosshairs. 